you know, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice stand for itself. We have to tolerate people. Now saying that, I'll say this. Once you become part of this movement, nothing can excel, exceed, or be in the forefront of this movement except your livelihood and your family. Those are the two things you must protect. Your livelihood and your family because you cannot have a nation without a family. You cannot have a better nation. So people have to have livelihood. And you have to protect your personal livelihood and family. Outside of that, then the national movement needs to come first. But from the national movement is equal or excels the family because somebody has to sacrifice it. It's according to who you are. There are certain steps. If you don't have what we call the kahuna, the family jewel that's made out of real diamonds, you got plastic, then you can join the movement and fill out and say what we call an oath. An oath. There's an oath that you can take. And that will allow you to benefit from the practical side of the national movement. However, if you do have what it takes, a few good men and women, then we have a pledge, which is different than a hope. A pledge is a sacred thing. A pledge follows you through generations. Only free conscious deities, which men are on the certain conditions, did pledges. They were equal to the king. And the king called himself we, didn't they? Right. Our royal prelate, because he spoke for God and everybody. Therefore, the nobles, who was the bloodline of the king, had the right to be free and to freely give their consent to protect the chosen of God. And God's chosen, the king, would protect them. That's what a pledge is. Go all the way back to the ancient times of free people. So a pledge is a sacred thing. Everybody can't do a pledge. A pledge is done up under a legion. Whereas oath is done upon the swearing and affirmation or agreement. That's an agreement, not a pledge or a promise. That's not a agreement. That's a, these are different levels. But we only deal with oaths and pledges. That pledge is, again, a sacred thing set up by our ancestors. And you have to be one of those two. After you do your play, then you do what's called a name change to get your name, your, your national name title back. And that's done two ways. You take on a complete, what we call holy name, old name. That's your holy name. Or you do a dash, or you simply add a land title claim, a personal land title claim of Bay, L, Day, Al, and Ali. But we don't use Ali. Could you give me those titles again? Bay, D E Y, Day, D E Y, L, E L, also pronounced up north, Il, L, A L, and Ali, but we don't use Ali. However, there's a fifth, there's a fifth title we can use for Al. When you look it up, Al becomes, we use this sometimes, Al. That, that, that's the fifth. And that, we use this. We never use this, Ali. As a title, last name, more don't use that. That's because I am. That means that you're not even here no more. See, that's that's ten. You you have completed everything. See, one to nine, zero to nine is as you can go. Right. When you go to 10, you have to go in back. You don't complete it at all. So when you see an I is no more than a dot, a one, and a, a zero. See, the ninth letter is a nine. That's right. The opposite of a nine is a what? A six. Right. See, the spirit and the physical, right? When we came from the higher realm, the spiritual realm, we failed, isn't it? Right. 
You fail to earn it. That's a six. When you get ready to get out of here and you complete, you go back up, you create a hook. A nine. So, Ali represents this. The nine. Which is actually ten what? Stages. Because you gotta have zero. Right. So, we don't use Ali because number two Ali was a special entity <coughs> who was initiated into the greater mystery via the so called Egyptian mysteries, the Moroccan mysteries, the British mysteries, and the American mysteries. That's right. He initiated all of that. Do you actually think some of the insignificant Negro? could come back over here and tell the president, tell the world who they were. No, you couldn't do that. You couldn't do that. I mean, this is when black folk over here didn't know they had wiped out everything. People were being lynched. You know all the study the history of the 1920s. All the Caucasians were crazy. Yes, sir. This man came at that particular time with all this strife in 1913 uh, and promulgated, put the message out by the 1920s, right? He kept it, he kept it hushed for a while. Marcus Garvey was his student. That's right. Marcus Garvey was his student. Yes, sir. Daddy Grace, Father Divine, Carlos Christian, Cook, Carlos Cook. Master Farad Muhammad and Elijah Muhammad and right. the possibility of the man who started the Jehovah Witnesses and the Seven Day Adventists both set upon the prophet. He taught all these great people, even though they detoured. And yet still you never hear about him in the history book. And what did he say? He said, you are not Negroes. You are not colored. You are not cool. You are not black. You are not niggas. You are not anything. You are a mole. That is to say, Asiatic. Long before Elijah Muhammad opened his mouth. You had an empire that stretched all the way across the great Atlantic River. Before it was an ocean. Didn't it? Yes, sir. You own the land all the way from Canaan, what we call the Middle East, all the way across Africa, across the Atlantic Sea, to North, South, and Central America. These are your people. He said all these things. Your religion is not Christian. Your religion is not Islam from the East. Your religion is not Judaism. Your religion is Islam, practiced from a Sufic order that goes back to Kemet in ancient America. They call it Sufism. They call it the Marabut. They call it Maru, which is a conscious, a conscious individual that does not have to follow a ritual to stay in order. As the Quran says, the remembrance of Allah is greater than prayer. And Muslims still pray, which means they can't remember Allah. The Bible says, Be you perfect as your Father who art in heaven is perfect. You can be like Him. Prove all things. That's science. Study to show yourself approved. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Every man thinketh, so is he. He, kidding, man knows ourselves. Do you know God in the universe? No mortal man, as I said, says, and this is the lesson, lesson history, can live my and get my truth. 
and she got big succulent fruits, yes. bananas and pears and apples and so and so. Not fit. And that represents knowledge. Take a grape for an example. A grape is wine. In the scripture, wine represents what? Spiritual awakening. So if she's giving you grapes and apples, what the heck? She's giving you some stuff. But you can't get it if you walk. As the scriptures say, when Christ come back, no man knows my name. Not no man. But some of us know his name. Now either I'm not no man or I'm crazy. <laughs> But see, no man does not mean conscious man. No man is a special word in Greek. Kuda. And kuda means it means you're unconscious. You, you can't see. Because if you read the scriptures, it tells you what it means. It tells you what his new name is. Oh yeah, in Christ Jesus got a new name. You don't even have a old name. So what name y'all call on Jesus for him? And that ain't even the name no more. The Bible tells you to have a new name, and all these people are going to be given new names. And the new name is going to be the name of, the, of God. Well, in the Old Testament, the new name of God is El. That's why all God's people, Mike is, Danny is, Ruby is, all the El. And that's one of the names that the Moses had. But if you go back even further, the El represents those of the administrative government, those that are very diplomatic, and so on, so on, so on, so But when you want to come to the one that's going to carry a government on his shoulders, because see, Jesus is more than an angel. He was born lower than an angel, but he's supposed to do what? Excel the angel. So Jesus is not an heir. So you have to find out where Jesus is. Jesus was born in a place called what? Bethlehem. Right? But when you look up Hebrew, it's called Bethlehem. He's born in the house of Bethlehem. That's the bay. When you look it up in Hebrew, it's bay. Bay means rule, obey, govern. Bay is very, very analytical. Whereas the L is very, very, how would you say, diplomatic. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's the difference in the nature. Some people take the, the wrong attributes. First, you have to look at yourself. But a lot of people allow people to pick names for them. So they don't really have any proper attributes. I was showing you yesterday, all of the old presidents were bathed, weren't they? Yes, sir. Yeah, in the United States, they were bathed because they're governors, they're rulers, as far as government. The elves are different. They're ambassadors, administrators, and diplomatic. They're artistic. You got two degrees. You got art and science. The elves are artistic. They believe in the dress and the culture and the protocol and the so-and-so, and they're good at that. And that's what they're called to do. Well, but the bay is a scientific. All right, one plus one equals three. Nope. Let's get it right. One plus one. Pragmatic. So you have to deal with the different nations of people. Now the bay, for an example, are simply people like what happens in the bay. Light comes out. A day is a day, right. not the night. The day is one that of temporary rulership. Right. Like a mayor or a local person. In the, in the organization. See, that's your day. Then you have Al. A-L, which I showed you, represents what? Al. With other, set, set, what you call sages, lawyers. Very, very wise. The old wise Al. See? I've explained Ali for you already. Oh, you ain't deal with that. I leave that in? I forget it sometimes. Yeah. They, 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 I did. I said it's the same. Oh, it's the same. Yeah. Okay. Ali, we don't deal with. I explained that they, the, 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 the ministry, see, Jesus carrying a government on his shoulder when he comes back. A government. Paul describes Jesus as a body from the head to the toe. That's a group that has to administer government. That's the Christ. The new dimension, the paradigm shift, when Christ carries the government has to be somewhere on the planet. It's not a pie in the sky. So you're dealing with people who must rule the government. But however, the bays and the L go together. They are actually 
the, the, the group today, that's what we use more than anybody else. But we still need uh, lawyers, Al. We need those, we need days, temporary people come in and get that light. We need all these things. Another thing, if you believe in the ancient Egyptian or African cosmology, in the ancient language, for Osiris, up under the term of Ra, mm -hmm. or Asa, Osiris, how you feel that big star? S I R I U S. That's the star, right? Mm -hmm. See, all of these are the same thing. See, in, in the Old Testament, they won't say Osiris or Sirius. They say, Behold my elect, my chosen, my anointed one. The, no, not the anointed one, which is Cyrus. That's Osiris. Same thing. O, like O'Malley, O'Dougal, O'Brien, simply means family. It's a family. So Osiris becomes the Lord, Cyrus. And in Greek, Jesus is called Kurios, which goes back to Cyrus, but Cyrus was not even a Jew. But he's the only being, entity in the whole scriptures that's called the Messiah. No other person in the Old Testament and New Testament is called the Messiah. It's Cyrus. And, but you have to understand what Cyrus is. Cyrus is Osiris. Osiris represents what we call Ra. Eventually, they wrote it like this. Ra. Ra stands for what the Muslims call the, the, the God, the planet of Allah. And it's called Sirius. If you look up the star of Allah, it's called Sirius. They don't want to talk about it because they swear they're not into planets. But the planet of Allah is called Sirius planet. Sirius is the one that deals with the Dogon and the so-called energy, the creation of this particular planet, where the woman named Ama, Oma, Ama, or Ami, came to Earth, saw the condition of the earthlings that were getting ready to abort because Earth can't produce nothing. But to a point, like the egg, and then it aborts. So Amma came to earth, saw the condition of the people, had compassion, and said, I will send my son. And he will help you all. And he came down, and his name was what? Anybody know his name? What? Um, That's one of them. But what, what's the one that the Dogon do? They call him the ne oh, yeah. Nemo's. Now the Nemo. You ever heard of Captain Nemo? Right. Right. Captain Nemo. We use the water. Put it down the of the sea. Well, the, 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 the son of Amo, which means the aggressive being. Amo means mother, which means passive. You sit back, and but you're passive. Right. Whereas Nemo got more mama in them. Mm -hmm. Right. Is aggressive. So the Nemo came in the form of a fish and man, also called Dagon, Murder Man, what? Yes, sir. The dolphin. All these are symbols of these beings that came from the Sirius star system for, for a long time ago and mingled their understanding and intelligence with these animalistic people to help them. They came up out of the sea. The sea, like in the beginning, they say, uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, earth without form, and brought in darkness on the face of the deep. Right. And the spirit, of the, the spirit of God moved through the face of the waters. Right. Well, if no earth and all that stuff is created, what waters is that? Mm -hmm. That's the deep sea. That's called space. That's why Captain Kirk up there in, in, in the Enterprise is called Captain with his ship, and people that use the sea can still the same thing. See, the rhythm of sea in the scriptures means space. Ra, up under the ark of Ra, traveled through space for trillions of years in the ark of Ra. And that ark represents intelligence in the universe who don't know how long, all the way from us being created by the sperm. The sperm is the ark traveling through space getting to the planet.
for millions of years. It's been done like this. Every word is scripted. Every word is law has at least seven different meanings. And you have to know when to apply and how to apply. This is the seven beings correspond with the seven chains, the seven glands of structures in the endocrine system, which you all call chakras. That's based on chemicals. So in the beginning, God, the word God is called Elohimi. 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 Black magic. The power of chemicals. That's why Egypt land was so different because the Egyptians lived in the land of what? Chemist. Call it chemical. Chemist. But that's not a geographical location. That's you. That's your body. You're a man for chemicals. So when they want to adjust and kill you, they adjust your chemicals. In other words, they want to enhance your melatonin and kill you, they come up with crack. Crack is a duplicate, an imitation, looks identical to melatonin, but it's the opposite. But it looks so good that the body accepts it. It looks just like you. But how do diseases occur? Think about this. RNA and DNA. Right. Right? RNA and DNA. Deoxide ribonucleic acid. Ribonic nuclear acid. Right. One of them, deoxy. D. Meaning law or divine. Ox. C. Right? Right. Complete the O. Male and female. The balance. That's DNA. But RNA don't have the oxy or the divine force in it. It's just rabonic nuclear acid. That's right. However, within the DNA, you have RNA. So, the double helix, the double helix has DNA and RNA. Yeah, more. Well, for Elijah, Elijah Muhammad said, well, you got two people inside of you. Right. You got that from the, come on, two people. You got a black man, DNA, they got it all. And you got a red man, all right, it's on. But there's another thing called, like I say, RA that's not even connected to the DNA because the DNA got RNA in it. And it's just simply RNA. And it looks like this. It's just a helix. It's not a double helix. It's just by itself. Now this particular thing called an RA is outside completely of the what? DNA. Where the DNA has everything that the RNA has and more. So the DNA ends up being the DNA, which is the natural born system, and the D and the RNA and the DNA is the venom. They connect it. However, there's another one. There's, there's an RNA that's unconnected completely. That's the alien. As above, so below. Everything that's going on is one. If you discipline yourself and study one thing, you can know all things. But you gotta study one thing and master it. But we take bits and pieces because see what the what, I, what the Caucasian did was instead of be, us becoming masters in one thing, we know a little bit about everything. And that's not too good. Where they send their people to private schools and master and being nothing but a lawyer, nothing but a governor, master that. Right. We, we, we're taught general schools. Right. right. So we don't really get the, the, the master. We just know enough how to serve. Right. See, the plantation is now called the plant. The power plant. The automobile plant. It's the same thing. Plantation, plant, no matter. And they, so we function not as holy people, but pieces. Party system. We're part of the puzzle. Right. So we don't get the complete picture. So we're the aliens to ourselves. So the, 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 the RNA that, that's not connected to the DNA has a tendency to take messages from anybody. Anybody. Which means it becomes a sickle. It becomes sickly in the body. And our immune system attacks it. And keeps it under control. However, from time to time, the RNA manages to connect itself to the DNA. And if it connects itself to the 
DNA, the aqua or the God part, it kicks its button, destroys it. But if it connects itself to the RNA side, it attaches because the RNA says, mm, this is just like me. So when it attaches itself to the RNA, it starts to send the RNA mm, the wrong information. But the DNA won't take that information. So the artificial or the alien RNA starts to replicate, duplicate, and imitate the good DNA with that the, the RNA that's in the DNA. And the next thing you know, by you kissing somebody's butt so long and I want to be just like you. 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 They say, all right, come on. <laughs> so the good RNA that let his butt kiss for so long, it say, come on, you just like me. It, it accepts the messages, and it sends the messages to the DNA. And the DNA say, that's my brother. And it accepts it. And the next thing you know, the cells start to turn on the cells. And you got diseases. But you're not knowing who you are being an alien to yourself, you're from an inferior creature. We have to know who we are. And that takes sincerity. That takes trial and tribulation. A trial and a tribulation simply means that you must be initiated. The dollar bill that the FBI administration, when they put this back on, the dollar bill, Back in 1935, 34, right? I think it was 35, 34, we put it back in. We put it back on the dollar bill, we put it back on the federal money. Let me know that all this is from the earth. That's our field, their credit. When they put that back on, what they did was, please, prove all things. Say you say yourself a truth. Now, when you start dealing with that, you step out of religion and intuition. You start dealing with science, don't you? Science right. means the truth. If you look at the word science, it simply means to know. The word science goes back to a term you call ethics. Science, S-T. E-C. This is you. The Jews is called Ethos. E-C. Right. Meaning the source. So science means to know. This is what Jesus is called knowledge, understanding, and so on and so forth. Being perfect. The word perfect in the ancient understanding meant initiate. You know, a little child means those who are going to the initiation. It has nothing to do with grown people and stupid. It means any person of any age over the age of the child that's being initiated is called a little child. It's called a neophyte. You ought to be initiated. So you would be little children. That doesn't mean that the kingdom of heaven is going to be a little children running around peeing on themselves. That's stupid. It's never been grown up, it's been first initiated. Once you go into the initiation, you come out and you call it perfected one. You're perfect. So, do you perfect if your father who are in heaven is perfect, meaning that that was a person that had to go through the initiation too. So, what initiation? Again, when you step outside of the of a, and all this kind of stuff, you have to deal with it. Fine. So on, on, on the pyramid, you have a big old eye. You've got a big eye. This big eye is the other one science because what does the science do? This eye on a microscope like this. And these things, you know, have not come by what? How do they do what they do? You are the good. You got to do the good. So now, in order for you to come up out of the corporation, the artificial intelligence that's been established, you got to exercise science. You got to see. See things for what it is. I showed you all in another class that the word glory to God, in fact, you come back in the time of the incarnation, the glory simply means the ability to see things and the person and things for what it is. That's the glory of God. You might be talking about that. And the word of God means you got to have a reason. Mind. You need to be able to understand and think. So that's considered the same thing. Because I don't care how scared you are, how dirty you are, how dirty you are. If you don't have a mind, you see not there. Oh, I went to a spiritual world. The spirit is greater than the mind. So what did you need to think with when you're in there? <laughs> 
got to have a mind. Mind and intelligence is not the same thing, though. It's ridiculous. Intelligence is a product of stick to the brain. Where the mind supersedes the brain. The mind is not, you can't touch the mind. But you can take people and give them chemicals and uh, food, brainwashing, and slow down their children. Factors. I got an IQ, let's say 50, I'm kind of stupid, right? If you got an IQ of 400, very, very small, right? I take that picture, put it in the corner, and that means right there, that means uh, two guys, six. It never comes out. Only two. And clothes, and never use the bathroom. I don't give them any books, I don't give them look at TV, I don't do anything. Look, I'm taking all around the world, giving every opportunity to learn. And when I when her and I get together, we we'll sit we'll see on a TV, we're going to look at stupid. Yeah, yeah, she didn't even know what you're talking about. She didn't know what you're talking about. She didn't have no contact. No contact. Don't go nothing. She didn't tell you to call the way up there. Me and we talk, and it's going all over the place. I don't know what you're I I can do all this stuff. Don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but I learned it. Very intelligent man. Very intelligent. Who's the only one in the world? A genius. You know what I'm saying? But no more no, thing. Because you didn't have an opportunity. So this intelligence thing is different than mine. Now, her mind, once she comes out of her cage at the age of the can take over and start to grasp. There are more years, she will be telling me what to do. She'll be saying, well, who's like that? Hmm, the fear not to be You see? Come back on him and say, and it is what it is. That's what it is. And it's what it is. It is what it is. You need to hear it or not. If you're not to be, then you exist or not. See, that's the mind. You can see that. You can get out. So, the mind observes the mind of God. His ability to Christ means crystal. A crystal is a mineral that crystallizes itself. A diamond. You have to understand. A crystal, Christ, comes from black coal. Coal is the rock of animals and vegetables. And the earth decides to incubate over a period of time and it will cause earthquakes or whatever to cut it up or even dust over billions of years will to settle over the top of this animal rock and the crystal rock of the, the, the plant rock and it will push down on it and the eccentrical force push up on it and it will push really hard and it is upon the pressure from all sides from the field and the rock and it'll keep pushing and keep pushing and it'll get way hot way hot and something started to occur upon all this pressure and strain and stress it starts to crystallize and become the hardest and most beautiful substance that you know of that can cut through metal, that can take life and turn it into a fraction of billions of information. And you can it at any given point. If it can get through this pressure, 
However, only those that can walk the burning sand can get through that. You've got to be able to walk a ways of age. Because if you're not rich, then all the pressure turns to cold and you only fit for the fire. So that's what cold is. It's a crystal that gives you the energy. And I'm not talking about diamonds and gold. <laughs> I'm telling you, in order to deal with this, if I'm correct, you're going to have to do all those things. You're going to have to do it. And if I'm incorrect, you're going to have to feel it. <laughs> you know, it's just that way. Yeah, either way, you're going to have to uh, feel some type of uh, pain. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's going to have to die. It, you know, it's like, it's like you going, you, you know, you say, okay, I know my mom is going to get me, get me. You go to the house, and she say, okay, go, go get the stick. And you stuck in the whole time, you're going to suffer this way. And you suffer that, and you're going to get the stick. Then you go get a little. You bring it back. See what I'm talking about. All this is going on in your hands, and this is your fault. But you say it to her, and she said, you want more time. You got to go back and get the stick. See what I'm talking about. You don't know, my God. Just get on the left. You made it. Then you get on the right one. And then see, that's the fourth time, three times now. And then she goes with the horse. Because you come back with a plane. <laughs> and you stop and not see where you're going. Where are you going? And you're going to get the big stick. Go to the bed. Break that phone with the rock. And get the rock. That's what he's saying. You don't get it anyway. You don't get it anyway. It's going to be a lot. The angel says, when you reach it, your trials and tribulations, which is an examination, you can't go in. You can't go on with it, and you can't go around. You gotta go through. And we're gonna do it anyway, and we've been supposed to do it. We have submitted to everything that this Caucasian system told us to submit to. But in the system, they say, mind, they learn. No, the mind, they learn. We the best. Black men wear the color of everything here. All right? Then they wear something else. We took that and let it go. They don't give us the color. We bail. Same. Yeah. Land, they land. Right? I can go. We get out there and went back to school and we learn. No, we still ain't got nothing. Oh, the age is moving. I don't mind. They don't mind. Yeah. 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 And in 1990, you didn't know what the heck to do. We did everything in this corner to do, and we still on the bottom. And it's getting worse because our family has been totally destroyed. And family unit. There's no love between the males and the females. Everything is always antagonistic because of the things we put in people's heads. It's just the way it is. The black woman is just being set up. She's being set up and don't know it. Or don't care to know it. But she's being set up for a fault. Black women are proud of all their accomplishments and disappointed with the lies. They're part of all their accomplishments. They go out here and accomplish all these things, but they're disappointed with their lives. And they can't take it all the time. You have to think about that. If you are a female, you are meant to have a male. Not a male in the country. Meaning that the men that you are dealing with are like women. You have children. 
they don't know what to do. We need to be tell this to your female. We need to say, listen, uh, what's your name? Someone say someone so. And now, they can lock you up. If you say that. Don't laugh. So and so and so and so. So we need to say. Should I do that? I don't know if I can do that. But I don't want to do that. I want a good woman. I mean, I want a good man. And I want to make sure it looks just like a soap opera. Oh, you know, I want the music to be playing and music to look like a soap opera. You know, I want you to keep it healthy. Everything looks the same as a soap opera. That's what they want. And see, they play on the female because the female is the most vulnerable. It's no coincidence that the scripture tells you that there's a woman that rides the beast. And it's the so called Caucasian by the beast, where they do not act, honey. They have to be another woman. The black woman, right in this picture. And it's all people. But there's another woman. He ran from the dead. He ran from the beast. He ran to the world of it. I can only look up from the scripture and see about how the man died. The rule, the nature. Who is the man of you? You gotta figure it out. You the soap opera? <laughs> or are you the rebel? You see, man? You know exactly which one you are, if you want. If that's the case, you have in the paradise now. But it's gonna change. Like I said, you're in the paradise here. So, you gotta be in calculation back, maintain, really maintain, you gotta catch in, um, you gotta catch, uh, oh yeah, it is passing raw, I was going to get it raw. The ancient glyphs, for a fire and all that up in the rock here, these are the, these are the glyphs for rock. That's the, the glyphs for rock. Those two glyphs. This is called the mouth of the world. But at the same time, you can notice it looks just like what you see flying around in the sky. No, you're old. Right, right. And the ancient of the people used to say rock, rock, you know. Now, if you take these three, and put them together. <laughs> you have all three in Because the fire has to leave the eye. The eye is the eye. The all is the eye. That's the one that throws the dollar bill. And that, that particular idea was more science. It was put back on the dollar bill, like I said, 1935. Access is quick of our property based on our people. And followed through by FDR, who initially passed raised in two, three months, and I showed him all this. And he worked with the law. The same with all the presidents in the United States, I showed them that too. They worked with the law privately and working for the reunion, the all power to act. But publicly, they're doing everything they can to confuse you. That's why the old politicians live to be the man. Fight on God, set them down. Yeah, they're doing their job. You're older than you, you're still the devil, and the devil will never have more power than you. The mother, who you need to be 90 something years old, you're the best thing that ever knew. So we die. The God on our side. God, don't be on my side. <laughs> this may be an even playing field, if that's the case. That's all I'm saying. This all is going to come up. You know, God, we're it now. And they're going to be paid for what they did. They are going to be paid for what they did. Now, why are you suffering? To be for some reason. Okay. So, this all three and I, what is this thing? That's over the head of the masses. That only your consciousness can actually reach. The evil. If you look at it, there's a consciousness over the evil thing. It's not a cat. It's not a cat either. Right. Right? Okay. 
You see it. It's not a fact. And it's a sign of danger. It's a 640 book. Star. The 600 star. The sign of danger. It is over the evil. Definitely represents the east. The evil represents the west. This is our native land in the west. Therefore, the consciousness in the east that's going to bring you forth the new Jerusalem is going to show it in the west. The west is lightly standing in the east and set it in the west. So it's going to be the coming of the son of man. So the new Jerusalem is not in the east. The new Jerusalem is laid out in Washington, D.C. Okay, this is the government we set up long ago. That's based on the fulfillment of the new testament. New world order. Started long ago. Because it's new. The evil and Kenneth we call Peru. It was a falcon or a hawk. Okay. And people wanted to remember the thing. There was an emblem of the ancient Canadian Hesheru, Papa Hori, the eagle, where it looks identical. You ever seen it to the, the Greek of it? Uh huh. Oh, it's, it's identical. It? It's just a very small change. The wings, everything, the whole of the yeah, that's the ancient Haru. That's hawk. But a hawk, a hawk, the falcon, the hawk, can be easily trained. It can be easily trained. Whereas an eagle is almost untrainable. You can't train an eagle. It's similar to a dog and a cat. You know, it's a world thing. It's a lot easier to train a dog than it is a cat. A cat is independent. Yeah. So the dog can be trained easily. So the eagle, both of them being raptorial the birds, they're the same to the hawk of the eagle, but they can be trained. And the eagle is a hawk. They can't be trained. You know, that's like the bank being a court where you volunteer to get your money, and the court being a bank where you don't want to get money. <laughs> So, what you have is you got the hawk and the eagle. So, some of the Canadian people say, let's just deal with the eagle. I mean, the hawk. They don't seem to understand. You got to go through different work now. Because the eagle is the only bird that can fly so high that when he is at will, the clouds down there, he can go beyond the storm. Okay. And that's what we got to get through the storm. So we can no longer be a host. Same bird, keep on. So, flying above the storm, above the storm, while all the birds have to see when the storm comes, the eagle goes on. And as uh, you know, uh, Hurt was saying, Brother Hurt was saying, the eagle can see so far as we Great sight. That's why the eye again is placed with the eagle and with the sight sight. That's what scientists do. They see great sight. They see into calculus. They see into worlds that you can't even see. Microscopic worlds. See that? Sight. See, you gotta understand. There was a group of gods called Nephilim, what we call the family of nature. Coming down to this planet, each one of them was different for different things. They were more. Paradigm shift, energy change, they started to change. Each one of them started to specialize in their own table. The prize was the earth. That's like no earth. That was the prize. This is the planet they inhabited, the prize was the earth. The one named Osiris was the one natural to the earth. He was inclined to the earth. Osiris assisted all earth forms. His brother name was Seth. Yeah. Seth. 
didn't agree with the natural order or the selection. So he was disagreeable. And it got to the point being that his nature was disagreeable that he distanced himself and became a whole different group of God. Both of them wanted to fight. This is Isis, the earth. Osiris, being the natural leader for the earth during the shift of the power, went into the earth and the earth received him. It received him so much so that it produced a son called Horus, or Heru, which we call Hero. a hero. Set being just, it upset with Oles and Osiris, same way Jacob was the younger of Esau. And the Bethel smiled on the second man. That was in the first. Smiled on the second man. And I told y'all before that the first man was created in the Yahovah, which is Jehovah, created and being formed out of the dust of the ground. That's the old. The second man is in the image of God who received all the blessings. Because the first man was born from the southern gate. Coming through the wind. The second was born from the northern gate. Coming from the brain. Both being in case in faith, and I just told you to show your faith with water. <clears throat> so, Osiris, being the second son and blessed out of earth, to be Heru, Hero, set me in death, kill it. He killed that. Set it, kill it, go on, go. He killed it. And when he killed him, he chopped him up into 14 pieces. And the 14 pieces were scattered all over the planet. So a fire became natural to every place there was on the planet. Every place there was, he was natural. Isaac's mother, wife, loved him so much that she went and searched for him. And while she was searching, trying to put a fire together, back together, Horus grew up and war or attack sex because sex was trying to molest, molest his mother. And it goes into a lot of oral sex and he gets a little juice of everywhere where he so-called ejaculated in her mouth, which is a negative aspect because sex is negative, which means that foul things and foul conduct will come from the the mouth of the female entity on the planet doing certain things before her son, who has the same name of, of the dad, because uh, uh, Osiris also is called Horus the Elder. So that's his wife and his son. She, she's trying to get her husband back, but it's her son that's doing it. The two horses. Mm-hmm. And Set the opponent attacks the woman. All the force was getting worse. Hey, that beat so bad he lost one of his eyes. He was doing racist. He lost his eyes, spiritual and physical. Set had been down here so long, everything was set in order. Set really went when the sun went down. Sun set. Pure now. Pure physical. You fighting a man with spirit, half spirit, half physical, and this one was going to pure physical. So you take the whip. So the vision set lost one of his eyes. He forgot about all that spirit stuff. That fight. They throw him down. Next thing you know, Set to the bull man, to the power. The battle went on. He lost his power. Set lost his eye and they back. Can we be set things? Can we be set things? And take it to mail, take it to my ex. The court, justice. Say, I'm not. That's why they're in court. That's what they gave my, my ex. My act. Balance. Balance means everything is measured. My act is simply an English word for math. Got to know math to be balanced. My act. Justice. 
And that's why justice is the balance. So, to the two courts. And this court going on, and so they went to court, and they went to court, they were saying, way in the back. And instead, you see the court of sex, and if you were to see the sex, in court. No one was out Now, what is this? Now, this is what they did. Sex is hard and hard. And also, thank Our national government was overthrown by the government. The British was overthrown by the We are the sons and the daughters of the nation that's been fighting every time. Now, after May 1999, we ended up trying to go to court to fight. The sons of our forefathers and mothers. They're taking Uncle Sam, our uncle, to court. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's all I got to say. Mm -hmm. I don't know who's mm -hmm. And the battle was decided in court. Mark X and the word. The word in court. They are the true words, the written words. And that's what we're doing. Everything to the rich. And Mark X. The great mother is most likely the dragon court. But the mayor was talking about and other people. There's a court called the dragon court, the legendary dragon court. The dragon court, the dragon court. That's not the real name. But that's the only name that a lot of the mayors know about, the dragon court. There's another name, and the name of it is. <laughs> I know it. Now all this, a lot of it, I'm trying to tell you, books. Now like again, books, articles, documents, started talking to them. Late 1999, we used to all this. I went through a lot of this conversation. I should not go through it. Yeah. So, you gotta understand. Uh, the information that's coming through me, on one level, I have no understanding why. Other than the possibility that I did so much study and research and was sincere even in my failure that I cleaned out my pipe to the point that something can come in. I don't know. And I tell you straight up, I don't know who it's coming from. I don't know what it is. It's this thing. And I'm sharing And it hadn't failed yet. Name change, calculation documents, the council of certificates, licenses, and things that you already have on record for you up on your 14th minute citizenship. That's the second phase. Third phase. First phase got to be your own for your place. Name change, calculation documents. And once you do that, then you can start to receive certain information uh, after you show certain sincerity. You got to be sincere. And then after you show some courage, because <laughs> you will be tested, <laughs> then you receive all the information. <laughs> and on and on and on and on. And I can give you the information and the veil is so thick on your eyes, you wouldn't even know anyway. I can give it to you. I, don't I give it to them? I, I show them, I give them the information, but you still can't see because of the veil factor. No mortal man can lift my veil and get my feet. You got to step beyond being mortal. You know what mortal means? Dead. Dead. You're dead. Now Jesus was the first we got in the world. Dead. Not the only. And guess what the word, word dead is in, in, in the Bible, Revelation Greek? Negro. Negro. Yeah, Negro. 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 Same word. He's the first of the Negroes. Dead folks. Sure. Now I showed them yesterday, and I'm going to repeat it real quick. The reason we are a minority is not because of numbers. In law, the minority does not mean numbers. Minority means you can't think. The majority means those who are adults and have consciousness. Therefore, the Caucasian and the system is not lying. We are a minority because we don't think. 
So you go to vote, and they'll say, listen how they say it, they'll say, well, we ain't worried about the minority vote. And y'all think they talking about them. They talking about stupidity of Because when you go vote in a registered election, you're a minority. You're stupid. You're not qualified. You're not really voting. You're not a qualified voter that only three people have. You're a registered voter. You're a minority. You're an idiot. As far as they're concerned, but you don't know that. Because they glorify, they put Jesse on TV. And he magnified. That mama Tom the other night was kicking like a mule. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse was rolling. Mama, he had me and Jesse. I got you ready to vote. <laughs> Jesse was up. I had to go take a calm down feel out of here, Jesse. Jesse talking and all that poetry. And then you know, those got people vibrating and so and so. And it has nothing to do with the election of the brother. Nothing. Read the law. The electoral vote. Like I said, you don't even know who it is. It may be a alien. You don't know. You don't even know who they are. And even if it was legit, again, that has nothing to do with the true president of the United States of America. That is a political convention, political party convention that's done upon the party system. Party system is not in the Constitution. To select your own running mate is nowhere to be found in any Constitution. It's not there because they are not dealing with real or national elections. That's what FDR did. He separated them. They are not to deal with those elections. And the Denizens could have went into the national election or they could have went into the administrative ele- uh, uh, election. But the Denizens, FDR, amalgamated Moors, Mulattoes, are up under Masonic places. They are made moral child or more son. And they are doing what they're supposed to do. They only deal with the administrative elections, federal elections, and they left the national elections alone. And more told us a long time ago that our seats are waiting in Washington, D.C. for us to reclaim them. That's but right. they didn't tell us how to get them. Wow. They didn't know. Do you know everything? The day that you're going to know 30 years from now? No. You don't know what to see. They didn't know. We are those people incarnating now. We knew it as a child. We, you have to crawl before you walk. You don't just jump from A to Z. So when the information is coming into your, you as a group, because we come down as groups, we all want certain individuals or groups. The information is given for, at that particular time that you can handle. As a child, can you handle all of this? No, you don't even know what pain it is sometimes. You know, let me see if, what that fire do for me. <laughs> you don't even know what fire is. You know what I'm You have to learn. So how in the heck can they just, the, the, the energy is coming to the body all at one time and all of a sudden you know everything. It's impossible. It don't work like this. Burn you up. Burn you up. Some people, and I thought, Dealing with religion for the very reason because there were some people when I started talking about religion, it burned them up. They took that information and they think I know they just getting crazy. So I say, well, you know, I don't need no more bad comments. <laughs> so I stepped out of religion and that was good for me. But it replaced it with something else. Law. Whereas law is different than religion. See, it's mathematical. I can tell you this stuff, and you can't swear a boy talking to you telling you you can, you know, be Jesus. <laughs> See, it don't work like that. See, you got to open the book up and read math. So, you can't receive everything at one time. Now, you've been sitting here for over an hour, right? I gave you over an hour of information, of pure information, right? Can you remember all of it? Right. So, even if they told us we did what? We forgot. Man learns by repetition. Repeat. Boom, 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 boom. 
Put the right on the left, the right on the left, the right on the left, right. Take it through, let it out. Take it through, let it out. Take it through, let it out. Everything is the opposite. One will become evil when you stop using the other. That's evil. Evil, the right foot is no more important than the left foot. The right hand is no more important than the left hand. The heartbeat that goes boom is no more important than one that goes boom. Bringing the air in is no more important than letting it out. But when you stop, that's when death sits in. You got to always change. Always change. The, the, the right, which is the most important, becomes the less important once it's used. Nature don't care anything about what it has. It's always trying to get something. That tree, which is so important. I mean, you got to have that son of a gun. And you plant it. The moment you put it in the dirt, it sprouts. You don't care nothing about a seed. Now you got to sprout. And that sprout turns into a sprout, turns into a look, a twig. And the twig turns into a little branch of seed. And it grows. And the trees. And then the trees say, heck, I'm a full grown tree. And they say, I don't care nothing about you. Give me a fruit. And the fruit pop out from the tree. And the fruit say, okay, I'm here. And the nature say, I don't care nothing about no fruit. Give me a seed. <laughs> <laughs> and start again. Don't get it about who you are, only what you're going to be. Because you already got it, you already know who you are. You are. You there. They don't care about that. Change. 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 The only thing that don't change is what? Ooh. The only thing that don't change is what? The only thing that don't change is what? Change the yeah. Change the only thing don't change. It's always change. It's the national movement seeking to claim the seats of the um, of the government. Um, Which one now? More than one government. I thought you understood that. Well, I, I thought you had more than one government. That there were some seats waiting for, for the national government. The national government. And at the same time, we have what is uh, called a corporate government and administrative government. Okay. The administrative government is, is just about as, as inactive as the national government. I mean, the corporate government is about as inactive as the national government. Because everything now falls up on administration. I showed them yesterday, 1943, the presidential flag. By 1968, they had replaced it with a whole different eagle. Remember? Right. Now, the notebook that I have, it tells me that the administrative office of the president has a flag that is blue in color and connected with the office, the executive office of the president. But the administrative flag, that eagle, is actually the one that they put in the uh, dictionaries now, and that deals with administrative government, which all presidents now are administrative presidents. This is why they function upon the federal election campaign and not the Constitution. All of a sudden, uh, explains to them, he's putting out a movie called The Last President of the Office. Where in his um, in the movie that he's getting ready to produce again, he says that Douglas MacArthur, J.P. Morgan, and the news media attempted a coup d'état to ouster and take over the government of FDR during his administration. Because FDR, being a millionaire, if not a billionaire, who platformed on turn, returning things back to the rich, old white folks, when he got in office, and I showed them um, <clears throat> a mark, find the Book of Boone for It's more, but we had, it wasn't correct. It was right, but it wasn't correct. It was something missing. And it's different between being correct and right, because again, in dealing with this system, everything is contracted. You sign your birth certificate, your marriage license, your driver's license, everything is contracted. So in dealing with this system, you have to be correct and not right. You know, we find ourselves in the courtroom, and we know we're right, but we lose. We're not correct. They only deal with correctness. So, I was saying that to try to show you that we're a little different than the mores that people know of. Uh, we were from down south. Uh, we were cut off from the main branch up north and other places, so we developed differently. 
we didn't keep the garbage or the the, 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 the luggage that most of the Moors have. Now, in brief, Moors believe that Islam is the key to your salvation. But Islam to us is not the Arab Orthodox Islam. Islam to us represents an anagram that can mean I, self, Lord, and Master, or, because you're not a master yet. As you evolve into more, it becomes I, self, Lord, am master. But the trick to that is, once you become a master, you have to serve. So it becomes I, self, I, I serve, L, or the heaven, and me. Okay? So it changes. The anagram, like everything else, is not stagnant. You cannot put a meaning on it. But there are more that the prophet set up, and he set it up for a particular reason. It's called the Moor Science Temple of America Incorporated, and that's the most known or the most famous, uh, even though it's not the original. He set that up as opposed to being civic, all the other organizations he set up, civic and scientific. He set up what is called the Moor Science Temple of America Incorporated in 19, what was it, uh, the Moor Science Temple was 25 or 27. 26, okay, 1926, and that was a religious charge, and he did that for a particular reason. But we don't deal with religion per se. We don't. Islam does is a creed, and we practice love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And since the new millennium, it's been added tolerance and forgiveness. These are the seven principles that we practice. And if you come to me as a Hindu, a Muslim, a Christian, a Jew, um, uh, uh, Egyptian or whatever, if you don't employ these principles, then I cannot deal with you on a certain level. Now, if you're an atheist and you come to me with the principles of Lord Truth, Peace, Freedom, Justice, Cause, and Forgiveness, I got to deal with you on those principles. And this is the way we deal with on On our old nationality cause, it's simply stated that you can be, you can follow Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius, Akhenaten, or anybody else you want. But deal with principles. See, we substituted the five prayers for principles. In the ancient culture, there was no such thing as prayer for a faith. It, it was a totally different. That became a ritual for weak people because it's, it's set up. Prayer that we, the way it's set up today, is to remind you. And this is what the Quran talks about as the remembrance of Allah is greater than prayer. Because if you enter your spiritual self, I'm just using that term. You are a walking prayer. You don't have to do it in a ritualistic manner. See, so you have to understand. I'll keep it and deal with it on that level. You have to go back to, to the ancient ones. Now, this is what you're trying to return, and culture. You're trying to get back to that. But the greatest force in Egypt is called Maat. Some of you all call that justice. I think it is right. She's Mother Justice, right? But that's actually law. Okay, so we're going to do these two tapes and let you all look at it and then I'm going to come back and then I'm going into the scriptures and try to share some things with you and, and, and help you to understand some things that I understand if I can. Okay. Now those two tapes that um, I shared with you all are kind of unique tapes in their own right. Uh, second tape I'll be going into dealing with the scriptures briefly but the first tape uh, dealing with the Kutatah is also part of the scripture so I, I, I introduced that in there for that particular reason to show you that there's some other things going on that you have no knowledge of the first tape dealing with the Kutatah the Caucasian guy he was very informed but oftentimes he couldn't get into the subject matter with his pertinent to what we're dealing with because the, the, the sister, she dealt with more of a, what you call a domestic type approach to it for about uh, personal things as opposed to the government, the government thing. There's another segment that goes with it. I'm trying to get the other segment. I had to hunt that tape down. It took me about three or four months to get that tape after it was produced on TV in North Carolina. Now, North Carolina is a special place. It really is. It's a very special place. You, any of you all heard of a guy named uh, Davy Walker, David Walker's Appeal? Well, that's North Carolina. And David Walker was in Wilmington. And there's a constitution that came from the natives, 
United States citizen that goes as far back as 1772 from North Carolina. These were the moors of the so-called Black Indians. What they were our um, Not Chief Joseph. Okay, not the Hollywood Indian now. Those are high, uh, what you call mulattoes, mixtures between our ancestors and the Caucasian ancestors. Um, now, the Kabbalah, for an example, Kabbalah. This is so called Jewish mysticism. The person who was narrating the, the tape, uh, he was not frank with you. Uh, the Jewish mysticism or the Kabbalah actually came from Babylon when they were put in captivity supposedly for 200 years. Now, a lot of the things that I'm saying is not necessarily past events or what people call historical. They're legendary events. And you have to understand, a legendary event is true, but it's not accurate. So, uh, the Jews, so-called Jews being put in Babylon, and they learned this information from the, uh, the Babylonians, and they brought this with them uh, when they returned to their homeland through Cyrus, who, by the way, is the only person in the scriptures that's called the Christ. And Cyrus is no more than a short form of Osiris. Osiris, Osiris, the same thing. Um, so when the Jews return to their so-called homeland upon the Cyrus to liberate, they constructed a book by the prophet Ezra, which they use today, and made up what is called the Torah from the ancient scriptures, including the cuneiform writing and the Babylonian, the Sumerians, and this type of thing. The so-called Jews are Akhenazi, they're pleasurizers. They only pleasurize. They take from other people and claim it. And that's it. So, the Kabbalah, Kaaba. In Egypt, the Kaaba is called the spirit. It's the, you may have seen a picture where you see this man in a coffin or a person in a coffin and it has an attachment to the head and it's a little floating, look like a little ghost god. And it has a winged creature standing uh, right above it. That's the cock. It, it means double or another or the second use. And the word ba means soul. So you have the spirit and the soul. And of course, if you listen to the word, the spirit and the soul of Allah. Of Allah. Now, in the tape, it was stating that when Abraham, who was a Hamite, that's why his name Ham. Can I? Abraham. When Abraham was supposedly, now remember now, this is legendary history. Uh, when Abraham was supposed to be the first person to come up with the one God theory, which of course Akhenaten was at least hundreds, hundreds of years before him, we even came up with Aton or Akhenaten, the one God. But he, that wasn't the first time. You know, that's just legendary history also. Each, first, each country claiming that they had the one God theory before everybody else. And this is why the Quran is so unique to you because the Quran never makes that claim. It says that the prophet brought you nothing new. Because, and then the Bible confirms it by saying there's nothing new upon the Quran. Okay, so Abraham, the Hamite, bringing this information of the one God and the, and the commentator simply said that holy simply, simply means whole or complete. And that the universe is whole, it's a completion. Now, in Arabic, they have a saying, La ilaha illallah, there is but one God, Allah. And that's an English translation, which is good enough. But at the same time, it leaves out other translations of Arabic, which is kind of hard to uh, translate because the Arabs can't translate it themselves. The Arabs are not the keepers of the ancient information. But there's a term in Arabic that says, Allahu Ahad, Allah is one. <clears throat> Allah is one. But when you ask the Arab to count, he uses the term Wahid. Wahid is singular. Ahad is unity or a unit. So when the Arabs say Allahu Ahad, they're saying Allah is one. But actually it's confirmed in the Kabbalah. Allah or the universe is one. It's a unifier. There is no separation. So it's the same doctrine, but misinterpretation of the same doctrine. Take a little further. There's a term called Hotep and Hotep Poop, which means peace be upon you. But that's not the oldest term. 
The oldest term in Egypt for that same translation is Sharam. Sharam. S-R-M. Which is the Arab Sharam. Because in Egypt, oh, now I can use the bullet. <clears throat> in Egypt, they have a glyph that's similar to this. And E. Wallace Bowes, who translated the Egyptian hieroglyphics, um, called this mouth. He called this the mouth. Sometimes it was called the top. The top. The open or the mouth. This is what Eli's book, Eli, E. Wallace Bowles, the so called great English translator of Egyptian hieroglyphics. But again, Eli, Eli Bowles was a Caucasian. His mindset was different than ours. He didn't think like he thought. So he came up with a good translation that unfortunately a lot of the so-called black giants and uh, African scholarships still follow. And they neglect to understand that you have to uh, study other dialects or languages to understand the, the Comedian or Timorian languages. Now, this is a mouth to a lot of people. But this was called Ra. Sometimes Ra was like this. Sometimes Rob was like this. And of course, all you end up with is the I. And it's a trinity. Contrary to Arabic belief, there's a trinity in the Quran. And it's real simple. It's in every soul. It's called Allah, Azraq, Man, or Rahim. But they, you know, they ignore it. And they see it every day, but they ignore it. Because see, what we have, what we do as, as human beings is we put everyone else's uh religion, opinions, and, and, and persuasion up under the microscope. And we pick out every little detail we can to destroy it. But we don't do that to our own belief. And we need to do that. As scientists, that's what you have to do. But, Ra, again, having these three points, is, this is the oldest glyph. And it's, it's the L, and it's the R. So, in the ancient language, the A upon the Ain, and the A upon the Alice was not pronounced. It's a breath sound. It's this breathe. So Allah became known as you see you may see this little letter. You ever seen that letter? Sometimes they use this letter. You ever seen that letter in the book? Right. It became the breath sound for H. In Arabic you have uh, Hamza. See Hamza is a is a, is a A and a H. So Allah it was a breath down, it became Allah, or Allah. And eventually it was never pronounced. It was a breath, so it became El. And the, the god of the Canaanites was called El, which is Allah. And in Genesis, first chapter, the supreme god is called, in Yiddish, Elohim. That's Yiddish. Um, Elohim. Because the A is not pronounced. So he would be, it would simply be Elohim or Alchemy. Elohim. Black right, magic, if you want to call it that, but it simply deals with chemistry. This is chemistry because all of us are composite of chemicals. Chemicals, that's it. But now you're dealing with science. Well, again, you're going back to law. This is also put over the dollar bill, and it's a natural act. You know, it's a natural act, and that which follows it is an artificial triangle or pyramid. Natural and artificial. And you're going to find in Genesis, there's two people being created. A natural man and an artificial man. And I'm going to go over that briefly with you. So, here again, you have the mouth. Now, this is what was interpreted, but this is not a mouth. Can anyone else see anything other than a mouth? It's, 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 it's an opening and it's a mouth. So what is that telling you? What does this mean when the mouth is open? It's speaking. It, it's the word. In the beginning of the word. Now, all of the Islamic postures are found in the Egyptian hieroglyphics. There, it, it's been, and they're also found in America. They have glyphs over here that speak compatible with the glyphs in, in Egypt. There's any questions on that? to get you started, to show you that a lot of information is being hidden about 
uh, out of the Republican form of government. The, the, the people who are in office, the so-called black people in office, were Republicans. And the Republicans has, it didn't have anything to do with the Republican Party. So, you, know, you may hear people say George Washington was a federalist, but that was not a party long ago. The Democratic you know, the Republican Party came to play during this particular time because they took on what's called a federal um, campaign act where you can have a power system. It's called a, uh, a political subdivision. A political subdivision. It's not really a, a political party. Uh, you had three types of people or groups. The Republicans, Nationals, the Denizens, the uh, Democratic Party, and the populist poor white people, they were the leap men, called leap men, L-E-E-T men. If you were to open up the Constitution of the United States of America, uh, Article 2, it would read, and it's interesting because we're here in, in the Republican uh, fundraising committee building, and uh, George W. Bush's uh, the, the so-called Republican uh, president candidate and uh, Gore, is, uh, Al Gore is the, the Democratic candidate. And in Article 2 of the Constitution, it talks about the election of the president. Now I'm going to start in um, Section 3, I think it is, and, and I'm going to start with the, it says the certificate and the vote shall then be counted. The person having the greatest number of shall be the president. Da, 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 da. After the choice of president, the person having the greatest number of votes of the electors should be the vice president. So the way the president in our constitution is elected is through the electoral vote. In other words, if I were to take the ring hat and put it, in, put it out here, one hat, all of us would put our candidate or who we choose to be the president in one hat. And the person having the greatest number of votes would be the president among us. The person having the second greatest number of votes in the same hat would be the vice president. And that's Article 2 for the president of the United States of America. Now, again, we have denizens. Denizens are found in the amendment. It's not even part of the Constitution. Amendment to the Constitution. The amendment 12. It means the electors shall meet in their respective states and vote for a ballot for president and vice president, one of whom the meet shall, be, shall not be inhabiting the same state to themselves. And they shall name in their ballot the person voted for as president, and in the state ballot the person voted for as vice president. And they shall make the state ballot, make the state list of Persons voted for for president and persons voted for for vice president. So, based on the denizens, we would have to have two hats. The one with the greatest amount of numbers for the president, and one with the greatest amount of numbers for the vice president. That's the amendment. Therefore, my question is to you all, what kind of president do we have today? Do we follow this? The Constitution? No. It has nothing to do with the Constitution. They, the so-called president candidates, pick their own, uh, pick their own running list. So where is that at? See, again, that's the administrative president. That has nothing to do with the executive or the president of the United States of America. Three. The three citizens, national, limitless, and meekly, or aliens. If we deal with naturalization, the same book, Constitution of the United States of America, turn to Article 1, Section 8, Clause 4. Congress shall have power to establish a uniform rule of naturalization. That's within the first seven articles. Congress shall have power to uh, establish a uniform rule of nat naturalization. That's actually nationalization. The N-A-T, I-O-N, A-L, I-D-E-D. That's nationalization. Now, if we go to the 14th Amendment, 
it reads, this is not the Constitution, it reads, all persons born and naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and state within their required. That's another form of naturalization. So we have two forms of naturalization. One is attached to the, the national people, the natural born people. The other one is attached to the constructed or artificial people called the 14th Amendment citizens. If anybody disagrees with me, just let me know. Therefore, we have two different forms of naturalization. In 8 U.S.C. Excuse me, 8 U.S.C.S. Lawyer's Edition. United States Service Code. The one that you can get, uh, I'll have access to in the public library, it's called U.S.C. United States Code. If you go to the lawyer's, li uh, the lawyer's library, you can get this one and one called U.S.C. 8. Annotated, United States Code annotated. Now, what happens is this: you have what you call old laws, second and second and large, uh, actually laws of the United States. But during the reorganization plan, uh, the FDR administration, they codified it, all of the laws of the United States, and mixed up the federal administrative laws along with the laws of the United States and called the United States Code. So you have two things in these books. You have the code, the administrative code, and you have the laws of the United States, and you have to be able to pick it out. Okay, so, in 8 U.S.C., again, I'm talking about three citizens, nationals, denizens, and aliens. And you only need two naturalization policies because one of them doesn't have to be naturalized. So you don't need a, a three naturalization policy, you only need one because one of them is natural born citizen or by birth. So you only need two. Now, if you got three governments, you have to have three presidents, don't you? Right? Right. So you have two presidents within the Constitution and the amendments to the Constitution, and you have a third president who's working outside of the Constitution and the amendments. You follow? Trinity is very important. You got to understand the Trinity. I'm going to read the definition of a national. And I want you all to tell me how many nationals am I talking about after I read this, uh, these definitions, these definitions. Eight USC. The term national means a person owing permanent allegiance to a state. That's the general term for a national, so in permanent allegiance. Therefore, if you're a national, you have to do what is called an allegiance system. Allegiance system. Listen to the words carefully because you have to listen twice as hard as to speak because you got two ears. Twice as hard to get it. National, the term national means a person owing allegiance to a state. Next, the definition is deals with the United States. And we're trying to find out who are the nationals of the United what? States. Where the term national means that you can be a national of any what? State. But you have to, you have permanent allegiance. So now, specifically, we're going to the United States. The term national of the United States means A, a citizen of the United States. Or B, a person who, though not a citizen of the United States, owes permanent allegiance to the United States. Now I'm going to the latter part of the book. National and citizen of the United States by birth, by na nationality and naturalization, nationality at birth and collective nation nationalization, nationalization. National and citizen of the United States. A. The following, shall, the following shall be nationals and citizens of the United States. One, a person in the United States, a person born in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. A national, a person born in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. Going to the front, it says, the term national United States means A, a citizen of the United States, or B, a person who, though not a citizen of the United States, 
owes permanent allegiance to the United States. So, how many nationals do we have? Anybody? Three. Three. Name them. Based on the names that I gave you earlier. They're, they're found in which definition? A. A. Mm -hmm. And we have a national. And B. Okay. But it, it, okay. So what's the difference between A and B? The difference between. Uh, the person from not to be. Uh, a person to be. They are the U.S. now, but they're not a citizen, right? Not a citizen. Then what's the third? Well, we're born in the U.S. for something. Okay, now where where would that fall in the Constitution? Fourteenth Amendment, right? Right. It's obvious, isn't it? So a national of the United States can also be a 14th Amendment citizen. But that particular national is subject to. Subject to. Mm -hmm. That's what we call an alien. Or the naturalized. It's called a permanent resident alien. Has all the rights of a citizen. And those rights are due process. But due process simply means what category or jurisdiction you need to have due process. So one person's due process is not the same as another person's due process. So you, you can't figure out what's happening to you because you are from the administrative court and someone else has tapped into the national court or the executive court or the uh, international court or something of that sort. You got to understand it's totally, totally different jurisdictions. That way you need to the regular court. Yeah, it'll be in there, it'll be in there, but what happens with this particular uh, book, they give you commentary and history and court cases and documents right in the footnotes oftentimes, whereas the regular USC code, they, they very seldom they give you the, the, the information. They, they put stuff in there, but it's, it's not as good as this because this is a lawyer's edition. Now, what they are doing is even changing the lawyer's position. They're taking the commentary out of the new one. These are old books that your brother gave me at, at one time, and I didn't even use them until May 1999. You know, really start to use the book. So, now, what I want you to read this word here, because again, the nationality that, that uh, brother, Le brother Latif just mentioned was called the third nationality in the subject of the jurisdiction of the 14th Amendment. This is a Latin dictionary. Okay. And I looked up this word, what's that word? So, and what's the, what's the word? Society. So, it's first, first, right? So, in other words, it's the term first, if you look it up, came from the term first. Came from that, that's the moment. That's Tony. So, when you look up the word service, it becomes service and trivial. Do you want to read? Read out loud. To be what? To be subject to, to be a servant or slave. Therefore, when, when, when um, you see the term subject to, it simply reverts back to the English word subject to somebody else's jurisdiction. You see, a couple of old boys told me years ago that Caucasian people are slaves and that's all they can do. There's nothing I can do about it. That's what he told me. And it, you know, it hit me. I said, well, it's like they, you know, he said, no, as long as you white, you're a slave. Period. Well, see, Caucasians don't have to be white nowadays. They can say their nationality too. They can come up at it. Like the scripture says, I pull all men to me. Once we manifest to our greater heights, we can pull them out of that servitude. But they end it the same way a black person is. See, black and white in the ancient language, of course, means the same what thing. It comes from black art, meaning totally empty, totally blind, or whatever. You can't, there's nothing there. You can't see anything. And it's called a color because it's an appearance. It's not real. 
So, the term subject to, whenever you hear the term subject to, that's simply another way of saying first. Now you have to put it in relationship with the verse. It says all persons born and naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and the what? States wherein they reside all first stayed on the land upon a particular state. It was a landlocked slave up under the state. That's what a search is. Okay. Yeah. They can move around the master's land, which is called estate. The word estate and state is the same word. Estate transfers to the Americas up under the term colony and plantation. They could move around the gigantic plantations and they were up under the Lord's jurisdiction. They were called leaf people in America and search over there. Whenever a Lord transferred the power to someone else or somebody purchased the jurisdiction and they moved on, the landlord never took the slaves or the search. They would have to stay on the land. Same way they're voting their new president. And the slaves still stay the same. When the, the, the corporate government changed, the people in the state stay the same. Now, the state, they're subject to the state wherein they reside. Now that's the 14th Amendment. However, when you go to our Constitution, which is, uh, and, and go to Amendment 4, it makes a statement that says, Article 4, Section 2. Citizens of each state shall be entitled to all privileges and immunities of citizens of the several states. You're not locked down in the one what? State. Up under the national constitution, you're not locked down up under the state, whereas the 14th Amendment citizen is locked down up under the subject of the state wherein they reside. Because we're supposed to have free at a regress and ingress to go and to come all to the United States without uh, documents or paperwork or anything as long as you're a national. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but you gotta understand again, the prophet now was, was a prophet. I keep trying to get y'all to remember that. Right. He gave milk and not meat. Exactly. He taught you to crawl before you could walk. Exactly. And I don't know, you may know because you 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 probably know the more history doctrine better than me, bro. But I remember that in one of the books that he put out, he made a statement. He said, I'm only giving you general laws. Exactly. But eventually you get the supreme word laws. Right. Do you have them? Supreme laws. Supreme laws. Because I've been trying to find them. And I can't find them. That's my law. Right. See, so I'm saying that, that you know, until we find his supreme laws and can verify that it was his law, these may be, that, see, the general laws is a mill. Right. And now we're talking about the supreme law. The feds and Paraphernalia of the Moors is simply an outward expression of what's supposed to be going on in the inside. Exactly. Fears of the consciousness and not a cow. Right. So at that particular time, you get you teach the child how to crawl. Right. But see, 70 years after he left, uh, 70 years after he was gone, a new information came to the planet. Right. And that's what I'm saying. So, so I'm saying, yeah, you're absolutely right. But I'm saying what you said, but at the same time, it's really not the fears. It's actually the law that he gave us. Because if you look up say it says it's law, correct? Right. 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 Deal with divine law, doesn't it? Right. Right. And legally. So that's the phase that we're supposed to be up under the law. And the, right. and the prophet said more stay up under the constitutional fold, without a doubt. See, so again, you're right, but I'm, I'm just bringing it up to me. Um, subject to. Whenever you see that term, it simply represents a 14th Amendment citizen and it's talking about a search, a landlocked citizen that comes with the state. And it's subject to that state. And it goes on further to say, um, let me see if I can find it. Oh no, I went to Article 4, Section 2 and I was showing you how that particular citizenship that's attached to Article 2 of citizenship where it says, Article 2, Section 1, Clause 5, it says, no person except a natural born citizen or a citizen of the United States 
after 14 years of residency, shall be President of the United States of America. Now, how many citizens are in that clause? One or two? Two. And they are attached to each other, aren't they? One of them is a natural born that precedes citizens of the United what? States. If we go back to 8 USC, it says a, a national is two types. The national of the United States, A, is a citizen. Citizens that have free access, natural born citizens. B, although not a citizen, but you have permanent allegiance. How do you get permanent allegiance if you're not a citizen? You have to be naturalized. And that falls back up on the, what? Article 1, Section 8. Because it's attached to us. Those two, the lead citizens are cast together. Naturalization upon the Congress is in our law. Go ahead. Naturalization, which can be nationalization. Yeah, that's what I said. But I said it can be nationalization if you understand it. Again, this is not the authentic constitution. We don't have the authentic constitution. If we had the original authentic copy of the Constitution, no telling what's on it. It may say something that shocks the world. So we don't really have the authentic copies now of certain documents. Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, it's according to who's producing and publishing the book. Yes, if, it's, if it's from the United States Printing Office, they use capital letters to indicate special people. <laughs> if it's Printing off, yeah. And say, for instance, this book here, I, I keep telling you all to get. Um, this comes from the United States Printing Office. It's called Our American Government. And in, in a declaration, which includes the Declaration of Independence, in this particular book, it used capital case for people and so on, so on, so on. So it's a specific time for scholars and lawyers and other people who do certain research to understand who they're talking about. And at other times, they use small cases to let people know that it's not the same person or corporation or association or whatever it is. That's what the capital letters are for. Now, just what I call common or secular scholars and historians, when they write these documents, they have no knowledge of what they're doing. So you won't see the same thing. They're just following uh, uh, Rockefeller's educational program, and that's that. But when the government puts it out nowadays, they have even altered the original document for those who are in the know to get a better understanding of what's going on. But if you don't know, you won't know. You have to know, you have to be in the know. So that was a good question about those capital letters. They, you know, they're very important. Now, when you walk into that court and all, all caps, John Doe Bates, right. it's all caps. That right. means you in capital. Right. That means you're from the martial law. You in capital. Right. That's why the gold friend is. Now, when you do that, there's only one way that you can go into those courts, courts and still keep your freedom. You have to say something. If something must be said to the court. When they call your name, they tell you to plead either guilty or not guilty. And that's what you don't do because once you do that, you're saying you're subject to that jurisdiction. So, who knows what to say outside of my feet? Innocent. In their jurisdiction. <laughs> If you say you're innocent, you're still in a jurisdiction. I plead guilty to no. No, 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 none of that. You simply say special appearance, okay. motion to dismiss for lack of jurisdiction. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Special appearance, motion to dismiss for lack of jurisdiction. You done messed up everybody in the court. Yeah. That's why the stenographer sit over there and won't print it in there. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. See, she'll sit there and print something else. Mm -hmm. So when you get the court records, it won't be in the record. But you really did exactly what you were supposed to do in those matters in court. Because what happened is, that's your parents, most of you just a lack of jurisdiction, you're simply saying, I'm not here. Mm -hmm. But I'm here as a courtesy for the court. <laughs> and then you can proceed if they say something else, you can say, well, yeah, your honor, my honor, um, I'm here at Amicus Courier. Amicus Courier. Now y'all need to look these words up. Amicus Courier. And Amicus Courier says to me, I'm a friend of the judge. I'm a friend of the court. Right. Therefore, as a friend, as a friend, can I talk to you? Mm -hmm. As a friend, can I talk to you? 
Right, there's a friend, are we on the same time? Yeah. Right, so when you declare you amateur courtier, your special appearance, you just done left the whole quarter. No, I'm Chris Cooley. Amicus Cooley, it's a legal term. You need to look him up. That would be, that would be the way I would do it, but no, you can do it while you're there too, because I send papers anytime I'm going to court, my papers all the place me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I get there, they know what they're dealing with, so whenever we go to court, they just miss before they get to, they pull us to the side and say, okay, we're going to start them. And they don't even want to deal with it in court. Yeah. But if you don't do it, you still can all the declare it. Everybody in America has been hooded. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Everybody is born, right? Mm -hmm. Are they born free? Born free. Really? Everybody can revoke or counsel or rescind contracts. Mm -hmm. There's no statute of limitation on doing it. When you found out you've been hooked, weak, defrauded, or whatever, you can yeah, you 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 can say, okay, look, I wouldn't have known the no know voluntarily did so and so. You know what I'm saying? That 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 UCC. Mm -hmm. Yes, commercial code. Because when you go into those courts, you up under commercial what law? That's what the the, the flag is. With the gold fringe. It's dealing with commercial law, uh, martial law, bankruptcy act, so and so, so and so. They have taken administrative law and civil law, mm -hmm. and when you go to court for a traffic ticket with North Carolina's administrator, they put you in the criminal court, don't you? Right. But that's not really a criminal court. That's a commercial court that handles administrative, the civil, and criminal offenses. Right. Right. That's why they can mix the courts up. Babylon, use it together. No, you don't do that if you're the plaintiff. No, 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 that, that was, no, you don't, they don't do that if you're the plaintiff. And see, that, and, that, and that's actually against the state. Right. It's, it's say the state of so-and-so versus John Doe Bates. Or it's say the, the people of the state of so-and-so versus John Doe Bates. Now, who, who, what one state is artificial? One state is artificial. You got two states. You, you see? Actually, you got three. It's called the fair of the state. You got... The privilege, the second, the first class, the second class, and what they call the underclass. You got the first estate, the second estate, and the third estate. So you got three citizenships. National, Denison, and Alien. I done told you, I told you that. I mean, I can say it another way, but I'm just trying to say what you understand. But you have to know, because the Denison is a national too, isn't it? And the, and the least alien is a national too, isn't it? So you have to know the number. That's why you have to have, that's the number of the beast and the number of God. You have to know the number. <laughs> Numbers are exact. It's the only exact sign. sign. I didn't give you the number because I don't mean to give you the number. And you get that later. These people are going to follow the movie. Oh yeah, and I always hold something back just for renegades. <laughs> You know, well, oh yeah, I got my ten dollars worth of more. Uh -huh. See, like that, I hold stuff back just for renegades. <laughs> See, I'm trying to do what the prophet said to, and what all prophecies lead to. The year 2000, Christ didn't return. The Maha didn't show up. Nobody do Ali didn't come back. Right? No, not in the form of everybody is looking. Am I right? Right. You know what I'm talking about. Right. See, so. 2000, 21st century. Alternative, what do we do? Well, we have to go back and see where we made mistakes. So you go back to your roots. Prophet Nova Ali. We supposed to be the what? The truth. And the offspring of David, the root and the truth. We supposed to be the, the sweet thing, but we can't do that unless we attack ourselves with the root. We don't forget all the root workers. The root words, everything else. We got too far away from the root. So we got to go back and take a look at what the prophet left us, what the scriptures left us, what every, all of the organizations, people left us to find out what we did wrong because this particular system is moving forward and it's consumed more and more and more and more and more all the time. And the problem has been just like this, separation. And it's supposed to be like this. Yeah, you know, you guys.
So over unified up under the wrong organization is trying to put a nation into a temple. It won't happen. It never happen. The temple belongs in the nation. Or oh, we're trying to take one religion, whatever, and that particular people be saved. But the universal force, Allah, God, 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 gonna kill everybody else if you just, you know, that's, that's ridiculous. It won't happen like that. No. Why? Right. Yeah. You want to say something? Oh, okay. All right. Now let's kind of get back. So I'm trying to explain to you that you have two naturalizations because you have two naturalized what? Systems. One of them is actually nationalized, but for coded is naturalized. Congress does one and the federal government does one today. One upon the 14th Amendment is an alien citizen, a permanent resident alien, subject to serfdom to the government and the estate colony that still exists today. The second one is a blood relative, brutish Moors who came over here and attached themselves to us and have special privileges and rights. However, they can never own the house. Yeah, they came over here, they were called denizens. They broke away from the brutish Moors and became denizens. Denizens is simply a citizen that above or alien, but below a natural born system. And in Black Law Dictionary, when you look up denizen, it tells you that the denizen is a natural born citizen. However, natural born is different than the natural born what we have because they put a hyphen between them. It's natural hyphen born citizen or subject, whereas our natural born citizen has no hyphen. That's law. Hyphen means, okay, I'm leaving some information out. It's a dash. You're leaving information out. So they have the same name. But they're different, totally different. So those are the three citizenship, the three presidents to go with it. I named three declarations, a declaration, an authentic one, by the national natural born citizen of the United States of America and General Congress Assembly, to the Declaration of Independence for the Denizens, and three, the white declaration, of, the declaration of white independence for the league people that only happened in 1898. Let you know how long they've been slaves, and still it didn't happen because from, 19, from 1898 to the year 1929, the heyday was over. It was over. The administrative government came into full force, and the national government came into full force, however, not being occupied set to the side and administrative government is over on one side now everyone is going in up under Bill Clinton, George Bush and everybody else administrative government voting now what kind of voting do they go people vote it's called registered voting registered voting is not the only type of voting there's another voting called Qualified voter. Qualified voter. Both of them are under the term called legal voter. I'll read that to you right quick. Legal voter. Black Law Dictionary Full Petition. Page 1042. Legal voter. Legal voter. You gotta listen up. Because every time you go out there and register to vote, you're putting yourself into the Protestant system, that right. means you're reaffirming your serfdom. Right. right. Contrary to what they tell you. Right. If it's on TV, they tell you what to do, you ought to know it. That's what not to do. <laughs> anyway, legal vote. A person having constitutional requirements and who is registered. Number two, a person having constitutional qualifications, though not registered. A person having, number one, a legal vote, a person having constitutional uh, requirements and who is registered. 
Number two, a person having constitutional qualifications, though not registered. Two different voters up on the legal folder. Now, which one are you? Which one do you participate in? If you go back to state constitutions, the true state constitution up under what they call the Declaration of Rights, you find out that all governors and all officials have to be voted for by the qualified voters or the or the uh, free people, the sovereign people. They said at one time you had to have a freehold, and freehold qualification no longer exists. That's not true. Freehold is simply qualified. It's called a qualified vote. There's no such thing as a political party or federal government mentioned in the Constitution of the United States of America. There's a federal government mentioned in the Constitution of the United States, which we call confederation, confederal or federal, same word. But not the administrative federal government because it came into the Union in 1791. So you got two federal governments. And when you look the word federal up, you have dual meaning. And the word federal is a Latin word. It goes back to Latin. Let me look at an idea with this real quick for you. To give you an understanding of the Christ and the Antichrist. The Antichrist, again, does not necessarily mean evil or, or against. Anti also means to precede or to go before. When you look up the word anti, it's A-N-T-T in Greek as well as A-N-T-I. Therefore, a system or a kingdom must be set up on this planet that will look like the golden age, even though it is. And it will fool everybody. That's the federal system that's been set up. And it's fooling everybody. Everybody want to be in America from the federal system that produced what? Green, lust, and everything else. I mean, that's what it produces. And that's the American way. Racism, hatred, superstition. This is, you may not can get it, Castell, New Latin Dictionary. Latin, English, and English Latin. Uh, you can see the federal, federal, okay, federal, federal comes from the word, um, side, I'm fidel, let me see, yeah, you can let me check out the right now, uh, it, 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 right now it appears to be, it appears to be on page 247. Yeah, this is Cassell New Latin Dictionary. Cassell. Mm -hmm. C A S S E L L. Mm -hmm. Mark and Wagner. I want to make sure I got the right one. Another book that you can find federal in is called uh, uh, Short of Etymological Dictionary of English. You can find a lot of words. It's original. It gives you a lot of original words in English. You have federal. All right. Federal. When? Federalism. Federalist. Federalist. Bird. Federation. Federative. Confederacy. Confederal. Confederate. Confederation. From the Latin word sadia. And so, okay, that was the second. So I got to do this. Alright, sadia. Sadia means to hold and trust, to confide in, uh, to do it without fear. Sadia. Because, see, the, the original Confederacy, the original Confederacy created a trust. <laughs> For the people. The people gave them their trust by allegiance. That's confederate. That's federation. That's federal. That's a federal constitution, which is actually the article of confederation. But the other federal constitution is found in the amendment. Yeah, in the amendment. Mm -hmm. I am the other word is for deal. F-O-E-D. Fodir also is called Fodoratus and Fodir. 
federal. It has two meanings. Number two, put it, put it. Leave, a leave, a compact covenant, agreement between individuals. Transfer to law, natural law. That's the federal government. That's the old one, the Confederate. It's belief. It's called the Confederate Constitution, the Confederate um, Congress, and the Continental Congress. The Confederate Congress, the Confederate Constitution, the Federal Congress, all of that. But number two, which is actually, which is actually number one now, Foul, filthy, horrible, abominable, cruel, cruel. Abominable also means what? Beastly, right? The beast. Not only the beast, but the beast that will pick your bones back. As lightning the chapters in Egypt, set in the west, so shall it be the coming of the Son of Man. Where the eagles be gathered, there will the caucuses be. And their eagle is almost identical to our book. eagle. Two-edged sword. So we can make a choice on which one, once we become conscious, which one we actually want to be participating in. This is why the prophet keeps saying that the federal, the federal government are, more, are national moral truth. But which federal what? government? Think about this for a moment. As a movie. With the prophet around when the federal administrative system came into existence. The prophet was tra transformed in 1929, right? He died. Mm -hmm. FDR didn't set it up again. You follow? What I'm saying, Mo? Okay. You had several departments that was up under the executive department. Mm -hmm. There was no federal government other than the old federal government's function. Remember I said they had taken over? Right. They had assumed all our identity? Right. The stock market crash? The national? The Illuminati? The black nobility? The powers that be? Called in the national debt of the administrative government? The federal United States? The one that's in 28 USC? Remember? 28 USC? I told you to look up 28 USC? 28 U.S.C. Uh, section 300215, where it talks about the federal, the United States is a federal corporation. That's a business. Right. right. You can sue that United States. Mm -hmm. But you can't sue the United States of America. Right. That's a whole different United States. The United States of America is supreme. It's sovereign. You cannot sue the United States of America. But you can sue, anybody can sue the federal government, the federal corporation. So, that's a business. That, that federal government was admitted into the union in 1791 after the Constitution, after the Articles of Confederation. It already had a federal government, up under the Confederate government. The problem was talking about the federal Confederate government, which is a national government that they that we need to cling to. He was not talking about the federal administrative government that branched out and became a whole. They set up a federal court system, the magistrate court. He didn't. The prophet didn't know anything about that. He didn't deal with that. He dealt with that. That hadn't even existed when he was around. That came into existence later on. So when he's using the term federal, he's not talking about the Federal Administrative Act, the reorganizational plan. None of that had occurred. The prophet didn't even have to use driver's license. They didn't exist then. Marriage license. They didn't need that unless they chose to do it. Right. Right. But after that, things started to change because when you go into to, to bankruptcy, martial law, and it's still in effect, right? You, you know it's still in effect, right? Martial law in effect today is still martial law. Right. It was 1933, right. the banking what? Holiday. You familiar with y'all familiar with that? Everybody familiar with the banking holiday? The banking holiday in 1933 is still in effect today. So, whenever you declare a state of martial law, when you didn't declare it against a foreign 
enemy. It was declared because the economy was so bad. And FDR said, bring in your gold and your silver, and we'll take that. And we'll create the Federal Reserve System to give you credit. The credit still today, right? The Federal Reserve still working, right? So the, the bankruptcy is, is still in effect. They still collecting money, paying the national debt. That's their job. However, they, they, they lost in all their citizens who were Caucasian people and all of the black folk who went into the Caucasian system because all individual human beings are declared as natural resources. Mm -hmm. So when you go solvent, the people that's under your government have to pay the debt off. Yeah, the people have to pay the debt off. You just part of natural resources. You just like a tree, a natural resource, anything that can produce itself. Mm -hmm. Can't you produce yourself? People produce themselves, right? That's natural. So the person, the individual, are natural resources. But you lose all your property. You lose all your rights when you go into bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. So the people part of that, they lost their rights, they lost everything else. So when the national emergency was declared, it's also known as what? War. Mm. A state of what? War. Right. So who they had war with? It, right. it was, they were not at war with a foreign nation. They were at war with bankruptcy. Therefore they were war against their own what? People. So now they, they, since they are at war with their own people, they can use this flag. It's a military flag. Right. And since then, Free people, based on gratuitous force and a whole lot of other things, came into the federal system. So now they're still paying off the national debt because they're certain slaves too. They can be taxed, licensed, punished, pain. But I read all that stuff to you. Right. And it's legal. Because you voluntarily went into the system. Even though you were coerced into it and not understanding why you were going into it. And that's your remedy. Because you didn't know any intention to no voluntarily do it. To revoke the contract, to get out of those contracts, the birth certificates, the marriage licenses, the grants from schools, loans, anything. Not social security cards. That's an insurance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an insurance. It's, a, it's, it's a, the insurance that they set up. That's the them set up an insurance, meaning that uh, when people get old and so on, so they have money. It's like an insurance policy. You pay in and you get yours out later on. That's not really a tax. And this is why the old moors say don't get rid of those social what, security cards. Because your social security card turns into another number. I'm not telling you all of that. <laughs> I was somewhere. Where was I at though? I dealt with legal. You understand, you all understand the banking holiday. Right. And that it's actually a national emergency is a state of war. Right. You understand that? So if you're in a state of war, then you have to have, when a state of war is declared, then you have to have a passport. Right. No state of war, you would never need a passport. That's why you have to have a passport to go in and out of the country. Right. No state of war, you would need a driver's license. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are the credentials that people up under captivity have to move around. That's all it is. There's still a war going on, yeah. so you have to be very, very smart in how to do it. It's always true. You don't. One thing you don't need is a whole lot of publicity. Yeah. You can probably be like a thief in the night. Right. See, if you're a national or you know how to deal, when you purchase your property, you let the person up front know that you don't pay what taxes. So the land ain't taxed. Right. Then why would you take a non-tax market downtown to the Record a deed and register your land so they can tax you again. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying though. You you can deal with the banking institutions. You can do the same thing. You can tell them you're just not a tax sale. They're a company, aren't they? They deal with taxes all the time. The bankers don't, the, see, once you start dealing with the taxes, then they put all the documents into the tax system. If you don't pay taxes, the bank is not going to take it down to the register of the court and, and register your paper for you. But it couldn't explain why. And the other one can't tell you why it's a tax. And then where the elders saying keep the number. Because you have two different jurisdictions. Again, I told you before, the number to beat is 666, which equals what? 18, which equals 9, if you missed the class. The, the number of God's people is 144,000, which equals 9. They're the same number. A 6 and a 9 is no more than a mirror. You put the 9 in the mirror, it's the opposite. Instead of them reversing it, they reverse it. 
That's the same number. Nine and six is identical. One you fall short and the other you complete. So, the nine digit number on your card, again, I say it turns to a whole different number, didn't I? Right, and, it's, and there's a reason for that. You got three numbers. You got your SS number, you got the employment identification number, and you got what else? The third number. But you don't know what that is. All of them the same number. You don't know what it is. Numbers are exact. So, which one of you? You didn't do the other baby, because you definitely ain't the third when you don't know what number it is. What the fuck? What part? I'm out. Yeah, you know that your FS, that's one number. Then you have what they call the EIN, right? right. It's all bit. Okay. And then there's a third one. That you that you are trying to actually reclaim to be from it going from six 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 to nine. All the moors in the east who practice slavery were called brutes. Right? Called what? Brutes. Brutus. King Brutus was king of Britain. Brutus. I mean Brutus. King Brutus was the king of Britain. Britain is also called Bruton. Right. Right. All the people over there were slavers. And all the way down to Africa. The Bobby Empire, all the way down, they practiced slavery, didn't they? All that was good. That's the British Empire. They worked together. So you're saying that with Shakespeare Lord and Julius Caesar were code? All, all the writings are code. And Shakespeare and Julius Caesar wasn't even people. They code. <laughs> so, what are what charter? Man, listen to what kind of question is that. What charter? All the charters on this planet, you have me waiting. North charter? What charter is North charter? <laughs> you have to, see, he has the answers in the question. I don't even all to understand the question, I got to answer it. What charter? Which one is that? What charter was this to the European? There was a land grant that dealt with Carolina, like I was telling you earlier, where you had Carolina who represented the whole free land of free people over here on the East Coast all the way to the Mississippi Valley and River. That was one of our empires. We had another one that went to uh, out, you know, Utah, whatever city, so called the Central, Central Time Zone. And then we had a third one went all the way to the West Coast. There was an empire over here called Monaca or Monaki, which they misinterpreted as Moroccan. The knocking Empire that had three leagues over the three time zones spoke to three types of languages, which is called Algonquin, Miracle, and Suey. Those were not people. Those were actually linguistic. Nothing to do with people. And in that particular um, empire, you had 16 sovereign nations, or some say 17, and they granted um, the Denison permission to settle over here. On the East Coast. But the same charter was in the Black North. Mm -hmm. Now, Marie, I don't know if I read this out. Uh, this is, and, and this is just to give you some idea. Now, who all know about the Delaware Indians? Anybody know anything about the Delaware Indians? Okay. The Delaware Indians were part of the Iroquois or Guanquilin nations. They went both ways, so and so, so and so. They were named after a man named Lord Delaware. However, that's not the original name. The original name was Lenape. Lenape. Some people say Lenny Lenape. Lenny meaning we. Or people. And Lenape meaning people. Therefore, you got the term we the people. Lenny Lenape means we the people. Literally. And that's very important because the more we're taught that the, the preamble is the determining clause of the Constitution. And it is. It's, it's a statute clause, it's not a Constitution clause. It's the opening statement. It's the purpose and the mission. We the people of the United States that is not do ordain and establish this Constitution for of the United States of America. 
And we do that for ourselves and our posterity. Those we leave behind in all directions. So why would they take use the term we the people? Well, that's an old Moorish word, the Nepi. That is the Nepi. Nepi here. Or Nubi. In like Nepi, Nepi, Nubi. When you get to this particular treaty, it's called the Article of Agreement and, Con and, and Confederation. The Article of Agreement and Confederation. I will show you this the Article of Agreement and Confederation. <clears throat> Quote, made and entered into by Andrew and Thomas Lewis, Esquire, Commissioner, Lawyer, mm -hmm. for and in behalf of the United States of North America. North America. United States of North America. The United States of North America. Well, again, I have to be fresh in your mind what the term United States means because some of your faces look kind of strange. <laughs> Let me fresh in your mind about uh, the United States. <laughs> Young Skywalker, be patient. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, read what it says United States. This term has several meanings. It has several meanings, meaning more than what? One. One. Go on. It may be merely the Merely means completely. Totally. Not partially or insignificant. It merely means completely. Fully. Go ahead. It may be merely the name of a sovereign. A sovereign. One individual sovereign. Which is a nation. Go ahead. Occupying the position analysis to that of the other side. Occupying this one position in a logical manner. Therefore, your foot ain't on your head. Your head is where it belongs in an analytical manner, meaning a logical manner. From the highest to the lowest, to the most important to the least important. A sovereign occupying a position in this order of all the sovereigns. Go ahead. In the family of nations. In the family of nations. Not the United Nations, but the family of nations in the Constitution reverts back to Article 1, Section 8, uh, Clause 10. Congress shall have the power to define and punish piracy and felonies committed on the high seas and offenses against the law of nations. Law of nations preceded the Constitution of the United States of America. That's why they had to honor all treaties. And what treaties were these treaties? Well, in our Constitution, we go back, it says, Article 6, all debts contracted and gave in and into before the adoption of this Constitution shall be as valid against the United States under this Constitution as under the Confederation. So all the engagements of the Confederation that deals with the United States in the family of nations is part of the law of nations is still in effect. So you have one United States that's simply a sovereign and from many United States in the family of nations. But our particular government takes the name of our mother, which is America. Whereas other United States take the name of their mother, which is the United Kingdom and United whatever. That's their geographical land. Our geographical land is America, so we become the United States of America for do a name and establish this constitution for the United States of America. So you got more than one United States. When you term United States can mean you have no idea what it means. But the, year, the term United States of America means one place on this planet. That's the your land. So is that why that's the flag has the flag? Exactly. We hope to get to that. Mm -hmm. That's this flag here that the brother is missing. This is the flag of the United States of America. Right here. This flag was enacted in June 14, 1777 with 48 stars. 
1777 with 48 stars. Now this flag here is not a flag. This is a banner. It was enacted with 13 stars, June 14, 1777. It can change. They even had 15 stripes. Remember I told you I wrote read that to you? 15 stripes. Then it went back to 13. They, they can change the number. But they can't change this flag. This flag here is the official flag, which is 13. I mean, which is 48. Now, how do I know this? Well, let's go to Black, to the United States Code. This is um one through four. And number four is called flag and seal of the government of the United States. Did you look it up like I told you? All right, but let me show this brother here because he needs to see it. You can tell us it's a law. Definitely the law. You have to look up down to the bottom. It says this title hasn't been enacted as law. All of the, the code that has an asterisk beside it has been enacted as law. Well, this is law because it's number what? Four. And number four has an asterisk beside it, so you know this is a law. Now, the ones that don't have asterisk beside it, it's, laws are still in there. You follow what I'm saying? They still have laws in it, but they also have stuff that's not what? Right. Law. Right. Exactly. It's amalgamated or mixed. Yeah, it's amalgamated and mixed. For certain ones, they didn't mix up. It's the actually laws. Okay. So. Now, you have to pay close attention to what you read. Read it out loud. Because I need the mic. Mm -hmm. Because he asked for this last time he was here and I didn't have a book, you know? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Section 1. Section 1. Flag, stripes, and stars on. Keep going. The flag of the United States shall be 13 horizontal stripes, alternate red and white, and the union of the flag shall be 48 stars, white in a blue field. How many? White in a blue field. How many field. stars? That's the important thing. 48 stars. White 48. in a blue field. Right. Now, we know that the official number for the battle is how many? 50. 50. Mm -hmm. But that's the official number 48. And, and the last time you were here, yeah, I'll see you right now. Uh, I was showing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's not the one. I was showing you that. The enactment of the flag, I, I, I had it in the Webster, Old Webster Dictionary, and I showed you June, in June 14, 1777, it was enacted with 48, keep your page, it was enacted with 48 stars. That's still in effect today because only the national people can change that flag. Nobody else can change it. Only we can change that flag. Right. Remember I was trying to tell you about the tent flag of your forefathers that the prophet talked about? Yes, sir. That that is the flag. Not the skeleton flag. If the flag had been done, the prophet had been done, if the prophet had been the No. See, first of all, when the prophet is standing in his office, he has the skeleton flag, or what they call Venus. It's upside down. It's reversed. It's, it's, it's called the Luciferian flag. But actually, it's the Venus flag. That's, that's not the Moroccan flag that they use today. Right. Now, okay, this one. Yeah, that's the 48. See, this is the one that he's using. Yeah. All right. That's the one that was beside. Yeah, the 48. You know, yeah, whereas nowadays, more around around, they have flags that's wearing the 50 flag. They don't understand. Because this one is the national, this is a real national official flag that has 48 stars. That can never be changed by them. That's why the law is still how many? 48. 48 stars. Right. right. Now, this is right. That's this flag. That's the one he has behind him. Now, the skeleton flag, you said. The skeleton flag is a, is, is a code. It's the a, it's a flag of love. Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Right. That's, that's Lucifer. That's Venus. That's Aphrodite. That's a, that, that, that represents a whole different thing. The Moroccans never had that flag until 1915 when they were forced to put it on their emblem. And in 1956, it became adopted as a national flag of Morocco in the United Nations. Right. Morocco lost all of the international status and went into the United Nations, which was created by the United States of America. Right. 1948. Right. So that's, how could that be the flag? That's not even original Moroccan flag. 
No, it's not. It has nothing to do with the mold. But the profit is a profit. Giving you milk. He could not give people all this information then. Right, See, so, I'm glad. I need a picture of this. This is a, yeah, he finally, finally got it. That's beautiful. I've seen a copy of it. Let me show you what they do. Now, down to the bottom. You believe not this either, right? So they, oh, now, down to the bottom, it says historic, history, and, and, and other provisions. Now, we done already read section one. So at the bottom it says proportion and size of the flag up under executive orders. Not congressional legislation, but up under executive order. Right, right. Then it gives you another section one. Section one, the flag of the United States shall have 13 horizontal stripes, all to red and white, and a union consisting of white stars on the field. That's it. They can put any number they want on it. Oh, the executive order is not available. No, you know that. Yeah, you, you, that's not law. That's executive order up on the market. What? No, that's it. Now, back to the United States of North America. Several United States. Thank you. It goes to say, uh, United States of North America on of the one part, and Captain White Eyes, Captain John Kilbuck Jr., and Captain Pike, deputies and chief men of the Delaware Nation on the other. You got all these captains and stuff with the chief men, and in the next treaty, the chief men are called Shechem. No, Shechem. Right here. The Shekels. And the warriors of the Sick Nation. So they call Shekels. Now that's strange because the, the, the ancient people who ruled Egypt were called what? Shekels. Same people. Because we were back and forth. Shekels. So, the Arabs didn't deal with Shekels. The Arabs took the ill off and just called them sheep. They didn't deal with a group, but we are united people. So therefore, laws in America up under the title of chief, so far off is unreal. We check them, because we have to be together. So it's the together we think. But people don't understand, the world don't get there. They're under the chief and the five year and all of that has to be people living over here. The next group of people who are called people. That's when they're in America. For so the babies up under the chef, most of them. So we don't deal with those terms that make people us power over here. We claim an Arab over there. And the problem is don't even let the Arabs keep coming in and rock. Shut them, can you spell it a different way? It's F-K-M. F-H-K-M. I'm just giving you a root. You can put any vowel in it you want. Shut them. The modern Arabs don't call it Shut they call it Hakim. We learn man, wise man. But these were the pre kings and the representatives of America. Now what is a priest king? What is the priest assembly of Egypt? They were the men who got together to determine what was the outcome of Egypt. They were called chaplains. Raul Nefer, uh, Sarah Sant, that's what they call them. Priest men, they call them chaplains. But they don't understand the chaplains are over here too. I always been. All right, so the Shechem, the chief men of the Delaware Nation. On the other part, this is an agreement and a contract. This is a treaty. But you had two types of people with the Delaware Nation. Then you? you had the captains, and then you had the Shechem. And with the United States of North America, you had the lawyers, the Esquire. Lawyers. That's an older word for lawyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I mean lawyer. Mm -hmm. It's just an older word. Like, um, what people call the bailiff today is bailiff, lift, the bailiff. But they used to be called more. But the bailiff today used to be called more. It's just, so you gotta understand the shifting words. Um, 
over time, words change. Whoever conquer, I need a full addition. Look it up for me, one of y'all. Look up the word more than four. But I move forward when you get it, let me know. Alright. Article one, that all offenses and acts of hostility by one or either of the contracting parties against the other be mutually forgiven and buried in the depth of oblivion. Never more to be had and remembered. Now, you talk about a perpetual treat, uh, treaty between the Moors and uh, uh, the Moroccans in America. This is what they say. That a perpetual peace and friendship shall from henceforth take place and subsist between the contracting parties aforesaid through all succeeding generations. Da -da 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 -da. The, the mode of such trials, this is talking about when they have trials amongst themselves, to be hereafter fixed by the wise men of the United States in Congress Assembly, in Congress Assembly, not the United States now, but in Congress Assembly. With the assistance of such deputies of the Delaware Nations, let's let you know there's a lot of them, as may be appointed to act in concert with them and adjusting this matter to their mutual liking. Article 5, and this is the one that's really important. And it tells you what happened uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that you might can understand if you can grasp what's going on. How the third party came in and tried to destroy what was going on in America. Whereas the enemies of the United States not the United States of North America, but the United States. What's the United States? Which, which, well, which other one they talk about? Or all? We don't know. Have endeavored by every artifice in their power to possess the Indians in general with the opinion that it is the design of the state of Forsyth to extirpate the Indians and to take possession of their country. To obviate such false suggestions, the United States does engage to guarantee to the forfeited nation of Delaware and their heirs all their territorial rights in the fullest and most ample manner as it had been bound by former treaties. As long as said Delaware nation shall abide by and hold fast to the chain of friendship now entered into. And it is further agreed on between the contracting parties, should it be, should it for the future be found conducive for the mutual interest of both parties to invite other tribes. Now, what does tribe mean? Now again, this is the word of art. If you look up tribe, tribe book means to pay rent, to pay taxes. It basically represents nomadic people. However, the same word tribe is called tribunal. Tribunal means those of a high station and mound builders. So you got two tribes. The Roman elite was called tribe or tribunal. That's one tribe. That's the mound builders. That's what type of civilization was over here and it just appeared, didn't they? Mysteriously. Right, but the word mound is if you look it up, it's north. It becomes the word north. The same word pyramid, north, the name the land. So, you got one tribe that they're reaching out to. And it says again, both parties invite other tribes, nation tribes, who have been friends to the interests of the United States. Let me read this out loud for me. To join, to join, uh, to join the present confederation, the present confederation, and to form a state, and to form a state, where of the Delaware nation, where the Delaware nation shall be the head. Mm. So, again, the Delaware nation is going to be the head of the United States. Huh? The Delaware, what the heck they talking about? This is a treaty. But see, who is the Delaware? 
What do you, you mean when you say Delaware? Well, <laughs> since I can't find this because I, I just can't find it, I'm going to tell you. And I've showed it to the people before. The Delaware is another name for the Lenape. However, if you look up uh, the Delaware Indians, it'll tell you that the Delaware Indians call themselves, when translated, we the what? We the people. I know we the more, we the people. We the people. Now, they were the head. If you look up head and law, head means the principal party, the landowners, the real deal. Now, William Penn and the settlers of the 16th and 17th century wrote articles about the Indians over here they call Delaware. And if you get the book called Ancient and Modern Britain, it clearly and distinctly indicates that the, the Indians over here were called more. The Delaware, as quote William Penn, walk strong, clever, quick, with their chins up, and their complexion is black. But by design. Design of the Egyptians. Well, you look up Egyptian in law, and in, 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 in even colloquial, it means dog. But in law, it means uh, gypsy or Egyptian. Same thing, the gypsy. So, when you look it up in ancient modern Britain, it tells you that the gypsies were more. The same way the dukes, Astrid, the dukes of North America. And you look down to the footnote of the Astrid, it says it's hardly worth mentioning, but the aristocracy. What is the aristocracy? Okay. Not just heads. Look up aristocracy. You ever find more? Yeah. You done got behind. I got more. Right. Back up. Retrograde. I told you more meant baby. Okay, let me see if I can find it. Right. More. Look up aristocracy. More. An officer with an owl of the man who summons the court for the several shootings. The officer, the officer is similar to the English bailiff of a hundred. The bailiff of a hundred, more of a shilling is the same thing. That's why when you go to court, the bailiff is actually taking your place. But they used to be bailiffs. Yes. The bailiffs. Alright. Aristocracy. To understand what this word is saying and remember now you had the more to dominate people all over the world and so eventually started doing it in America because America outlawed all slavery up on the Hiawatha and Dingawi those were the lawgivers Dingawi Dingawi and Hiawatha Hiawatha Ayahuasca was produced by all males and then God was produced by all females. One of them came out of the water and the other one came out of the earth and they, they clashed, they wrestled. Same way Jacob wrestled with the angels all saw God face to face and after they wrestled and did all these things they came up with the great law of peace to create a nation. Same way the nation of Israel was created through Jacob. It's the same story. Matter of fact, the, the, the so-called Indians over here were called Canaanites. By the church or Hebrew at that time. Nice. Aristocracy. A government in which a class of men rules supreme. A form of government which is lodged in a council composed of select members or nobles without a monarchy, without a king, and exclusive of people. People don't have anything to do with the rule, common people. A privileged class of the people, nobles and dignitaries, people of wealth and station. So, when it makes a statement in ancient modern Britain that the Moors were called dukes, it said it, 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 it's although it's scarcely worth mentioning, but the aristocracy of the 13th and 14th, the 16th and 17th century, described by the writers, they called the Moors, the Indian Moors, and they were kings, queens, and dukes. Well, that's right down the proper line when you read in here. He tell you that the more were the kings and queens and so and so over here. But we also the ones that didn't care nothing about other people to a point. We got to that point. So, you had the more civilization over here called the United States of the America. You had the Denizen civilization over here called the United States of North America. Working together with a particular segment of the Monarchian Empire in the family of nations that called We the People or Delaware, Lenape. That they would be the head. 
Now the plot thickens and it gets even thicker. Now we're going to the Articles of Confederation. In the Articles of Confederation, in Article 1 it states, the style, the way to climb the ghost great height of this confederacy shall be the United States of America. However, all the power is, is in, at this particular time, the United States and General Congress of Symbols. The United States, no, the United States and Congress of Symbols. The United States and Congress of Symbols has all the power. It says, number two, each state retains its sovereignty. It doesn't say colonies, and its sovereignty. Freedom and independence and every power, jurisdiction, right, which is not to not which is not by this confederation expressly delegated to the United States in Congress of Symbols. However, the United States in Congress of Symbols is connected to the family of nations or the law of nations. It's the United States in Congress of Symbols that's the whole United States in the family of nations. And it's connected domestically in the Articles of Confederation with what is called the Congress of the United States which transferred over into the Constitution as a Congress that has all of the power to regulate the law for the United States of America. But that's just a Congress, but it's, it's, it's a Congress in the whole scheme of things, but it's the Congress for us. Everybody follow me. In the family of nations, or the law of nations, the people who rule were called the United States in Congress are similar. The United States in Congress Assembly is the whole United States of the world. <clears throat> Those are the ones that said, we're going to do this constitution for so-and-so. And it's going to be for America. And in that constitution, a Congress should have all legislative power. But that a Congress becomes the Congress a little later on. Well, that's connected to the Articles of Confederation. You have all the control of the land and quarrels and things, the Congress. That particular Congress actually used to be three bodies. It was um, a bicameral, but bicameral means two, a Senate and a House, but it actually functioned as a court too. That's based on the Articles of Confederation. It functioned as a court too, so it had three governments and two, or two, but it had three. And good morning. Okay. Uh, we're going to get started so we can uh, kind of finish up uh, this particular lecture. Uh, is there any questions before I get started? That's on your mind. So if you want to get it or not, you need to write them down. So basically, it's going to be a question and answer session. But I'm going over a few things uh, from yesterday dealing with uh, diversity of citizenship or what is called manufactured, manufactured um, diversity. But before we get started, one of the brothers, Fonte, he pointed out that he had this book a while back and it, and it was put out by um, John Burt Society. Now, the one that I use as my little law Bible is put out by the print, uh, the print authority of the House Congress Revolution, Revolution 172, 103rd Congress, U.S. Printing Office, Washington, D.C. This is the one that I use primarily. It's called Our Government, whereas this one is called uh, We the People. And it has a picture of all of the, our Caucasian brothers uh, on the front. Now, there is a third constitution that I use, and it's found in a document. It was a book put together based on George Washington old writings. George Washington old writings. It's called Monuments of Washington Patriotism. It was produced, or the writings came, uh, it was in, uh, prior to 1841, they put it together in 1841. And in this writing, it has a constitution that was of that time period. And the 
Constitution. It simply states the Constitution of the United States. And then it goes into the preamble and it has a, a week, uh, a comma, since you're so nice. I'm gonna let you deal with that one. Now, what I want you to understand is what the Constitution really is. What is actually the Constitution? What is the literal body of the Constitution as opposed to what people think the Constitution is? So, I'm gonna rush. Let you work with this. What we're going to be dealing with uh, is the last article in the Constitution. Now, in uh, the Birch Society's Constitution, we turn to Article 7. Everybody turn to Article 7. I have the Birch um, version of the Constitution. And Brother Pompey has uh, the 1841 version of the Constitution. And Sister Rashida has the U.S printing off the version of the Constitution. And we're turning to Article 7. I would like for Rashida to read her last article. Read the last article and all the information that follows the last article. The ratification of the Convention of Nine States And then it, it proceeds to um, um, name the state. Find also by the definition of 12 states. 12 states, not 13. 12. 12. Okay. Now, I would like for you to read the seventh article in the 1841. No, it's seven less pages. Page maybe it's always the seven articles. You only have, have, um, um, the seven? You only have five? five. Okay, there's been push balls. Printed edition, latter edition, and this one has George Washington written all the way. Darning, the convention, unanimous, consent of the state. See, that's not even in the old constitution. That was added later. And then George Washington's name and all of those names were added. But in George Washington's own, okay. Read the game. Okay. okay, the ratification of the conventions of nine states shall be sufficient for the establishment of, of this constitution between the states so ratifying the same. And Rashidus would proceed to say, and this would, would proceed to say, could we read with yours? Signed in convention by the unanimous consent of the states present, present, the 17th day of September in the year of our Lord, 1787. Stop. Whereas well, he doesn't have that. Right. Because it's the older one. Well, that's the United States printing and the first society does the same thing and instead of saying G O they just put George Washington so they just added it on. Yeah, I don't even know what G O means necessarily. That may be a code. But they decided to put George Washington. You see what I'm saying? Taking it further uh, uh, thinking that they're clearing it up. When actuality they add more confusion because it's not on the original. And that's not the original, that's a copy. That's probably not even authentic one. We don't have the authentic constitution. If we did, we probably wouldn't be in the mess we in. You know, when you go to Washington, D.C., they have a constitution on top, but they never do let you see the one that's the real constitution that's in the vault below. You don't see that constitution. You see a copy. It's called engrossed. 
and engross copy. If you look up the word engross thoroughly with several dictionaries, it simply means to alter the change for the worse. Not just to blow up, but it means to alter or change to the worse. Yeah, engross. Yeah, yeah, in, in order to distort. It. it means to distort. And if she was to read her uh, footnotes, read down, uh, uh, go back to uh, the preamble in your constitution, Rashida, and just simply read the first line with the footnote dealing with number one, because at the top of the government printing book, it has number one, which means footnote. These books won't give you that. They take stuff out. Now read, read number one, what it says out loud. This text of the constitution follows the engrossed copy signed by General Washington. And the generation from 12 states. Now, how is he a general? When you tell you he's president, it's signed by General Washington or President Washington. He was our general, but they president. We our general, but they are president. Therefore, at the footnote was giving you part of the history, it's called them General Washington. But actually signing the document of the Constitution, they called him President George Washington. Right? right? Right. And that's the problem. Because he became president after he dropped. I mean, he became, yeah, after he uh, resigned his commission as commander in chief. Right. So he can't be general. But he was never president for us, the Moors, or the national. He was always a general in the executive branch. I hope you're following me. Mm -hmm. Right. But he was, he was both executive. Oh yeah, he was he was he was a warlord. He was a warlord. Mm -hmm. Simply the warlord to execute certain things. The warlord, uh, not the president of the United States. He was the president of the, an executive department, not the president of the United States of America. He was the president of the executive department as a warlord, like a chief executive, mm -hmm. and called and in, and in, in, in called into when called into actual service. Now in this book, it shows tell it shows you when he received his commission to become the general of the. Uh, Continental forces, and at the same time, the colonies assigned him their general too. And, and this particular book is in here. Okay, I'll read it to you. Mm -hmm. Public documents connected with the military command and civil administration of George Washington, resolution of Congress. General and commander in chief, and it's a bunch of dashes and dots. Remember, I told you about them dashes and dots now. They mean that they're leaving stuff out. Commander in chief, in his acceptance, committed, appointed to draft a commission, their report, resolutions of the, of the Congress, resolved that, the, that a general be appointed to command all continental forces raised to be raised for the, for the defense of American liberty. Not the United States, not the United States of America, not the United States of North America. Because see, when you say American, you, you're just so general. They don't want to target it because they know that he's going to also be doing some other things. So they, they use that word American. But that, that's all the way from Chile to Alaska. So who are you talking about when you say American? Now, I'm an American. Well, where are you from? I'm an American. Well, where are you from? You know. And then they say, and then they say well, what's your nationality? And the average person in America don't know what to say. I'm an American. That's not a nationality. Not an American. <laughs> so, then he goes on to say, um, the president informed Colonel Washington that the Congress had unanimously made choice of him to be general and commander chief of the American forces. Not the United States of America yet. The American forces requested he would accept the employment to which Colonel Washington, standing in his place, answered. Mr. President, da 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 da. And it says, and then it goes down here and it follows. Uh, and the committee appointed, it says, the person chosen to compose a committee were Mr. So and so and so and so so and so. The committee appointed to draft a commission to general report the same, which being read by the paragraph and debated was agreed to as follows. Then it goes down to it says in Congress by the delegates of the United Colonies. And at the top, it says the Congress for the American forces. So we're getting ready to go into a whole nother thing because it says down here 
Um, we repose and special, and they have a different title here. See, it's, they put a different title to George Washington because you're going to talk about something different. But you won't know that because you don't understand the procedure, how they write. And it says, we repose and special trust. Remember, they've already been commissioned. At, in, we repose and special trust and confidence in your patriotism, valor, conduct, and fealty. Do by these present constitute and appoint you to be general and commanding chief of the army of the United Colonies. Another commission. Right. United Colonies. United Colonies. Mm -hmm. So he's he's general of America. He's a general of America, all of America. Right. But America is not one particular country. Right, you got North, South, and Central America. And, and the United States of America, the United Colonies, all of this is America. That's why they said American. They're not talking about one specific, see, he was a mulatto amalgamated more. And when I say mulatto amalgamated more, I'm not talking about human complexion. I'm talking about cultures. He was both European and native. This is why everybody loved George. George is depicted in a bronze cast, which means he was a moat. Mm -hmm. Queen Charlotte and Charlotte is depicted in a bronze cast, which means she was a moat. That, right. is, that is a native, a national of the United States. That's why Charlotte was called Queen mm -hmm. And Queen Charlotte Sophia has an African name, a Jalea or something, I can't remember it. Um, is the great grandmother of King Charles, Prince Charles, and uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth. Therefore, they are more. They are national. They are the Illuminati, the black nobility, however amalgamated, and they are following the plan also. See, so Queen Charlotte is depicted in bronze. Now, uh, a few years back, Caucasians used to complain the people who came from up north. You know, because Charlotte had such a flux of people coming into it from up north, and they were complaining, why would you depict her downtown in, in, in bronze? Which is, you know, that, that means you're black, really, you know, and more. And they were complaining about that, and they kept calling down to the city hall. Well, during Black History Month, at that particular time, uh, they, uh, McDonald commercials talked about Statue of Liberty being the black woman. Right. You know, da 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 And then it came on the third one was, uh, Queen Charlotte Sophia was a black woman. They put it right on TV, so ain't nobody made no more calls. So, you have to understand, George Washington was in that ill. He was in that mix. He was a mulatto. Remember George Washington, Benjamin Frank, all these people studied a lot of the Indian so-called history. Albert Pike, the great uh, morals and dogmas, and a lot of us attack him for saying he was a racist. Right. Because he said that Negroes were this, that, and the other, and you don't need to deal with Negroes. However, the Indians are very, very noble people. Da -da 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 -da. He praises the Indians and come down on the Negroes. Well, the Indians were the nationals. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the Negroes were the ones who were property of, of, the, of, the, of the state. And they were actually Caucasian, and a lot of the Africans that our Moorish, brutish Moors, had brought over here and sold in captivity. The Caucasians never went into Africa. They're not, they were not allowed to go into interior Africa and catch anybody. They sit on the outskirts near the, near the coast and our people would bring and pull up their ships mm -hmm. because they didn't even understand what type of servitude they were going to be dealing with because Africans didn't have that type of slavery. Totally different. And all this has been on television. The Caucasian Unqualified. And if you get the, the Prophet's book, the, the Prophet Nobu Drew Ali, the founder, um, he tells you in there that I'm going to make the Caucasians tell the truth yeah. with the radios and so and so and they, he ain't had no TV so he couldn't say that but he said I'm going to make them tell the truth before the end and they put everything on arts and entertainment the history channel and they put all this stuff out and the biggest problem with, with uh, the people of the west coast telling uh, their story how they were the slavers they been in it all their lives uh, is when black Americans come over there when black Americans come and they teach them and tell them what really went on, they get offensive. No, it didn't happen like this. White folk did it. Right. Because that's what the Caucasian wants you to believe. That a boatload of Caucasians, one step up from an ancestor, Neothal man, or, or, or whatever you want to know, what's all what's not Neothal, Pro Magnum, you know what I'm saying? It can defeat a whole continent. The conquistadors dropped off. In Florida somewhere, uh, wherever they were, and down in Montezuma, and wiped out everybody with one boatload of 
Now, if you believe that, then they are superior. They got to be superior. You got to be out of your mind to believe something like that. A boatload of Caucasians wiping out dark-skinned people when the day they so afraid of you. That makes no sense. No, because it never happened like that. And so when the people in Africa started to teach the story of what occurred, black folk back to Africa, they get offensive. Right. Because it just does not, it doesn't gel with Dr. Clark, Ben Jokinon, Adam Van Sertigan, and the rest. It just doesn't gel with, the, with what they teach. That we were so happy and docile and lived such a great life that we didn't even know how to fight. Well, we had some defects. <laughs> we had a lot of defects. Oh, but see, they were just more cunning and tricky. So they crafted that mean they mind outworked your mind. <laughs> Either way you go, you inferior. If you believe that. So during the particular time that uh, certain energy comes to the planet from our ancestors and from the high up and from the law. There's also that same energy enters into the, the planet the same way it enters into a human being. You have two pulsations. When you to keep you alive, you have to understand it's two beats. Boom, boom. You have to take air in, and but if you just keep it in, you'll die. Right. You have to let it out. There's two beats. In order to move, you have to go both ways. Both legs. Neither one of them is good or evil. It's evil if you get stuck. <laughs> you know, you become crippled. But it's no good or evil. But we think things are good and evil. And science don't deal with that. It deals with what is. So, when this energy comes to the planet, those who know receive it. And if they're a part of the negative or the, uh, 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 the initiated to hold you back, because we've been initiated. The pyramid is an initiation. You go into the pyramid to be initiated. And as you travel up the path, before you get to the natural eye, the natural eye over the pyramid, which means the God, you have to go through the artificial eye, the pyramid, which is blocked. And these blocks, a block is a cell block, because we in a cell. The cells in our bodies is the same as a cell, which means you locked and confined. So when you go through the pyramid, you going through initiation, which is this and that. To reach the top is one, but it supports both. So when this energy comes to the, comes to the planet, it, the people on the, uh, uh, on the on the in the part of, of keeping you in check, they receive the energy too. Right. And, the, and the the beings that receive the positive, the messengers, they receive it too. Right. But these two are opposite. But they receive the same power. So what happens is those who are in see, most of the people that are on what you call the right hand side of the positive, trying to help people, are, 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 are what you call natural. They're not really organized. Like you think they are. It's something that comes and by their own ability, they pick up on it. That's why they, 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 they rise to the crop or to the top sometimes. They go over people and people say, okay, I'm following this person. Whereas the left hand path simply is organized. So they have a structure. So their job is to stop you from getting out of the pyramid with the same power that's coming in. So they, they, they precede the chosen or the messengers. They put the information out in advance and add something to it. To distort it, so it looks as though it's the same information as what the, the natural people will be bringing forth. So when people see it, it's in the middle. They choose this one. All they the step way. on the left hand side because the left hand side is more organized. The left hand side has power and money and everything else behind it. And what the left hand side does, it sends out agents. It sends people out to do the same thing. And these people go out and they become just teachers and speakers and so and so. And they do it several ways. It's not necessarily the direct. They don't hire them, but they use the energy on them. The fact that the mind control, the, the, you know, the mind is something. It's called a little Jedi trick. They target in on them. They find out their weaknesses. And then they magnify those weaknesses, deal with the ego. And now you got an agent out there indirectly that's more, he, he, he's so sincere, it's unreal. Deadly. Deadly, because he's sincere, but the other one is acting. The real agent to come in that's just acting. So those type of people usually lead the, the, the serious agents from the so-called left-hand path, the federal government's going to use that, are uh, usually deal with law and things that are mathematical and analytical because you don't need inspiration for that. 
Whereas the other people, they have to get people from that's actually sincere and believe in what they're doing, and they're very, very good at that. Would that be like uh, Jesus, the wise man, and also prophets and don't have the same information, but you like the different. Okay, Jesus, the wise man, uh, and, and who the other third? Who's the third? Pontus. The pontiff. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. It, it was, okay, there was a Christ to be born on the planet, Jesus. Now Jesus is to be born amongst the, the people. Right. What kind of people? Very low people, because he's born in the stable amongst animals. Right. And he's supposed to be their salvation. But at the same time, Pilate and Herod recognize the same sign that the three wise men recognize. And they all was to find the same entity. But for different reasons. Pilate, being the Roman, had to take control in another side of the situation. Herod being uh, a what? The original or a indigenous person? I'm throwing two terms in there again. What do you think Pilate was? Was he aboriginal or indigenous? Aboriginal. Nobody else? All right, it was Pilate, it was, uh, not Pilate, um, Herod. It was Herod, not Pilate. He was a what now? Was he a Jew or a Hebrew? He was a sect of the uh, of the Jews. I mean. was, he a, was he a Jew or a Hebrew? He was a Hebrew. Was he a Jew? Was he a Jew? Was he a king of the Jews here at that time? Yeah. yeah. So, so he was a Jew or a Hebrew, right? Mm -hmm. So was he full blood? No. No, Herod was not a full blood. Mm -hmm. Whereas was Pilate a Jew or a Hebrew? He's a, he's a, uh, he, uh, he was a Jew. Pilate? He was, I think he was a Roman. Pilate was a Roman completely. Really? Yeah. Pilate was, Pilate, yeah, Pilate was a Roman. Pilate. So you had an alien? Right. right. A half alien. Mm. And a natural born citizen, the one that they tried to really cling to. You had three different types there. Pilate simply means those who steer. Those who control the pilot. Mm -hmm. The governor. Wrong with ruling one. Right. Pompous pilot. Pompous need high up rulers. Yeah, yeah he was the governor. He ruled all of Israel. And Herod was the Indians they put in our place today. The Indians that they put in our place today. Right. Called them the, the, the real people. But he, they only had half of us. Meaning that they don't really have a Moorish culture. They only got part of it. Right. So they have breed. But it's not, it's not complexion. See, that's not what the scriptures are dealing with. It does not deal with complexion, nor does it deal with gender. It deals with things far greater than that. So you had these groups of people, and then, then you had that natural born person. That one that was from most of the people who came from the heavens, the one that's supposed to, and everybody wanted to be targeted in on that. The three wise men, being the three high chakras, chakras, glandular structures, was supposed to be that this energy was given to this poor person. Christ is always in the middle. He's always on the cross. He's the fifth principle, but he's number four. Because he's the word. The word is a thorax gland. And he speaks on the cross. The cross was trying to cross people over. So you have um, the artificial the administrative government trying to claim this, and you have the, 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 the natural born subject. Not the natural born citizen, the natural born subject. Remember the dash between it, trying to claim. Now, is a natural born subject indigenous or aboriginal? Natural born subject. Mm -hmm. Uh, indigenous. Is a natural born citizen indigenous or aboriginal? Aboriginal natural born. Natural born citizen. Natural born citizen. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one is uh, indigenous. Aboriginal. Aboriginal. Uh, can an indigenous person be aboriginal? Yeah. Can an aboriginal be indigenous? No. Right. No, they're not. <laughs> 
Yeah. You tell me a natural born subject or a natural born citizen with a dash. Right. That's a that's a denizen. Mm-hmm. It's the same. Yeah. Uh, and a denizen, okay. Right. I mean, you did it. I'm trying to get you to see it every way because yeah. that's what right. you're going right. to be dealing with. Right, 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 right. See, I'm crossing it up deliberately. All right, right. Now, denizen, national denizen, and alien. That's great. We we don't have any problems with that one, dude. Mm-hmm. You all gonna remember that one yesterday. National. Natural born, natural born subject, subjugated. So I'm saying, now we're using Aboriginal and Indigenous. Which one is Indigenous? Uh, number two. Number two. And it votes for number one. Mm-hmm. You say number one is Indigenous? Uh, I said number one was uh, Aboriginal. And this one is simply what? Instead of saying 80, you just add another term in this form. Right? That's what you all say. So I'm asking you, can this one be indigenous? Can the aboriginal be indigenous? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Or can the indigenous be aboriginal? No. No. Uh-huh. Which one is older? Which one is the only did it with these three right here? Adam, Eve, yeah. Father, or to come from? Exactly. Right. To proceed from Ab, from the original Father. Right. So, the word means original. Right. So, which one is the oldest? Original. So, this, this, is, this is the oldest. Which one is the next oldest? Original. Right. And that's next. And that's last. Right. That's what you're saying. Right. So, can this one be this one? Right. But can this one be this one? No, sir. Do you know the definition of indigenous? Uh, <laughs> it could be, uh, could be, could be. Indigenous, um, touched upon people being over land, but they didn't originate from the land. Right. Legally, dealing with international law, nations, and what else? Indigenous represent a group of people who were part of the colonial European European uh, uh, colonial process. The doctrine of discovery. It had those individuals who were who were forced into uh, bondage during the colonial period. Those who brought the people into the bondage, the proprietors, and out of that mix, anyone who 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 was here before the during the colonial period and fought for their freedom and returned to the culture from which they were torn is classified as indigenous. If you were brought over here in bondage, if you were a proprietor. Well, uh, it matters not what complexion you were, but if you were brought over here in bondage or you were deprived for prizes during the colonial period and you fought for your freedom and returned from, to which the culture you were torn, then you were classified internationally as indigenous. So when they talk about indigenous rights, they're talking about a specific group of people, not necessarily the definition that's used in law. So you have to understand what indigenous means. Can Europeans be indigenous? Or some of that definition. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, the proprietors, if they were that, but we would have found out they weren't. But even if they were the slaves, which they were, they still broke away and fought for their what? Freedom. And what culture did the Europeans return to? The culture from which they were torn. Because they broke away from Britain. So what culture is it? Uh, England, so what culture did they return to? The English culture. Isn't that what's dominant over here in America? The English culture. They returned to that culture. But if you were from Africa, and you were forced into bondage, involuntary servitude, what culture must you return to? 
Right, and this is why you see all of these Afrocentric people in America, spiritual and consciously returning to their culture, but not claiming indigenous. They're claiming Africa. Not understanding that they can claim what? Indigenous. Oh. Indigenous, they can be both. Now, when you return to your culture, is that the same thing returning to your land? No. No. That's nothing to do with it. See, so they're missing out. So Afrocentric people are missing out on a grand opportunity what's been set up for them. Remember, I told you, the energy coming down out of the pyramid works on both. On the positive and what we call the negative or this and that. It works on both. So when it was when all this was being initiated, set up by the ancestors, it, it, it's creating the conditions positive for everybody. But man knows thyself. You don't know who you are. You don't know where you at. You don't know anything. Then anything can do. So you end up in what? What do you remember? What citizens trying to go back to Africa to get some type of sovereign recognition and jurisdiction when it won't work unless you literally move back to what? Africa. But if you want to bring Africa over here, you already have the opportunity based on what they call indigenous status. Problem? Indigenous. Okay. Go ahead. So, uh, an indigenous person can be born a foreign person. Right. Because a foreigner is one who comes a whole lot what? Later, after the definition of indigenous has been set up. Right. Now, if there was a war in the, in, in, in the Americas, and after this war had been uh, over, the people who did certain things, and they came up with the criteria of saying who's indigenous, and if it fit foreign of the people who came in before the war, then they're indigenous too. You can change the definitions when you win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you determine that. When you win, you, you know, you could choose the history, you do everything you want to do. Who, who's going to stop you? No, but Aboriginal is a little different. Aboriginal means you were always what? There. You originated from there. And there were there were national more Africans over here who originated in the America. When the continent split long ago. We've been on this a long time. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I, I noticed what you were talking about when you talk about the population and how they set up things to confuse you and escape from the truth. Okay. So when I look at the Internal Revenue Code, yeah, they, they, they have an inclusive language. So they're talking about that particular entity, that, that federal entity, that United States person. Corporation. Yeah, so, so, yeah, the corporation. So we might say that's us when it's an income all sorts of derived. They're not talking about the sources, like the natural person. Correct. Not totally different. They brought it to the I. The I owe the period is that natural. And there's no connector now. That's right. There's nothing connected to the artificial yeah. with the natural. Right. You have to do that on your own. That's right. You have to do that. You have to build up your essence. You have to reclaim who you are on your own. And they won't put that down where you can see it. That's what you got to do with the mind. Right. Man. I'm going to read this and, um, and I'm going back. But I need to read this so you all get an understanding of this the United States of America, George Washington being the mulatto, that's what we're dealing with. The mulatto, both cultures. So George Washington and them would, would actually be classified as indigenous today, wouldn't they? Both right. cultures. Wow. Hmm? Yeah, they fought for their freedom. They returned to the culture who was there at home. Now, this is again dealing with George Washington's own handwriting records and things of this sort. That is it. Or for the future Congress of these United Colonies or committees. Order. That the same be fairly transcribed, signed by the President, and tested by the Secretary, and delivered to the General, revolved in that where the delegates of the colonies, colonies, not states, they, they commissioned him to be the General, and we, having the Continental Force, Forces, then the Continental Forces right. commissioned him to be the general. Right, the Continental Army. Mm -hmm. The Continental Army. Two different things now. Right. Now, after doing all of that, and he took both posts, our people came up with this letter, circular letter from General Washington to the governor of the several states upon the, import, the important interests of the Union. What Union? The Union of the States? 
Or the union of the states and the colonies. The union of the states. And the colonies. Mm-hmm. And the colonies. Yeah, but he brought them both together. Oh, yeah, inclusive. Right. All right. And they do not mention directly in the Constitution. They are provided for. Let me show you where. So you're talking about, you talking about an alliance? An alliance between the two. Because you got to understand now, after the Revolutionary War, right. which was fought for the Nationals, right. and the War of Independence, who was fought for the aliens, right. mm-hmm. or the denizens, to be more exact, the denizens. <laughs> The Caucasian armies became so strong and, and, and that they actually now wanted to take their own land. They wanted to separate from the national government. Right. It was the Honorable George Washington who brought both parties back together so it would not be a war amongst themselves because the, 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 the British was waiting the opportunity to come back and take it over again. All this in, in, in these writings. Oh, oh, oh. See, they were lurking. Right. Trying to see what was happening. And he talks about, and, and uh, I, I would have to read it. See, George Washington was our man. He was not, again, he was amalgamated. Right. Let me read something he said so you get a good understanding. He talks about how the United States now, the United States was an empire. Man, there's no way in our history that 12 colonies could be an empire. <laughs> See if I can find it for you. The foundation of our empire was not laid in the gloomy age of ignorance and superstition, but in the epoch when the rights of mankind were better uh, understood and more clearly defined than at any form of period. Researchers of history, researchers of the human mind after social happiness have been carried to a great extent. The treasures of knowledge acquired by the labels of philosophers. Uh, and sages and legislators through a long succession of years are laid open for use and their collective wisdom may be happily applied in the establishment of our form of government. An empire that had all this sages, legislators, and -and so-and-so here. The free cultivation of letters the unbound extension of commerce, the progressive refinement of manners, the growing liberty of sentiment, and above all, the pure and benign light of revelation have had a mellowing, mellowing influence on mankind and increased the blessing of society. At this auspicious period, the United States came into existence as a nation. Yeah. No, all this beautiful period. But he's talking about the old United States of the Americas. Right. Our old empire. That's right. when it came into, it was the uh, empire. We, didn't we say we had an empire over here? Right. And that's when the United States came into what? Existence. So the Lord's empire was called the what? The uh, United States. United. I keep trying to tell you all that. The United States is, has several different meanings. Right. I broke it down to you yesterday. I gave you one, but on the other class, I gave you at least three. All of them dealing with the United States. That is a word of art. <laughs> that's a idiom. It can say one thing and have another meaning. So, George Washington, in his own mouth, is saying that this is when the United States came into existence as a nation. And, listen to what he said, if their citizens, let that say, their citizens, their citizens should not be completely free and happy. If their citizens should be free and happy, what that say? The cult will be entirely their own. Their own. Such is the situation and such is our prospect. But notwithstanding the cup of blessing, it does reach out to us. To who? The colonies. See, he's, represent, he's the president representing the colonies. Right. Even though he's an employee for us. Right. No, he's, he's watching out. But no, both. No, 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 no. Because he, he, he made the colonists submit. He stopped the war and told them, look, you better cling to America, the United States, because that's your only hope. Right. Okay. Um, blessings thus reached out to us, notwithstanding happiness is ours, if we have disposition to seize the occasion and make it our own. Yet, it appears to me that there is an option still left to, what's the name of this country? 
United States of America. United States of America. To this country. Right? Wait a minute. Whether they, whether they, not us, whether they will be respected and prosperous or contemptible in this resignation. This is the time of respectable and um, Go down here. This is the time of their political of probation. Their political probation. This is a moment for the whole for the eyes of the whole world to turn upon them. Not us. This is the time to establish their national character forever. This is a favorable moment to give such a tone to a federal government. To bring the federal government into all of this. Because the federal government eventually became the department that handled the war. All fighting. <laughs> See, he was bringing them together, saying, okay, now's the time for the federal government, the executive department, to come in to protect us from the enemy. Go ahead. Okay. Hold it. Answer the ends of the institution. Or this may be the ill-fated moment for relaxing the powers of the union. Which union? The colonies and the states. Annihilating the seamen of the confederation. Exposing us to become the sport of European politics. Right. And that it already defeated. But if we didn't stay together, then Europeans would come back over here and take over again. Exactly. So they had to form an alliance. The United States of America formed an alliance with the United Colonies. And they created a word of art that, that's been around for God knows how long. And they use it called the United States, which can mean almost anything. Universal meaning. Yeah. Universal Several different meanings. So that's what George did. Then it goes on further to talk about uh, um, a lot. How he he, he personally was uh, given recognition for creating the federal department, all of that, and how he was the first magistrate of the federal government. First magistrate. Yeah, the first magistrate of the federal government, not the United States of America, and that he was inaugurated in federal hall, not White Hall. <laughs> White Hall is different than Federal Hall. White Hall is where the United States is supposed to be in America. So, that's the one that we got to call? Hmm? White Hall over there? No, White Hall here. It's a place called White Hall here. The White Hall, not Federal Hall. In, in the government. You know it, right? That's what I said. Yeah, it's called White Hall. The United States of America has White Hall, the Federal Government has Federal Hall. Where's White Hall? Okay. Washington, D.C., all of these. Now, George Washington. was a federalist. But federalist means a person who believed in the power in the national hood. Yep. Government. It's a little different now, isn't it? Right. right. That's not a political hood party. That's a person that believes in power in a national government. He was a federalist. The federal government transferred from in the Articles of Confederation to a national hood government. Yep. Right. However, there was no administrative what federal government. Right. So, and I read the Teen Office of the Federation where they could appoint a, a, a one to manage the affairs and so on, so on, so on, so on. And that became the administrative federal government that would function through the executive department. But there's no federal government mentioned in the Constitution. So I'm gonna let these gentlemen get into this. Put y'all right in the ball. Yep, you see something. What I want you to do is simply call out the state. No more, no less. It starts here. It says the state is called out. New Hampshire, then go to Massachusetts. And just, you don't have to say anything in between. Just call out the state, and you read it. And he number. When he whenever he call out a state, you just number. That's real. Just do that. Nothing. No, no more. No that. And you can say one. Okay. New Hampshire. One. Massachusetts. Two. Rhode Island. Three. Oh. 
provinces like they or Connecticut, Bar, New York, Mexico, Germany, Pennsylvania, A, Delaware, Nine, Maryland, Ten, Virginia, West, Carolina, well, South Carolina, Thirteen, Fourteen. That's all on your mind. Your mind got it went it went to that previous education. It went to your previous education though when you got to the fourteen state. That's fourteen, isn't it? Okay. But actually it was originally it was originally I need a, something to wipe this board. Uh, a piece of tile or something. It was originally 13, 13 states, right? Yeah. However, we just saw based on the Supreme Law of the Land is fourteen. Right? So we got 14 based on the Supreme Law of the Land, which is the Constitution of the United States of America. So right now we got a problem. We got a problem. Now, I'd like for you to read George Washington notes after they signed the Constitution. Just call them out and you count them. Mm-hmm. Just the state. We have one, two, Massachusetts. Three, ten, four, zero, five, New York, six, Virginia, seven, Jersey, eight, North Carolina, nine, Pennsylvania, and South Carolina, Georgia, Hmm. Now you got, wait, though, now that's supposed to be 13. It was also 13 colonies, right? Oh, now we end up with what? Well, we got some serious mail. <laughs> we got some problems, some serious problems, based on what we call the Constitution. So, how in the world can this work? Well, in a thing called algebra, which leads you to calculus, you have to take the known and come up with the unknown. So, everybody here can do calculus and algebra. I know you can. Well, so now we have 14 equals 12. Now, x is the unknown. Therefore, x must equal both 14 and 12. But it gotta be dealing with law. Cause that's what we're dealing with. Where is the solution? You read. You read right over. But you don't know because you've been pre-programmed. Because 13 original colonies plus the 13 original states is the number of what? 26. 26. 13 plus 13. Now I'm saying it's two different things. And it shows you there's two different things because you come up with two different numbers. 12 and 14. However, 12 plus 14 equals what? 26 also. So if you understand the X factor, then it balances out, doesn't it? But we know that we have to take one away from this and we have to add one to this to make it equal. Because I told you before, I showed you yesterday there were two states. There. Up under uh, 5 USC, I show you two states, number one and number two. One of them represented the subdivision of the state, and the other one actually represented the state that was owned. The whole state. Mm -hmm. the, the, the real state, two states. The national state that was declared long before the Constitution of the United States was a sovereign state, and then the colonial estates or states that were allowed to come into the Union as a subdivision, an agent. I told you that. Y'all remember that, right? Mm -hmm. So, the two different states. One of them is a state, but these are not really states. These are actually what? Nation. Nations. That's called state. But the other one is actually in S state, which became or came from what we call colony. Because we I showed you yesterday where a colony of plantation is in the state. But another name for the colony in the S states was called plant what? Plantation. 
Well, now I'm gonna let you read it again, and you're gonna solve it, folks. You don't have to count, because you already did that, but now solve this for us, based on what the information I just gave you. Call them out. Come on, let your mind do it. Don't try to think. What's the next thing? Just call it out. Uh, nah, -uh. that's not right. Start it for now, so you won't do it. See what your mind is doing. Yeah. That's your, that's your form of training. You've been educated not to see. Your mind will not deal with that when it's right in front of you. But pro it's the next one is called what now? Providence Plantation. And, okay, now look at the board. You see anything up there related to Providence Plantation? Mm -hmm. The Providence are uh, connected with it. The, the what now? <laughs> up under what term on the board? Plantation. Plantation is right there in your face. Right. Providence what? Plantation. What does Providence mean? Doesn't it mean to, prov to provide for? Mm -hmm. Therefore, that's not really a what? A state. That's a condition which is a state of mind. That will be provided for the colonies at a later date to come into the union because the federal administrative government did not come into the union in 1791. One. And it would bring in all of the 12 corporate entities up under it. Therefore, when we read the history book, we got 13 what? States on the, on the historical flag. But that's not what's on the hood. The official flag. Right. Which is this flag. You follow? They provided for. Not only they provided for it then, they provided for it in the past because the word providence also comes from the word provision, meaning to do it in the in the future and to take care of you right at the moment. Provide for it. Provisio and providence come from the same word. That's why the I is called the high providence. Over the dollar bill. Say again? The I on the dollar bill is also called the I of providence. Isn't it? The all seeing as the high of providence because it provides for it right now and anticipate. For your posterity. For your posterity and pre means for two foot. People. Even though you're not written, worded, but you're provided for. You're provided for. So we have 14 states and 12 colleges. George Washington and them were never on the Constitution. You all missed that. That's still the old Constitution. George Washington and the colonists were never part of the Constitution of the United States of America. It was added late. And when they did sign it, they signed it with 12 states. 14. No, when they signed it, they signed it with 12. George Washington, it was 12, wasn't it? They just read out 12. Right, but they didn't read them all. Yes, he did. And he did read them all. Okay. Go ahead, I'm listening. Um, I'm listening. From that back to Massachusetts, take up quite a bit of space and look up where Maine is now, as well as, um, I believe, the problem. Yeah, but you missed fast yesterday. Yeah. See, uh, the landmass is called the 13 states of colony. It has nothing to do with historical landmass. That's just something Rockefeller does. See, Rockefeller handled all of the educational system and books and things. That's just a made of history. I showed them a map where our actually 13 zones, they were not nation states, went all the way from uh, Alaska to Canada to um, the Gulf of Mexico, all the way back over to the uh, Ohio Valley, the Mississippi River. And it was in 1787 before they made up a history. And it was called Carolina. But that was for the free people and the subjugated British people were called Virginia. Virginia was one big company all over the whole place that attached themselves, the 12 corporations attached themselves to the 13 zones. See, so you missed that. You see what I'm saying? You missed so much. Now, what, you'll be able to get the tape of the whole lecture if you so choose. I'll put you, you know, I'll give you a number for that. Uh, so you missed so much. See, your questions have already been answered. Yeah, 12. It was 12, right? Yeah, 12. But I thought it was, uh, he, didn't, he didn't read them all. Yeah, he read them. This brother over here read them. He read the 13, the 14, and then he read the 12. Oh, you're talking about that? Oh. Yeah, he read both. I'll be there. I'm going to tell the 12. What I was thinking, you know, was that the college was just a, uh, just a, 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 a
state. But I said George Washington. You have to listen to what I said. I said his government, their government, right. the federal mm-hmm. government. That, they only had 12. Right, right. yeah. Call it state. That space, calling it 12. Okay. See, don't get hung up on tomato and tomato. <laughs> You know, we go beyond that. You say, you gotta understand, I'm trying to teach you different sayings or terms for the right. same thing. But when I put the prefix or the prename George Washington, that, and then I said 12. So that's, right. that, that's what the Washington dealt with 12, and our people actually dealt, literally dealt with 14. Although one of the states was not geography, it was a condition. All persons born in naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction they are, are citizens of, 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 of the United States in a state of mind, condition wherein they reside. Therefore, everybody have their own state residence. So what state you belong to? You? What about you, sir? Right. All, all of you, all the captives, including you, even though you are more, by the mere fact that you say you belong to the state of Virginia, you're not understanding what you're dealing with. You're dealing with the 14th Amendment citizenship. Whereas all nationals, all nationals, natural born, are citizens of the first seven what? Articles, not the amendment. You're a citizen of the first seven articles, not the amendment. And there's no such thing as a subject to citizenship in the first seven articles. There's no such thing as a subject to anybody in the first seven articles. Only the 14th Amendment deals with subjugation of people, and I showed them that, that means serf yesterday. Because all white folks came over here as subjects, and they still subjects. This is what they're in the uproar about today. The they're finding this out. So they're attacking the federal government. So, based on the first seven articles, the first seven articles is your citizenship. But your citizenship is a national citizenship that deals with sovereign states, not estates. Or colonies. Mm-hmm. You found in the first seven articles. You a dentist? Yeah. How long you been in the, in the so-called America? Yeah. So you you a dentist? You you have a higher citizen than it actually the neighbors. <laughs> they strictly aliens, even though you alien too, Dennison. You alien Dennison, but they, they are national Dennison, but they so messed up. See, they, they, it's just it's kind of hard to get into that. But you, you're a citizen in the first seven articles if you make a claim to that. However, right now you're just a 14th Amendment citizen. They're subject to slaves. That's why they can tax you, uh, tell you what to, how to drive your automobile, tell you to report your, your property. Everything they can tell you is because of you gave them permission to do that. Via your driver's license, you went to college, you fill out grants and loans. No grants, no loans. Well, okay, yeah, grants. I know, I got you. I know you did. Grant, uh, driver's license. If you've been married, all right. Um, you think of anything else they got you with? Out? No, no, no. no. That's a given. Yeah, I'm just telling what he signed. He didn't even sign the application. You understand? Know got the degree, but see, your your parents signed you in up on the birth certificate. We missed that yesterday because the word born means to deliver over the product to the state. That's why they have a big delivery room. It doesn't say birth room. It doesn't say being born room. It says delivery room. And delivery is a contract. When you pull up in front of your yard, UPS, the man gets out, he delivers, and you have to sign the document. Therefore, you transfer the rest or the pot. That's what happens when you're born. See, your parents did that. I was just trying to give him the ones he was guilty of. You say you transferred the rest? Yeah, the profit, the called the rest, R-E-S. Yeah, the thing. Oh, right, right. The rest. Right. Mm-hmm. The thing, right. The thing. Right. Whatever it is. Right. See, it doesn't have to be a human being, it can be a chair, but it's called rest. Right. So, going back, you have to understand, three types of citizenship. National, denizens, and aliens. National, denizens, and aliens. These are the three types of citizenship within the laws. National laws, constitutional laws, and the laws of nations. Now, administrative laws. How is this done? It's done through today. They keep you into this, they keep you in this jurisdiction, administrative jurisdiction, 14th Amendment. 14th Amendment citizenship through a thing called diversity of citizenship within the first seven articles. Within the first seven articles. 
after the first American Revolution, the Moorish Empire split. It fell apart. With the assistance and the help of the denizen proprietor who persuaded all of the serfs to fight on the side of the United States of America, to fight against the brutish Moors, the brutish Moors. The war was called the War of, Revo of the American Revolution for the Nationals, it was called the War of Independence for the Denizens. A declaration, a declaration by the representatives of the United States of America in General Congress Assembly was for the national people. The Declaration of Independence, which is the historical, not the official, was the Declaration for the Denizens. In 1898, Wilmington, North Carolina, November the 8th, the Declaration of White Independence occurred, which was the third type of citizen, during the coup d'etat. They spread it all the way from the coast of North Carolina to the coast of Oklahoma. The National Republican form of government, not National Democratic Party, was replaced by the federal election campaign democratic process system that deals with partisan parties. It has never been corrected. Neither the military, the president, the court, the governor, or anyone else corrected that situation. Democracy, actually, Republican form of government was betrayed in 1898 to the point that it's never been corrected. So, all governments today are illegal. Except, if you acquiesce, if you use implied consent, if you shut up and don't say anything, and you know you stole that candy, you guilty. However, if you declare and proclaim and reclaim, make a statement, hey, I'm not going for it. This is mine. You check. Did you steal that? What you supposed to say? No. That's a declaration. That's a statement. You just, no, you didn't acquiesce. We have acquiesced for so long it's unreal. Until, until 1913 when a man named Nova Drew Ali, the prophet, Came, came to back to America on his journeys after he had been initiated into the greater mysteries and declared that you are not Negro, colored, coons, or nothing else. You are national. You are a citizen of the United States. You have a, your own particular free and national constitution. That is to say, the Constitution of the United States of America, which is different than the Amendment Constitution, the 14th, 15th, 13th Amendment. Let me say all of this. Right. So, he made a claim for us. But, we weren't even born. Even though our bodies might have been around at that time, we had to reincarnate at this time. Okay. We were still children. So, he said in the future, there's going to be people coming into the movement who are going to be born with their eyes and ears wide open. They're going to take all those misunderstandings and throw them out, and they're going to do what they're supposed to do. That's right. That is the prophecy of the Moors, which is fulfilling the prophecy of the law and in the scriptures. But people don't realize that because they don't understand what the scriptures are. So, what we have is we have to declare and proclaim who you are. First, you have to find out who you are. What, who are you? Are you uh, Roman? Roman Jew? Or Hebrew? In the scriptures. National? Denizen? Or alien? in law. You have to find out who you are. And once you find out who you are, then you'll be up under your own vine, your own jurisdiction, and your own fig tree, your own nature, your own cultivation. See, you'll be up under that. Each person will to lie down up under their own. And there are people who, as I was saying before you all got here, they're, they're indirect agents. They're so satisfied with the beast or the system that they keep the system alive because the system is a parasite. It's attached. It can only draw the energy off of others and it appears to be the real deal when it isn't. So you have to understand. Find out who you are. And the prophet laid down all the guidelines for us to find out who we were. Now, 
federal government, the administrative people who have manufactured jurisdiction, that's the proper term, manufactured juris jurisdiction upon the diversity of citizenship does not have a problem as of date getting with what I'm talking about. Because everything that I say to you, I send to them. And even more. It's the people themselves, the national people themselves that have the problem. Because they are so fixed that they cannot see Providence Plantation. They, they refuse to see it. Unbeknown what they are dealing with. That's not their mind is functioning. The, the education the education system just kicked in. And you walk around doing this all day. But not be known. It's called the veil of ISIS. It's called the veil. It's called the sleep. The, the, the leap of the lift, lift, lift from heaven. It's a sleep. It's a veil that's over people's eyes. And it's the time period now for that veil to be unlifted. And people are being prepared to do that. This is one of the movements that's trying to unlift that veil to show you some things that would take you into the 21st century because the year 2000 came and went and the system didn't miss a heartbeat. Nothing happened to it. It became strong. Because the people were not ready. The Messiah would come when the people are ready. That's, that's the more statement. That's the old Hebrew more statement. The Messiah will come when the people are ready. And the teacher will come when the student is ready. So the Messiah didn't come because the people were not what? Ready. ready. So, everyone citizenship in here that has not counseled their birth certificate and other documents that bind them to Babylon is still a Babylonian. You can call yourself whatever you want to call yourself, but legally, that's just the way it is. So the solution lies in the 14th Amendment. Right. And uh, Rashida, will you read the 14th Amendment for me? Oh, yeah, I got I start off. All persons born and naturalized in the United States. Go ahead. Or. Or. Right? Say or, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are citizens of the United States, right? Stop. So, in order for you to be a citizen of the United States upon the 14th Amendment, you have to be subject. Mm -hmm. That's what it's saying. Right. You have to be a subject in order to be a citizen of the United States upon the 14th Amendment. Right. Go on. And whatever state you reside in, and you put yourself in like, the administrative state of Virginia when you say it, you're upon the state. Because that's what your birth certificate says. You're born in the state of Virginia. Uh, that's a contract, that's a legal agreement, that's a negotiable instrument. That particular birth certificate is sold all around the world. Your life is sold through your contract, not your body. You call an outline possession. And all states own all the outline possession. The outline possession is simply similar to your car. You own your car, but your car is found in South Carolina. They contact you in Virginia, don't they? That car has to be returned back to you, does it? So you can be in Shanghai and a 14th Amendment citizen, you still they profit. That's why you have to use a visa. I mean, a visa and a meeting visitor and a passport for you because you are up under martial law. So I don't care where you are, you outline a possession. And if you're working for them, your instrumentality. <laughs> You follow? If you're working for them, your instrumentality, no matter where you are, and if you're not right in their geographical location, then you're outlying possession. So you can lead the country. Don't really matter. Claim that you're so and so. But if you don't do away with that 14th Amendment citizenship, you better hide. Alright, so the 14th Amendment, keep reading. Stop. No state to do what now? Um, <clears throat> shall abridge the privileges or immunity of citizens of the United States. Stop. Now who is who are they talking about? Who? The denizens and the national. Because what state is it already talking about? No state of conditions, no state of conditions can abridge the privileges and the immunities 
Because that's found back in Article what? Four. Privileges or immunities of the citizens moving from different states, which is also found back in the Article of Confederation for the securing the blessing and liberty and so and so, so and so, the citizens, the free. See, they don't call them citizens, they call them free inhabitants in the older law. Free inhabitants in the older law. Which had nothing to do with what? White folk, right? We done went through that. The word white person means a person is not free. The word free white person is a denizen or mulatto. And a free person or a free man is a national and a more. So, no state, I don't care what state of conditions, can take away certain privileges and immunities of citizens of the United States that's founded and predicated on the first seven articles that's also found in USC 8, Title 8, the one that's an allegiance system. Remember? Can't take those away, can you? No. So, even in, in the 14th Amendment, the beast, it still turned back into the nine, don't it? It flips. Now read, read the rest. Nor shall any state require any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. Stop. Without due process of law. What type of law? Whose law? Which means, what's jurisdiction? Because law is established by jurisdiction. So by, without due process of jurisdiction. But we found out now that everybody today basically is up on the administrative way. Jurisdiction. So even if you get due process in the law, you still a slave if you're for the administrative jurisdiction. And that's still due process. So that ain't saying much. Go ahead. Nor deny any person within this jurisdiction the equal protection of the law. Nor deny any person within this jurisdiction the equal protection of the law. Same thing. <laughs> equal protection of what law? According on what jurisdiction you're in, it's based on the laws that you have to be tried upon. So when you walk into the magistrate court, the, the, the lower court, you're treated like an honor. You're herded in there. But the minute you say what? Not what? What that mean? You what? You submitted yourself to the jurisdiction of the court. I'm going to tell you how slick they were. When I was a, just, or just a regular moor fighting under, under the feds that Mr. Brother have on, I used to go in and out of them courts fighting all the time. This was a prize for me back to back to back. <laughs> you know, before this information started coming. I'm battling with the judge. They gave me all kinds of respect, right? For calling the feds. Right. Put me on the witness. No, that was the second time. The first time, I'm in there, I'm over here talking to him, and I said, I'm not in your jurisdiction. He says, you're in the state of North Carolina? I said, no, I'm not. I'm in North Carolina. Okay. You look at me head. You in Mecklenburg County? I said, no, I'm in Mecklenburg. <laughs> he looked at me and paused a minute. He said, you are here, aren't you? Yeah. He said, put down that guilt. Now, I thought about that thing. Later on, when he said he was up there on the bench where your cold is, and I'm over here. Mm -hmm. Now, am I over there? No, and when he said you were here, he was calling me in his what? Jurisdiction. <laughs> I said, yeah. <laughs> I should have said, no, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I was battling, you know, I lost, but I still battled, right? <laughs> See, so but I didn't know. And I, again, yesterday, and if any answer you give, and see, he, he respected the feds then. It had nothing to do with law, and he was seeing if I knew something, uh, so he was playing a cat and mouse game. But if you go in there not knowing anything, then they just put it in the car. Not guilty! Well, we got it. We got it. That's it. But yesterday, I told you what to say. Then. Right. You're supposed to say certain things, and then that way. Okay, it not no matter what, whatever they do after this, it doesn't work. Just move. Yeah, it's just move. You know? The move. You do this. The move. The move. Right. The move. <laughs> That's what that's yeah, that's see, that's, that's saying something, because the more walking there, they were the what? The free men. You do what you want to do. <laughs> you demit, the more. No matter what you do. <laughs> we need a legal term, but people don't know what they mean. So, 14th Amendment is 69 at the same time. It's a subjugation, and at the same time, it connects you with the law upon the no state 
That's called diversity of citizenship. This is when they are dealing with it. Now, this is the seventh edition of Black's Law Dictionary. And we're on page 491. And this particular diversity of citizenship is called manufactured diversity. Improper or collusively created diversity of citizenship for the sole and primary purpose for creating federal jurisdiction. Manufactured di diversity is prohibited by USC dot 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 dot. Manufactured diversity is prohibited by USC dot 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 dot. I'm not giving that one out. So you have to go to the law of the United States. And in this particular code, these are called the laws, you know, United States Code and Law upon the uh, United States Service Code, Lawyers Edition. In the Constitution, it talks about the laws of the United States. Well, this is where you can find the laws of the United States, but also you can find the Federal Administration codes in there, and they mix them all up, so you won't know. But up under Title 28, no, not the title, no, it's not that title. It's up under, uh, one, one of the titles, I know what title it is, it talks about this particular manufactured citizen, diversity of citizenship, and it says that no court, no district court, state court, any court, can assume jurisdiction over you based on federal jurisdiction just to make you a citizen in the federal court or the federal jurisdiction. Can't do it. Improper and collusive citizenship is prohibited by law. And this is what occurred during the coup d'etat, during the time period, 1920, when the the Ku Klux Klan was let loose on the black folk, just let out. It was set free for the first time, and the so-called poor white folk went crazy. And all that hostility that had been built up over the years, turned on us, ran us off our land, killed us, did everything they could wanted to do, and nobody would step in because we didn't have the weapons, because the weapons were taken away from us after we turned from the Panama of America, what is it, the uh, War of 1820? No, 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 Spanish-American War. Remember? On the tape, you know, forgot you forgot the tape. You didn't hear one. We might show it yesterday. The tape, then with the coup de top. Right, right. Let me saw it before. I saw it before. Yeah. I remember about the yeah, it was two. It was it was fast. It was a fast American war where all of the United States troops were fighting. The black folks were fighting down. I remember. Right, right. and the federal ca Caucasian troops were left what behind. Right, and the amalgamated mulattoes took the troops. Took the poor white folks, fooled them, right. conspired, and took over the government in women in North Carolina, spread all through the United States. Right? I remember right. While the hour troops were away, fighting the war. And when they came back, they didn't know a conspiracy had occurred, so they came with their weapons, and they took the weapons from them. Right, right. And then they let the Ku Klux Klan lose a little later, 1920. It, it grew. By 1922, they passed the what? Property Act? But they took all the land from the freehold, national, turned into copyhold. Right. But they did it up on the conversion. And the word conversion means to be done illegally. Therefore, you have a remedy. So by 1922, up under the Law Act, Property Act of Conversion, they took the copyhold, turned it into freehold. I mean, took the freehold, turned it into copyhold, and took the third class, the underclass. Right. And leasehold, gave them the lease on the land. And I told you the lease is a tax, the next tax, right, which is right. a rope to, which you pull animals right. with. And that's what the original emblem of the Caucasian was a necktie or a rope that came from Europe where we used to go and catch them. Exactly. <laughs> and, and lease is a tax. A lease means you a tenant. A tenant is a tent. A tent is a tax. A tie is a necktie. Yes, See? They turned into the leasehold and they took the, the free land. But that was through conversion. Convert. Convert is conversion, which means illegal. So by 1922 to 1929, up across the Depression, the Illuminati, Family and Nations, the Netheru, called in the note for the what? Federal government. They couldn't pay it. The debt had been building up since 
<laughs> American Revolution. <laughs> They've been building up since the American Revolution and they couldn't pay it. So the United States federal government went what? Bankroll? FDR say, okay, let's collect the money for the nationals in the future. The, the, the civil certificate that's backed by silver was called in and all the gold Federal Reserve created because the United States went bankrupt. So they created a note based on nothing, air, to run the economy, to destroy it in the future. Right. It's called the chaos, the stock, the industry, that the profit talks about. Yeah. FDR stepped in, put the national government over here, magnified, created the administrative government, and administrative office of president. FDR ran four terms, which is in the Constitution. Clinton them can only go two, which is not constitutional. Clinton them picked their running mate. When there's no such thing as you picking a running mate in the Constitution, electoral college. One hat, one with the most amount of votes becomes the president. The one without the, the second most amount of votes becomes the vice president. Our government, Denison government, 12th Amendment, two hats, a distinct list for the president and a distinct list for the vice president, which has nothing to do with any president picking his own what? Running mate. Right. That's the administrative government that functions upon the Protestant party, which is not mentioned in the Constitution which is based on the basis of citizenship to get you to vote in their system they force you through your state of mind by registering you to vote and I showed you about illegal vote I mean about legal voting legal voting constitution is when you have the qualifications you don't have to register register voters you have to be required not qualified and you have to register two different things and let's see what I'm going to tell them said about class and pot there is no provision in the national political parties, and apparently the founders of our government felt that parties were not only unnecessary, but undesirable. Okay. Now, this comes from a very old raggedy book that was handed to me probably five or six years ago. Had no use for it until May 1999. Then I was directed to read it. And it's called Documents and Readings in the American Government, National, State, and Local. It also goes further to say to the efficient, I can't even pronounce that word. Maybe you can, one of y'all can. Efficacy. Efficacy. Efficacy and permanent in your union. A government for the whole is indispensable. indispensable. Line. That line means something is being left out. Go ahead. E F F I C A C Y. Uh -huh. No allegiance, however strict, between parts can be adequate institution. So, uh, adequate substitution. No part. You gotta understand the word cracker that we used to call white folk. Cracker does not mean saltine. <laughs> it means to separate. Jesus say, do not let them rend you. If you look that up, it means to crack you up, to separate you. Because together we stand, divided we fall. Mm -hmm. To the government. Therefore, nobody ever owns land. You miss your taxes, you would have to the land. Because all property belongs to the nation. Right. It really does. You never can own property. You only use it. Our ancient people understood that. So once we purchase this bill, we purchase another form of purchase. It's a floating deed. The floating deed means you can go anywhere. It's not a, a freehold. It's not a, a lot of title, nor is it more to Maine. More to Maine. Our property is more to Maine. That carries over into freehold and a lot of, but more to Maine is actually the nationals. Uh, land, meaning dead hand. Nobody can take it. It's dead hand. When your ancestors die, you can't touch it. Only the relatives can kiss. See, so a lot of titles are not the highest or the best necessarily. Nor freehold. So, you follow me, don't you? Um, we purchased this building. We put um, some cosmetics in this part, we put some groceries in here, we put some things down there. We turn this building into what we want to turn this building into as long as we follow the, the county law and the state law. 
and laws of the United States. Correct? Now, we get so popular that people want to come into our what? Organization. So popular that people want to come here and have parties and walk around and have a good time in our building. First in our uh, food and our uh, supplies and our grocery and our clothes. What are we selling here? Right. This is private property, though, isn't it? Right. Even though it's still in the city of Richmond, it's private property. And as long as we're not breaking any laws in the city of Richmond, we have every right to protect our whole property. Right. So we decided we're going to hire a security agency. The security agency. And the security agency, we decided we were going to let him uh, police the area. Walk around and keep it clean. That's what police we started out being clean. Yeah. But one day, he was in here policing the area, and uh, somebody started fighting. And he jumped in the middle. And stop him. So we said, okay, wait a minute. Hey, not only can he police the area, he, he stopped the fight. Let's have two or three of them to stand and watch and see how that works to keep everything in order. So now he went from a security agent to a policeman known as a patrolman. Now he's just policing, now he's patrolling, he's watching. In his own building, in this building that we control and operate. Right. right now, a few days later, another function is going on, and a fight broke out, and the two of them jumped in, and the other person pulled out a gun and killed one of them. And we had to take it to another level. Now we got to issue them some protection. So now they get a fire on. Then we can stab police maybe sticking paper, picking up paper off the ground. <laughs> That's what we need to me. To clean up trash, to carry a guard on their on their side, to protect your property in your own particular area. However, another company over there is doing the same thing, and they done hired them some security for it. Mm -hmm. When you walk into that building, you are under the jurisdiction of that building, unless. Unless you know how not to be up under the jurisdiction of that building. Therefore, the security guard is the police. When you enter into any city, that's a building. All city, there's, no, there's nothing in law that deals with cities. It's the state, it's the national government, the state government, and the local government. And all local governments are counties. This is a new thing about incorporation here lately. So, every time you walk into a building, a city, you going into a company. Every city there is is a charter of a company. It's incorporated as a business. So the security guard job, the policeman job is to make money for the company. How do you do that? You started telling people they cannot enter in and out unless they have a special permit. Like if they catch you in this building without that license person and property, you can be fined. Right? Now, how do you get out of that? Well, first of all, they renting the building out, they really don't own it, do they? No, because you still have to pay what? Your taxes. Not to mention that if you purchase a building and ain't paid the debt just for the mortgage, if you don't pay that, they throw you out in 30 days. I'm just saying, but if you don't pay your taxes, they'll let you go a long time until somebody wants to buy the property. Then they call in the tax debt. No, they, they won't mess with you if you don't pay your taxes unless somebody really wants it. Right. Right. So, they never own it. But, let's say for instance, the, 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 the owners came into the building. The true owners, those who control the land, those who mortgage the, 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 uh, the, the building, those who actually um, own the land. Now, are they on the same jurisdiction as a person that doesn't Okay, I'm gonna sign up no. just to get in. No. They can inspect their property, do whatever they want, can't they? Right. It's there. See, so it's according to how you enter into the city. If you come to the city as a city resident, and you got on there, you in the state of that's an actual business, because that's the state of North Carolina, I mean, the state of Virginia, and that particular state is a sub what? Subdivision and an agency that deals with business. Right. 
The one that you're involved in. That's why they say you have to do business in the state of Virginia, you know, to, in, to, to get a uh, uh, incorporated, you have to do business. Whereas we don't ever do business. Whenever we are moving around, we are conducting our affairs, which is different than doing business because that's a commercial statement. All right, when you do registration, on the registration, it, it says the, the, the owner of this property. I would really say the owner of this property. Because your car is your what? Uh, right. That ain't what the state registration say either. No. See, you are, you weren't, and you want to sign up for state for the state driver's license, which in turn it, 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 it includes the state registration and everything else. But in this word of a certain way that you just giving them every all your rights and power. Yeah, a, privilege. Mm -hmm, a privilege, but it's two types of privileges. Two types of privilege. One privilege, privilege is, up, is up on the license. Mm -hmm. That ain't the same privilege as the rights and privileges. No. That's in the Constitution, but one privilege is up on the license. So when you apply for a license and you get a privilege, that is doing business. That's a commercial contract, therefore you have to read page one to a million. Yeah, because it, 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 you know, in a commercial contract, in the UFC, UCC, there are contracts upon contracts upon contracts, and you're bound to them the moment you sign your name. So even though ignorance is no excuse for the law, if, you're not, if you don't know what the contract is, then you're going to sign from page 1 to twenty to 1,000, whatever page you're supposed to know that before you sign that contract on the commercial law. So when you enter into... Administrative court, civil court, and criminal court, and you bring all three of these up on the what is called a commercial court, court, because nowhere in the world a criminal court should be handling civil and administrative affairs. There is no such thing as a criminal court. There is no such thing as a civil court, and there is no such thing as an administrative court. When the courts that you're going to, those are commercial courts. Proof. Just to show you how simple it is, right in front of you, but you don't—we don't really look because we're not uh, told to look, and we don't know really where to look. It's a bank. Now, read it. Let me read the definition for a bank. Read the definition for a bank. Bank. A bench for seat. The bench for judge. The bench for tribunal occupied by the judge. The seat of judgment. A court. A house of business. A court. Bankruptcy court. Now, you go when you go to court, you go into the bank. Now, what do they do to you when you go to the bank? <laughs> you got to give put your money in, <laughs> and they have us lined up in droves, thinking we're going to court. We're going to the bank. <laughs> Yeah, bank for bank. It's a court. See, the king, when he was a male, used to court his women. When he was the other thing, he just played tennis. You know, that was called a court too. When he was out there in basketball, court, he was recreation. And so a court is when the king, at the king's leisure, when he's out there playing tennis, basketball, or whatever he was doing, people would come up and bring all their commodities. But they could not see the king. They had to see the person who counted all of the funds and the money. Right? They had, they had, they call them counters. Right. Today you call them counts. And in our government, it's called county. The county works for the king. They count all the money. They deal with the population and the growth rate. That's how the word count, county, and all this came about through county. So the counts would walk up and say, Can I speak with the king? And the king out there either courting the male, the female, or he playing ball, or whatever he's doing. And as a king, he don't have to take time to do nothing. He just stop and say, come. So you end up in the court, the king's court. And the king takes the money from the count, who is his cousin. So a court became a bank, where he kept all the money to himself in his court. You have to understand these words. These words are so simple. It's unreal. Everybody with me on that? Y'all can see that, right? Right. Okay. So, 
when you find out who you are, you can go to the king as a free man, a nobleman. Because when the king acted up a certain way, who used to take him out of power? The nobles, didn't they? Right. Right, because they had blood, they were placing. So when you enter into the court, you simply saying, I'm on your level, I'm your friend. We're the same. So the court has to respect you like that. Now, that's when you go in there. But it's best not to even go what? In there. So you have to send what they call a writ. You write certain things and you send it to the court, to whoever you're dealing with, to set, set up your entry. You know, when God is coming, he sent out the trumpeteers. Let everybody know I'm coming. So the same thing deals with the court. You, you send the information before you go, so that when you go in there, they can just say, okay, that's, they got to get him out of here, let him go. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. And so we don't have too many problems dealing with incidents. And, and I, I, I can't say everything on tape. Oh. You follow? There's some things I won't say on tape because yeah. going to court is more than traffic tickets. Sometimes people end up with, with more serious charges and uh, we can help them out too as national because they're in the right. But you can't go to a court saying I'm right because there ain't no such thing as a court of right. <laughs> it's a court of equity and justice and facts. And the court that you enter into, I just, just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. Now, that's all they want, just the facts. And that's not even a, a real court, just facts, because facts can be twisted. So you got to get into the court, a court of law and equity. Or maybe you need to study what equity is. So, there's other things I can't say. Uh, there's a lot of practical benefits to joining together as a national, because see, instead of you doing it as an individual, even though your particular case is on the docket, docket, you still use a national title at the top and let them know that you are under the national movement, the government, which they have literally acquiesced. They've literally acquiesced. I mean, I write all the time. I'm at your disposal. Government, governor, president, attorney general, I'm at your disposal. If I'm incorrect, please help me as an official, direct me to someone that can help me because I'm claiming this, that, and the other. Yeah, I ask them to help me. Now, if they don't help me and I'm claiming something, and acquiesce is a legal what? Term, isn't it? Right. right. Implied consent. Right. Then they actually agree. Right. That's what I'm saying. I say, well, please correct me in total or part. If I'm even the least bit wrong, I need your help. Because I'm saying that I represent the true, official, free, national republic of the United States of America and the family of nations. Therefore, help me. If I'm insane, I understand. <laughs> but help me. I'm asking them. You, you follow what I'm saying? It's not saying, I'm, I know who I am, you de facto, and you can't tell me what to do. No, no. Your most humble servant. <laughs> Your brother in the struggle. <laughs> Our fraternal annexation. <laughs> you dealing with them. Asking them to help me. Because I'm insane. I need help. I'm claiming something that you all say y'all own. If I write you, I'm saying, look, I'm claiming your building. <laughs> if it matters, it's yours. If you don't leave my property alone, I'm going to have the police come and get you. Am I right? Right. <laughs> and not one official government head, government organization has ever said that we can't do what we're doing. Not one. Not yet. We've been doing it since May 1999. And again, I say that because our problem is not the government. Our problem is us. That's our problem. Trying to convince us who us is. Us is the United States. U S. That's us. Am. 
and mold. Fine. Um, it has a lot of practical benefits. Now, going into potential. As a national, if we're correct and we're not insane, then everyone is waiting on us. Everybody is waiting on us. The whole world is waiting on the so-called Afro-American to rise. Because everybody had a chance but us. And as the prophet said, we carry everybody blood in our way, in our veins. Therefore, we can represent everybody. Some of us look like a tag, and some of us look like Chinese. Some of us look every kind of way you can think of. We don't look like nobody on the planet, but everybody. We look like everybody on the planet. And y'all know it's the truth. No country, no race of people has ever invented anything new on this planet except for black Americans. Jazz. Rap. Nothing has been invented even by Africans. They are traditional. They don't invent anything. We invented a new language. Yo, she showed bad. Right. Nobody does that. And the reason why is because when you study law, that's what law is. It's the word of art. It's creative words. And we invented law. And we still do it today. Therefore, nobody can do anything new. They're waiting on us to take the forefront again with our vitality, our news, because we are creative. Africans, Chinese, nobody invent new music. No one does these things. Only black folk in America. Because this is the ancient land of the gods. Not Africa. We're the ones who placed the Africans. We are the Abatala, the Shango, who placed the Africans in Africa. And this is what the ancient Egyptians and ancient uh, 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 Yoruba and all these cultures talk about, but you all can't decode it. There were no people called Yoruba. The word Yoruba means Yah Adam, the old Arabs. Ask the Yoruba people where they come from. They said they came from Arabia. They migrated. And there's no one in Africa in their native land. Everybody that asks is Africa is indigenous or alien. Right. That's why they have all the wars. Because they overtook the people in their natural land. These people fighting back because that's where they can. So you got all this tribalism. It's tribalism because they invaded. Africa fights the United Nations for indigenous rights harder than America. Africa's not even back in indigenous rights. That's why I'm with They foreigners and they're in the, uh, uh, this denizens. They're not national or natural people of those lands. The people who are, I can't think of their name, the Dogon. Serious A and B. I mean, they straight up tell you they didn't come from there. They migrated. All of them migrated. They left their homelands and dominated other people who went somewhere and dominated somebody else. So, we the only one that doesn't understand who we really are. Everybody on the planet, including the, 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 the and I hate to say this sometimes, including the sisters, hate the black men for being black men. But when they start acting like black men, they get praised. I mean, women, you know, when they start acting like the black men, that's when they get praised. White boy, can't stand up. They will not even act right, but they put on them hats and turn them around backwards, and all of a sudden they cool. They making money. So when we do it, we have something wrong with us. You have to deal with that. You get praised for not being the originator. You got to be other than self to get praised, but everybody's being like you. <laughs> No, because you don't understand where you are. You in their state. Their state of mind. Not a place, it's a consciousness. I'm just trying to get you to think. So, practical reasons, there's so many of them. The whole world is waiting on. In Romans what, 16, it says that the whole earth is out of its course and everyone is waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God, including the creature or the beast. 
not one son, sons, and sons means male and female. The word is huyas in Greek, and beni or ibum in the old language, and it represents males and females, not a gender. It has nothing to do with gender. You can be a female and be a son of God, meaning that you are in like the son and that you are aggressive. That's a son. Regardless of gender. Because in the beginning, God said, let us make man in our image. And God in Hebrew, Elohim, Elohim, is males and females. Gods and goddesses. In the image of God created he, him, Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. And that's straight out of King James. A group, male and female. Later on, later on, um, they talk about what is called Enosh, Enosh, which is actually dealing with a male entity. But that is not Gabriel the man. But the word man for Gabriel is a different word than Enosh and Anush and Adam and so on. So, see, you have to understand what it's dealing with. Gabriel, the man, is dealing with a group. That word for man, Ish, where you get the word more Ish, is actually the Hebrew word Ish. And Aisha. Ish, Aisha. That's the Asian you're talking about, but people don't understand it. The Asian so-called man is a group that deals with a certain type of energy and power, not gender. So it's God, Allah, in his original form, A L H or Al Ilya. In the ancient language, the Moorish Arabic, H is a plural for feminine. E L is a masculine. Therefore, you, Allah is male and female. Before Allah was called Allah alone, Allah used to be called Alak, which is a female. And before it was called Allah or Alak, it was simply called El. And El in the ancient language means group. Those who control and have the power. Not a deity up in the sky and all this kind of stuff. Uh, in Genesis, it simply says, I think it's 126, it says, uh, God said, let us make man. In the image of God created he, him, male, and female, he created he, them, and blessed him and called their names Adam. But that's found in the fifth or sixth chapter, mm -hmm. where he actually named who these gods are in the first creation, which is in actuality, the first creation in Genesis is the second creation. For the first and oldest of the Hebrews starts from the fourth in the, the fourth verse of the second chapter where it says Lord God that's the oldest verse that's the oldest the Elohim the Elohim creation that's in Genesis first is actually in the revelation which ties it together so for the Christ in the scripture say I am Alpha the beginning Genesis and Omega the end revelation Christ in Revelation is the male and female that's made in the image of God that has dominion. It's a group in Genesis and it's an individual in Revelation, meaning one group. But they give you codes and keys if you look up because Christ has paths, a breath. Yeah, and that's the female. But at the same time, he's called the Lamb of God, right? He's a he, but ain't no such thing as a lamb. Well, if he's a he, he gotta be a ram. That's the male. See, so it's a male and what? Female disguised. So he speaks with a, a double-edged sword because he got two natures. The male and the female now balanced. For the old ones, the angels in the scriptures kept not their first estate which was pure androgynous, pure diocesan, eventually turned into homophobic, and eventually, keeping not their pure state, went whoring, as the scriptures say, after other flesh. And when they went whoring after other flesh, the word other in Greek is heterosexual flesh.
because there were beings on this planet in an animalistic nature who were heterosexual in their makeup, where the old angels or deities, the Moabs, were united in one. They didn't have to have outside contact on, until the paradigm shift occurred. And then it tells you that the sons of God, meaning the old ones, saw the daughters of men, meaning the new ones or the heterosexuals, and they started to have sex with them. Right. So, you had citizens. Image of God, go out and dominate the earth, the laws of the earth, the natural. Those formed out of the dust of the ground, which is artificial. Aliens. And they mixed. Denizens. In the middle. So, the one in the middle has the capacity to reach the heavens and go down as low as the earth. That's why the prophet said we have everybody what? Blood in us. We got every gene on the planet in us. Therefore, we can do anything we choose our mind to do. Right. <clears throat> Simply represent a time and an old period where genes, genes in Genesis, take the, the genes were changed and altered. That's all Genesis is, the rearranging of genes. Revelation. If you look up Revelation, the word reveal becomes to rebel, to change again. That revelation is revolution, revelation, to change again. If you look up the word mortal, one of its meanings is to change, to rebel, to alter. You got all these three types of citizens right together. The dust of the ground man, administrated. That's all there is to it. That, that, that's, your, that's your second man. The man has no or wife, no mate. You create out of, of, not out of, but of the dust of the ground, which is called Adam Afra, and Afra means animalistic people. Adam means do, Adam. And he had no mate. So, when he got ready to be mated, if you look at the Bible, it tell you it took him to the animals to be mated. That's not the same man that was in the first chapter because he had his own mate. He was balanced. Right. So which one are you? At least we gotta find out who we are. God, man, denizen, or label man. The label, for there's not a man to till the ground. The word kill is abda, meaning to be a slave. And guess what slave translates to? The old German word called workup. Workup. But workup is worship in English. Because when you fall down on your knees to pray, get down on your knees to pray, you're worshiping God. But that ain't the unopposable force because that came through people being slaves to the deities, to the old ones. Because they had to work. Ship. The apprenticeship of working. That's what work ship means, to work. Do the actual labor. It has nothing to do with spirituality. That's what worship is. A law being a lat and a law, the male and the female energy, Muhammad, the codified Muhammad, of Arabia, there was 360 so-called idols in the Kaaba, and that particular 360 idols represented 360 degrees of knowledge, right. which is considered the female, because the woman carries the egg, the round thing, the male carries the one, the penis. Right. When the new time period came from taking the, the range from the old mother, the age, the 360 degrees, it was a new time period, not the female. Now, none of this is gender. This is a whole different thing. 
You gotta understand something about the, the you have to understand the chemistry, the science of the human body. As powerful as a woman is, her life force will abort itself. Her seed is stationary. It cannot move. It is fixed. If nothing comes to her and changes her structure, it will abort itself. That's called the kings of Edom in the scriptures. They couldn't last. The whole earth, Edom, is the whole Adam kingdom. That This planet went through changes and it could not bring forth man through its own natural processes. So the earth aborted high consciousness. Here comes Lucifer. Here comes Christ from heaven. Here comes the seed, what we call sperm. A whole different universe. It came through space. The penis. And worlds collided. It was called climax. The Big Bang. All that simply means a distance further away. It has nothing to do with gen- gen- um, What's the term? I'm feeling it. Uh, gender. It has nothing to do with gender. It has nothing to do with that. So when the prophet says, Our Father, Allah, Allah ain't around. So he's far of the universe. He's far away. We, it, but the model here, that was the material, the matter, the earth, what we got to deal with is the subject matter. And that's what they have to get in the court to get the subject matter. So, get away from gender. This is one of the most damaging things that people have done to us because that's what separates us today. And you have all these social leaders, social reformers, uh, prophets or whatever, dealing with gender. The, the new kick is now, give the woman all the what? The, the power, the expression, and everything. And that was done in the old world by giving the white male, not us. <laughs> we ain't had ours yet in this new system. <laughs> you know, that was a white man had all the power. I mean, all this stuff about uh, having all the jobs and not on this planet, that's not true. Yet. <laughs> but again, the people who push this lump up into everything that's bad, but when something is done, done good, it's the white man. And that's included with this new movement as far as women are concerned. You know, it's all men are this way, men are this way. And then they use the excuse that we're this way, the males, the black males, in the our race, that we're the ones that are creating all problems. Come back about the cross. We are the true relics in the truest of sense. Because we refuse to go to school, we refuse to submit to anything that they teach. And you know, the young guys, that's before you bend, they break it. Once they break it, then that's different. You know, when you bent, you back down to the monkey stage. <laughs> you know, you go through the stage, first you slip like the baby. Then you put your head up a little bit so you start to kind of turn to a mammal. Then you get up on all fours, walking like a dog. And then every now and then, the child reaches up and you walk a little bit. Fall back down on the floor, walk a little bit. Come into the monkey stage. That's how a monkey walks. Grab a two You can't stay. You have to go back down. So when they break it down, when they bend, you're going back to your monkey state. A monkey is called a simian. Simian. A simian means simple to me. In the beginning was the word. You got to understand, it's telling you something. It's telling you that it's two words. You have a written word and you have a what? Oral word. The oral word is the creative force. The oral word brings about declarations. You declare who you are. Right. All of us that declared that we're free people we wouldn't be here, right? In our mind, we already declared that we're free. Right. But don't want anything to do with Babylon. That's your declaration. So you want the right self. And that brought you here to the national movement. However, there were two words. The second one was called Legos in the Christian book. It says what? In the beginning was the word, the word was God, the word was God. That's not a mortar. The word mortar is the first word in Genesis for the creative thought is the word more. That's the first word. That's the, the creative word. But the second word is Lego, logo. It means to... It's a written word, but it don't just mean a written word, logo, which is called Christ. 
That's the word for the word. And it sends you back to this word here. More. That's the Hebrew word. More. 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 Meaning manifestation of rock. Manifestation of rock. Of the light. More. Because of the intelligence, the understanding had to take on a physical form, so it became the manifestation of that particular type of energy. And the word manifestation means man. Man. It, see, man. In manifestation. Manifestation of rock. Or, or, or the great light. The great understanding and light. So that's in that's that's in uh, the Old Testament because see it's more the created word in the fourth chapter fourth verse of Genesis the, the first chapter of Genesis fourth verse it says that God made two lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars also with a word for light to rule over the world if you look it up in Hebrew the word for light becomes. Same word. Mordi. Same word. Mordi. Where we get the word Mordetanian. Right. But the Mordetanian was simply known as Mordi. Or Mordi. Mordi. M-O. Mordi. Mordi. Mordetanian. Same word. Mordi. But the word Mordi in the New Testament is translated Mary. See? Mary, Morty. Mary, Morty. Because Morty, Mary, the group, in the beginning got to bring forth to who? To Christ. Or to Jesus. And the word Jesus means I eat you, I am man, and liberate. See? So you're talking about as the world of the beginning. But Jesus is not mentioned as a Lego. He declared that by other people. The Lego, logo, means to have. Logic and what? Freedom. What you gotta have. That's called the mind of Christ. Because when you look up the word Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, it means that you got to be able to think. It ain't got nothing to do with no force coming down on you, taking you over, making you bow. That's another kind of spirit. That's a whole different spirit in the Christian. But Christians and so and so have taken it and used it to their death unbeknownst. They don't understand what they're dealing with. So the Lego, meaning logic and reasoning, also means, and you'll see it as soon as I write it, the second one, the first word was all, the second one is L-O-G-U-E, right. law, right. that's Lego, to law, Lego means to law, to write down, law means to put in a ledger, ledger, it means to write it down, so the second word is a written word, so our prophet said, declare, Speak it in power. You've done that. But proclaim. Exactly. But for proclamation ain't speaking. Proclamation means you got the law. You got to write it down. That's true. So you did the first step. Some of you all by declaring. But now you got to write it. It has to be taken well to the bank. But y'all call court. <laughs> Just set up your defense. In Babylon. But you got to come out of Babylon. Come out of the confusion, my people. But Babylon is not a place. Babylon is a state of mind. So, declare and proclaim. Law of your defense. Make it a matter of public record. But, do not law it, declare it, proclaim it without reasoning and what? Logic. So a lot of people are making all kind of ill, reasonable, unlogical declarations and proclamations. That they won't stand. It just won't stand. It does not stand the test of law or prophecy. Babylon, the United States, and Jerusalem is the same thing. If you read the scriptures, Babylon gonna be destroyed. Jerusalem gonna be destroyed, and the United States and prophecy gonna be destroyed. It's the same. Jerusalem that we're looking for has nothing to do with Jerusalem over in the east. But there's a new Jerusalem coming out of heaven. The one that we're trying to obtain. And that's not in the east. That's here. 
reading that the Great Seal, we have two aspects of the Great Seal, and you have to understand that the two aspects of the Great Seal is the eagle and the dog. Uh, you see this, I'll show you this one. The, this is the Great Seal, this is the original Great Seal, the eagle and the pyramid. That's back, it's back on the dollar bill now because of the FDR administration bringing the national government back to it, they had to put it somewhere. And he put it on the old Abe Lincoln then. Yes, sir. One of the black presidents, right? That's right. Because he's on the pen. And he ain't going to copper. We copper people. Look at our copper. Even the black stone is not black. If you go kiss the black stone, if you're a Muslim, it's actually copper. Co coffee cup. It's not black. So, this is the old race seat. Same one on the pyramid today. That's our national emblem. If you look at the great seal, even what is called the obverse side, the obverse side, not the reverse. The reverse has never been cut nor printed. You can't find a time when this pyramid did not exist. It's all in Africa, Asia, Europe, and the different guys. Everywhere. Nobody's ever cut. Cut simply means they can't find a time when it didn't exist. The evil came into existence in 1782. Place beside it because the evil, the pyramid has never been cut represents the United States. That's why the pyramid is united. Look at it. Down here, the corporate entity is united. The United Block, the pyramid, to be initiated. Detached from the third principle. Detached from the natural act, because we're trying to reach. Because you got to go through the lion's grip to get to God. The lion grip in, in the east is the eagle. We don't have a lion, we have an eagle. The eagle is going to lift you up with eagle fall. That's the lion grip over here, it changes in your area. Within our national eagle is the federal wood eagle. So in order to get through your government, you got to go through the federal system. Who are the protectors of Islam? Prophet, right? So the eagle, I'm going to bear you on eagle's wings in the end. Right. It's now trying to keep you out. Because the eagle also means raptorial bird. Raptorial means to rape and to plunder. So when they say it's going to be a rapture, well, my God, that doesn't already have. They kicked out for something, be everything in the world through the eagle. That's already occurred. That's over with. That's the rapture over. And so the rapture, to be caught up on the rapture means to be destroyed first. If I'm lying, then why was Christ destroyed before he could resurrect? Why was Nebuchadnezzar? Why was Job? You have to be brought down. All of that. And he was a devil based on the Christians. Okay, 34, chapter 4, Daniel. I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes into the heavens, and mine understanding returned. Well, that's what Job did. He remembered. That's what the so-called prodigal son that was dead did. He remembers the same way we got to remember who we are. We have to remember who we are. And I bless the Most High and praise and honor him that liveth forever, whose dominion is forever lasting dominion. And his kingdom is from generation to generation, from people to people. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he does according to his will in, in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, what doesn't stop him. At the same time, what did it say? Somebody else got it. Anybody else got it? Yeah, we really say At the same time, what? My reason return to me. And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor, Stop. All this, he regained his what? King. So how can he be the devil? That's paradise lost and paradise regained. When Jesus was stuck upon the cross, did he win or lose? He lost. He was on the cross. Did he, when he stepped down off the cross, did he get his kingdom? No. 
he had to go and be prepared to come back and gain his kingdom. When he comes back on the return, that everything got to be returned back to Christ, where it's being fulfilled in the now. And what else? What else is see? And this is the clip because you got to understand what's the point in going through all that hell and come out the same way? You ain't learned nothing. That's a circle. See, that's a circle. When you do the same thing, you don't go nowhere. You go into a circle. And guess what the word is, circle? It's called Cersei. You know what Cersei means, circle? Church. So that's where the word church comes from. That's where the real word church comes from, and not the scripture word church. Then who they were, how they function. Put them in the proper say about more. Go get you a good book. European book. Education. Get into that system. You have to. Now I'm gonna read. I don't know if I read this out. Uh, this is and, and this is this to give you some idea. Now, who all know about the Delaware Indians? Anybody know anything about the Delaware Indians? The Delaware Indians was part of the Iroquois in or Guamulan nations. They went both ways, so and so, so and so. They were named after a man named Lord Delaware. However, that's not the original name. The original name was Lenape. Lenape. Some people say Lenny Lenape. Lenny meaning we or people and Lenape meaning people. Therefore you got the term we the people. Lenape means we the people. Literally. Now that's very important because the more we're taught that the, the preamble is the determining clause of the constitution. And it is. It's, it's a statute clause, it's not a constitution clause. It's the opening statement. It's the purpose and the mission. We the people of the United States that is us do ordain and establish this constitution for of the United States of America. And we do that for ourselves and our posterity. Those we leave behind in all directions. So why would it take you the term we the people? Well, that's an old word for the nappy. That's the nappy. Nappy head. Or newbie in life. Nappy, nappy, nappy. When you get to this particular treaty, it's called the Article of Agreement and, Con and, and Confederation. Article of Agreement and Confederation. Uh, with the presence of the Honorable Nova Kadar Bay, and uh, looking forward to getting into some deeper understanding, different questions, and, and different, uh, more information rather. Well, let's start with the Prophet. The Prophet and found the Nova Drew Ali. Okay, now, he left certain information, or statements, or whatever, dealing with uh, these particular times, if, if we're in those times. And he said that there would be domestic strife and a lot of problems. There wouldn't be food on the streets and uh, a lot of other things. However, he did say that the moors would be protected, certain moors would be protected at that particular time, because he said the other moors I'm going to let the fire touch their shirts. So, uh, I feel like if the prophet be the prophet, and we're the one, then we didn't have too much to worry about because we're moving from, toward protection as it is. Because indigenous people, not 14th Amendment citizens, are supposed to be protected through any armed conflict. And that's based on their United Nations, which in turn came from, of course, the older law. Uh, so we we do claim to be indigenous and aboriginal, but not to America, but to the United States. So that's a form of protection there, and along with the, what the prophet said, if we the one, and martial law uh, is probably in keeping with what he was saying, because you won't be able to go to the stores, you have to uh, stock up food and things like this, so I can understand that. Now, the term 14th Amendment in America is different than the terms that you use in other places. So martial law is the same all over the world. Just don't have to be a 14th Amendment citizen. Is anyone, is anyone up under the jurisdiction of the administrative government that really, I guess, don't know who they are or not indigenous? 
you know now, the, 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 the military developed the internet, right? Right. So you understand that that's obsolete. They can crack it and stop it whenever they feel like it. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's really obsolete. Uh-huh. So they can stop that whenever they want. So they want to crash the internet where you can't order food or anything else. So be it. Now, even if you can't order the food, that's going to get to you. Because they can block the streets. That's right. Right. I have a question, though. This is Q. Okay, Q. Uh... When we hear when we hear things being passed by legislation, which carries the name national, such as a national ID card, uh huh, does that apply to us? No. Um, remember now, we have to deal with understanding that one word has several meanings, right? Right. In law, you understand that? Yes. yes. Okay. There's three nations right here. Remember, I tell you, three, three of them. Right. All in one. One is what is called the general national government. Mm-hmm. The general national government, that's the one that we participate in. We're preamble citizens. There's another one called it the administrative national government. That's the so-called federal agency department. They have their own citizens, 14th Amendment citizens. So when they say they're coming over with a national ID card, they're talking about for their citizenry, for their citizens. We're coming with our national ID card for our citizens. So the term national is not necessarily the proper name. You learn this as you go. I only give out a certain amount of information because people can't absorb it all at one time. But there's three nations. The corporate nation now is being handled by the administrative government. The office of the president came about in 1979 with Jimmy Carter, officially. It started with FDR. That's for the administrative government. So you have three presidents. You have the constitutional president in the first seven articles. You have another constitutional president in an article uh, 12. No, no. Yeah, 12 or 13. Might be 12. Yeah, 12. Where it deals with the corporate president. And then you have no mention of the administrative president in the constitution at all. So, you thought there's more than one national government. This is about maybe three months ago I went to do an apostille. This is before I got the information that you that you uh, bestowed on us. But I went to do an apostille, and they told us they no longer did apostilles for the United States of America. What way it was explained to me, they dropped out of the Hague so that they could go ahead and have their military movement that they're having. Otherwise, they would have had to go through international court to get permission to have this war. So, uh, I can believe that too, because again, uh, the United Nations, you got an international world court and you got a world court. And they overlap, but they're a little different. So the United States of America, the federal one, actually established the, the uh, United Nations, which is part of the older one. And when they say they dropped out, most likely they dropped out the one that they created. Okay. You see? And we're not concerned with that. We're only concerned with the older court. Right. Right. Keep in mind, they can do what they want to do. Right, yes. Yeah. Let me tell you a little story. Uh, the Moorish Empire that ruled this world is known as the Ottoman Empire, right? Yes. Yeah. Familiar with that. Now, what people are not familiar with is how the Ottoman Empire came about and why it came about. Because before it was the Ottoman Empire, it was called the Islamic Empire or the Arab Empire, correct? Uh-huh. Are you familiar with that? Yes. yes. So, the thing is that when the Prophet Muhammad of Arabia came, he had, he had no idea that things would actually spread the way it was spread. That came about 200 years after he was gone through the Caliph. Now, Caliph is not a spiritual leader. A Caliph is an administrator. He's the exec- chief executive officer. They didn't operate out of Mecca. They operated out of, out of uh, Yathrib, also known as Medina. It's not Islam that they were spreading, they were spreading an empire. But Islam satisfied the people, and the way they spread it at one point, it was a better. It was much better than the way they spread it today. Although the, the, the Bush administration and this particular government is doing the same thing that our people did, but they have their own twist of doing it. So when they did this, the Arabs controlled everything, the bloodline of the Arabs, where they maxed out. And Allah sent what is called the mongrels. You heard about the mongrels? Yes. Right, the mongrels were the people who were so-called vicious. But what they did was, they 
actually evolved into the Turks, which in turn, Osman Bey, the true Ottoman Empire, the Osman Bey Empire, uh, came from the Turks, who were actually Mongols, who were actually Moors, but not Muslim. Okay, now, once the Mongols destroyed the Arab Empire, and they replaced it with the Turkish and eventually the Ottoman Empire. But what they also did was they opened up the way for anyone of Maroc color in that area, anyone could be rulers. They could be administrators and rivals and everybody else, whereas the Arab only kept it up under them. So they wiped out that narrow madness of Arabs. But they couldn't do that by politics, they had to send in barbarian people. Now later on, the Ottoman Empire expanded so far that they maxed out. But before they maxed out, Mehmet Bey introduced the Mamluks into the uh, Ottoman Empire, who were the white slaves, who were dedicated strictly to the, to the emperor and not necessarily to Islam, uh, even though they were Muslim. And he gave them the best education, the best upbringing, the best everything, and put them as administrators all over the world. Ottoman Empire, which in turn affected America. Now, what occurred later on was exactly what um, Nehemiah and Suleiman the Great and all of these Solomon the Great, uh, magnificent Nehemiah thought that the, nation, the empire fell apart because of the blood people in the empire always fighting amongst themselves. And when that occurred, the last great emperor, Solomon the Magnificent, uh, when he died, eventually the Mamluks, who were put in place to keep it going, took it over. But they were Caucasian, 90%. Although you did have uh, a few more that were Caucasian with Mamluks too. I mean, my rose colored people. And they took it over. However, when they took it over, they treated the brown skinned people uh, positive. But they treated Caucasian people negative. So eventually, in order for the door to be opened by Allah again, these light skinned, amal amalgamated, and Caucasian Mamluk slaves, administrators, mixed with the Caucasian people, gave them information so the Caucasians kicked the Moors out, out of the empire or the lands in which they had taken over. And they, But the Caucasian Mamluks and the ones who became part of that empire, do, do you see these people over in Yugoslavia, Serbia, and all these things? They wear fences and they white, right? Yes. Y'all seen them, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Those are the Mamluks. Those are the descendants of the Mamluks, but they were Muslim. And you have the Christians over there that hate them, and they hate the Christians, and they still war, and they kill each other worse than black folks do. <laughs> so, the, what I'm telling you is, whenever there's a, the time comes, a lot more use what he's going to use. These people can do what they want to do. If we, if we the ones, and in that time period, it doesn't matter. That's true. And it seems, it, it seems as if the time is now. Well, it may be, but see, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't given that chance to see the future. Or, you know, I, that's not my mindset. My mindset is to do what I'm supposed to do, and that's it. And everything else got to take care of itself. But our ancestors told us that world events you, that you have no control over, forget about it. The things that you can change with your own hands, you take that as serious as God. See, so I'm not concerned about world events. Mm -hmm. My concern is where I'm at. Oh. Take care of that. Right. Yes, sir. The private culture, the architecture, engineering, the sufficient communities, da 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 da, us coming together up on the, at least, you know, two places, one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast, and this there, one of those got to go, going down to Central America, whatever. That's what we need to be concerned with if things get out of control. But it's really not out of control. See, those are bad words. Mm -hmm. they're not, well, they're not bad words. It's not the proper word. But we have to use certain terms. It's not really out of control. It's what's supposed to happen. Right. Okay. Right. Remember now, we're going through karma as a people. I had this dream long ago where the earth was just on fire. Black smoke everywhere. Uh, I could see fire coming out of the earth and, and everything. And I was leaving a certain small group of people through all of the, of the chaos. So, you know, my psyche says something. But then again, 
beginning, I might have been something I ate and looking at too much TV. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> you can see either way. <laughs> Until it happens. Uh -huh. You know, no, but this is cute. I always had a feeling that this whole New World Order stuff didn't apply to me. And didn't apply to those who know what it was really about. Not saying that I knew what it was really about, but it seemed like it had a higher order, a higher twist to it. It does. It's like when uh when you broke down the fact all the all the people that Noble Drew Ali uh taught and the fact that when they came out they didn't mention anything about us being more than that or whatever else. The flip side of that being too that I don't know if, if this is if this is correct, but with them being uh Mason, they have to hold certain things for certain periods of time. Exactly. See they take a oath. Right. You see the sword over the head, right? For the masons, right? Yeah. Okay, that, and that's because if they if, if they do anything that's out of order, not so much tell the truth, but they have a plan, an initiation, and they, they sacrifice their lives. Now, the New World Order, when Columbus them came over, what did they call this man? The New World. The New what now? Say it loud. The New World. The New World. They call it the New World. And we know that a certain type of order was established. Now, if you go back to July 4th, 1776, that deals with the beginning of the New World what? Order. Oh, that's the New World Order. It's by the 17th, even a little before that, but 1776 is the, the official date. Now, that has been around since that time. What's his name? FDR, great president, his administration. He renewed it by calling it the New Deal. Okay. So the New World Order is not new. All the dollar bill has no order supporting, meaning new order is the New World Order. I mean, that's nothing new. So I don't know why people use that to get tax because it's ridiculous. Right. Now, um, what New World Order? What, what do they mean, New World Order? Well, it's only been three empires that the Moors recognized. The Moab, Moabite, the Homophodite, and the Delic Empire. The model, Moorish son, or the Griffin Moor. And the third one is the Franciscan, which means free order. The Franciscan Empire is supposed to set people free, not European, because they were not, they were, they were slaves when it was set up. So, the New World Order is supposed to be the this Franciscan Empire. Right. And how can that be done when when the Maro when the Maro colored people are actually enslaved in Caucasian? How can that be done? Yeah, I was just I was just saying, Noble, that uh, yeah, it all makes sense to me because uh, uh without a, a deep understanding of how government really works, I, I just had enough insight to see that the world would have to be united, so so to speak, under one umbrella, one uniform uh, system of government in order for everything to flow flow functionally so you have trade commerce between nations without any uh any military so that so what you saw was the positive that could come out of the new world war meaning when they want all the whole world up under one commerce right yeah, there's a lot of positive in that i mean you gotta understand i mean but see people that are, are, are selfish and racist and a lot of other things don't see the good in that what is the old world war it's the ottoman empire which was taken out of public view and broke up in 1914. They, when, when, when the so-called alliances defeated Germany, they defeated the Ottoman Empire. They talk about Germany, but they don't mention the Ottoman Empire. The German was part of the Ottoman Empire. Remember now, we in, we had Mamluk, white slaves, the white administrators, and the Germans were the most white of all, the blonde head and blue eyes. Yes, German. Yes. And Germans never did anything to black folks. Not even Africa. When they occupied Africa, you don't hear them killing up black people at all over in Africa. You don't never hear them talking about black people. Germans actually treat black people great. Germans are, see, they put this image of blonde head and blue eyed people uh, in a certain image, but that's not their, that's not the true blonde head and blue eyed. It's been the people that look like us that killed us. And the Italians and the, those type of people, the ones who really hate our good. Because they really are people. But uh, the Germans are now because we're just a human race. See, our world slogan is the unity of man in the service of God. Right. So that is the answer. Right. Now, the 
told her before, Allah, Ra, Ja, Christ, whatever you want to call it, is working towards that end. And if it's not working towards that end, it'll never happen. And it works through human beings and others. Oh, boy. I saw pictures uh, of ancient the, the Mussolini and all of them. They used feds when they conquered uh, Ethiopia. You have to understand that everything in the universe has a positive and a what? A negative. Now, take you for an example and then as your group and people like yourselves. Now, you're in America. America is the ultimate place to be initiated. You understand that? Uh -huh. yes. You know initiated means to be trained, right? To go through your training and understand. So America is the ultimate place. It's the place that's the most hypocritical, it's the place that's the most dangerous, it's the place where people carry guns and people are out of control, it's the place where you send the most lies, you get the worst food, everything that you can think of. Now, the United States of America represents the Egyptian and ancient Omekian Moorish initiation school. Let me tell you why. Long ago, they had certain grottoes, tunnels, pyramids, mounds, and things like this that were set up to initiate people to, to cross them over, and they became known as twice great, or born again. They became the children of the sons of God in these initiations, including the ones in Egypt. Y'all, you know about that, right? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah, but you know about the people who were initiated, right? Right, yeah, right. And they went into the pyramids. Yeah, That's yeah. That's a simple way of saying it. You know about that, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Now that's maxed out. Everything maxed out because see, what happened was people knew that they were going to be initiated. Therefore, they prepared themselves. And they knew that they were being tested. Therefore, they acted as though they were being tested. But the next phase is that you take down the wall. You eliminate people who even know that they're being initiated. And those who get through that test will be greater than the ones that knew that they were going into the initiation. So the pyramid was stuck on the dollar bill that looks like an Egyptian pyramid. And beside it, you have the eagle. Well, in Egypt, you had a pyramid, but you don't have an eagle. You have what? The Sphinx, right? right? The Sphinx, right. right. And the Sphinx has a, it's called a lion paw, isn't it? Yes. And a lion grip. Now, in America, you don't have a lion. But you do have what? The eagle. The eagle. So they use the eagle. So in order for you to get through the pyramid, to the great eye, you got to go through the eagle. Because the only way you get into the initiation, you had to go through the lion's paw. Therefore, you had to get through the federal government. Because the federal government is the eagle. Yeah. You ain't the eagle. Yeah, that's so you have to be tried and tested by the federal government, which is set up an initiation that's all over the United States. At all times. You ain't through I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Well, you in you we know we've been through that as a people where they were killing us and, and hunting us down. Where the four beasts of the pale horse. The pale horse represents the European power that would be taken over. And the beast of the field that kills with the pale horse is the white folks that were savage when they let them loose, even though we made them into savage. You call the two foot pain. And others. The problem about learning is it puts you, it makes you suffer. Right. When you become conscious, then you become sensitive. You become a totally different person. When you're unconscious, you don't feel these things. Because you don't know anything. No, you don't feel. So you don't know anything is being done to you. You don't know you're being harmed. So it's an advantage of being of uh, being conscious is that you know you're being harmed so you can take the correct steps to, to stop harming yourself. Whereas when you're unconscious, even though you're not hurt, you're still dying. Yes. You're being destroyed. You don't even know it. Which is the majority of what's going on now. Well, people know now. They just hypocrites. True. Yeah. Yeah. People suffer. They know they suffer. A lot of them actually love they suffer too. Yeah, they love it in the public, but they don't love it privately. Right. Well, lady that just killed herself that was on top of the world, thinking how wonderful she was, she found herself, and now she's dead, she killed herself. The lady, I forgot her name, she's a singer. She didn't sing rap or anything, she sung these other songs. Oh, you talking about, uh... Did it sound so very hard? Yeah. Yeah. I was so, but my point being that look how she fooled everybody. See, people are actually suffering. Now, black folks, they know. See, we know right from wrong. 
we might can't stop ourselves now because we done became habit, habitual. But we know right from wrong. Very few Caucasians know right from wrong. They are sociopaths. They hate other races. They, 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 they hate society because they were down so much they were putting their genes. But that's Caucasian. That's not white. necessarily all white people now. Some white people are crossed over. They actually are mulatto. They amalgamated. That's why they act certain ways. But, um, we know. We have the ability to, to, to know things, but we won't, we won't do anything about it because we're so hypocritical. We prefer living in the plantation and being, you know, we want the cars, the money, the women, the da-da-da-da. So we let it go, but we know. You ain't no different than nobody else. You think you're different than the mother of other folks? They know, you know. You know, they know. You know, when, when, when the universe of force made up, he didn't make no one of us. He didn't make no one else express it. You know, he made all of us the same, didn't he? Uh, yes. Right, you can go get the brother off the street, they can do the same thing Michael Jordan did if he had the dog on what? Coaching? Right. Right. That's not true for their race. See, so we know. So when you say they, they like it, they don't like it, they just know, but they, they trade it off. And that's why it's so important that when the, the scales are balanced and the things, if it shifts at this time, then the leadership will help those people come out of their agony too. Even though they won't run anything. They'll be in the middle. See, when the earth flips, when the North Pole becomes the South Pole, the people in the middle don't go nowhere. They just up under different rules. Yes, sir. So then on that note, but do you have any, uh, uh, I'm doing what I'm doing out here and just working to an extent, but do you have anything to offer as far as how we bring our people together to, uh, to see what, 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 what the greater benefit, uh, this is for all of us? And, and you got to qualify that. You got to tell me, well, who are your people? What do you mean by that? All right, that's right. Uh, Moors who don't know any Moors that, that call themselves African American Negro color. No, they are not Moors. They're Moro. But they just have a hue complexion. Remember we talked about Afra? Remember I told you about Afra, the word African? In, 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 in the ancient Moorish Comedian languages, Af meant flesh, and Ra means God, so that's flesh of God. So in, in the, the Bible, you find out that the people that were created out of the dust to the ground, we looked it up. If you look it up in the Key Study Bible, it's called Afra. But they, they were called a living soul, they were not a living spirit, they didn't have high conscience. So the term Afra means that you have the skin or the, the, the blessings of God because you got the melon, but you don't have the mind. Right. Therefore, the more, the word more, M-R, means Mimra, or the manifestation of intelligence. So you are Afra, you got the skin to God, but you're more, you got the mind of God. So the term is between more, the consciousness, and the skin is called Maro. Maro. They're Maro, but they're not more. But we call them Moors because the word Moros also means more. You follow what I'm saying? Right. It overlaps. Right. We probably call them unconscious Moors. Unconscious Moors. Right. And remember now, in the Matrix, if you're unconscious, you're the system. Right. So now, who are your people? Your people are those that have the same spirit. Who is my mother? Who is my brother? Jesus said. Talk to his own mother. Those who work with God is your people. Right. So, I don't know what you mean when you say your people. That's right. Now, the other thing is this. The prophet also said they will seek more people, but more, more that seek. They're not really more, they're just they're seeking to be more. Those are the seekers. And they're also called moros and more. And they really want to know what to do. Those are your people too. But they're not more. Right. They're moros. All the way down to the animalistic people, because the word Afra in Hebrew means animalistic people. Dust to the ground. Very low. Residue from the last world that didn't make it over. See, so if you mean people that dark skinned, that doesn't give a D about themselves or anybody else, and love to continue to live the way they live even when some light is brought to them then they're not your people because all black folks are not what so called moors some of them still have to true right but if they're your spirit then it doesn't matter about what color they are am I right Q yes am I right Q that's right 
That's right. That's right. Therefore, now I'm loose, so now I'm more. If they discern the little more, and they pass the test and held the court and have created the empire that we supposed to inherit, then Mount Luke can be more. And the Caucasian people out there who are really not Caucasian, they're amalgamated. And uh, if even they're Caucasian and they want to cross over and they want to submit to what we're dealing with, then they're more. Now, if you mean waking up the masses, the people that's out there, you'll never do that. What you have to do is get yourself together, your own little group, your own people, whether what, regardless of what color they are. And when things start to evolve in our favor, they'll come in under droves. Okay. Yes, sir. So you can't worry about all those people, Q. Right. No, there was a time, no, when I, when I was worried about everybody, I felt the whole world was my family. I had to wake them up, you know, but... As I got out here doing it, I saw that these people did not want to wake up. So I, 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 I concentrated just on those who seriously want to, you know, want to make change in themselves to bring about change in the universe. And and, and, and we all went through that school after the fact because that's what I mean by we kidding kids. Because I wanted to help the whole world, especially our people. I didn't know who our people were. All right. And uh, I did the same thing. But I understand now that if you only be concerned about what you can actually do, where you actually are, right. not where you want to be and what you can't do. <laughs> That's right. And it'll take care of itself. We got to take care of what we've been appointed to do. You, I'm quite sure you know enough people, have enough people in your circle, that it's quite a few, right? Yes. And those are the ones you need to be concerned about. And see, they have people that's a little bit out of their circle that you don't know, which is their circle. Right. So, let them off the side. That's right. Deal with you at. And that's admirable and practical. True. See, I, I, and this message is not going to be uh, announced, pronounced on TV or anything until all this is accomplished. And it won't be presented as though somebody's been defeated because that defeats everything. Caucasian people are part of the human family. This system is part of a lot, lot, y'all. Christ is playing, or else it wouldn't be here. And now, God is so out of, so impotent that he can't knock America off. He ain't God. All right. And Jezebel and Sarah is strong, and all these people can live to be over 100 years old. Don't get aged. Don't get sick until they die. They rule it. United States of America and they evil then God got to be on the evil side too right look we so good we knock off at 25 30 40 drugs out freaked out poked out screwed out and everything else but we we right ain't nothing insanity right the devil keep him alive. See, Lucifer can do all that, but God can't even keep his own people alive, but the devil can. Let's do this movie. You're on the wrong side. See, we have to look at life for what it is, not for what we want it to be. And the way you do that, you got to get rid of all that mess that our parents put in them. In the school system, in the church, the synagogue, the mosque. They put all this mess in them. And even the morals even teach this mess. Oh, yeah. super sick is still super. <laughs> You know, no, but before I came to, uh, before I came to L.A., I was, uh, I was out in the, out in the valley, and, uh, I talked to everybody, uh, you know, I had everybody on, under my br- umbrella, but I came over this way to see what was, uh, what, what was happening over this way, and, uh, like I was telling my queen a while ago, it kind of, you know, I, I'm from, from Detroit, you walk down the street, somebody walk past you, you know, how you doing, nice day, uh-huh. You there in California, they look at you like you're crazy. Yeah. And I said, I'm not gonna let these people break me. I'm not gonna let them break me. But after about five years, I found myself not saying to anybody, saying anything to anybody when they walk past me. You know, uh, saying all that to say that that I I I, I hear what you're saying uh, about this being universal to everyone. I'm about to catch a lot of flack because I'm already feeling it right now. You get ready to catch a lot of flack because you're already feeling what? I'm already feeling it from the evil mode. Basically, they uh, they talking about me like mad, calling me renegade this and everything else. But you see, this is where you have an out. See, the Mongols didn't follow those Arab codes because they weren't Arabs. They were not being 
Jill is up on the air, uh, lol. Ow! And by them being so different in the air, they took it over. They were pure. They were purified. They purified the Arabic world and thought that they were the keepers of the flame, the same way the Moors think they the only ones can do it. You follow me? Yeah. Yeah. Right, Allah always send in the savages. So, we'll be savages. <laughs> call me what they want. Right. <laughs> See, Q, you, you need to change your style. Okay. See, we're gonna have to do that. See, you're no longer under that. And they're gonna always think that you they child as long as you do what? Present yourself with their child. Right. You a spirit man, Q. You. you know for yourself, that's your slave. That's your third person. Your clothes is your out of garment. That's a slave to you. You put on different clothes like it's nothing. Talk for me. Alright. Okay, now, let me finish what I was saying, because I'm going to bring something home to you. The clothes that you put on is a slave. Remember I told you three citizens? You got the, yeah. the, nat the, 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 the so-called natural-born citizen, you got the denizen, and then you have the alien. Yeah. The alien is always considered not native, therefore he's, he's, he's not natural. So he's, if you're not natural, then you're artificial, am I right? Yes, yes. That is your clothes natural? That you put on every day? No. No, they're artificial. Anything that's natural can reproduce itself. <laughs> if it ain't natural, it can't reproduce itself. That's because you know a lot of foods and stuff that you ain't natural. <laughs> yes, that's But they still can be eight. Because we're more than just one being. Sure. We three beings. But one of them is your clothes, your attire. And society judges you by your what? Attire, your outward appearance, am I right? That's right, right. yeah. Right. But that's a slave, it has no say so. But the slave is the subject nowadays. The slave is the one that thinks that he's a real person. So, if a person is hung up in his clothes, he's a slave. Now, the second you is your body. Now, that's natural, but it ain't really natural because it changes. Because you're no longer the little person that you were when you came out of your mother's womb. You change. Your hair don't stay the same. Your skin don't. Every seven years, you shed the soap. So you're not really the same person. Therefore, you're not really natural. You don't, don't know what you really are. You're in the middle. That's the dinner. But you have the same since you've been knowing yourself. That has never changed. That's the real you. So if a person is real, and you, I know you real. If you're real, they'll close or nothing. That's the slave. It serves you. You don't serve it, so we shouldn't get hung up in the clothes. And if we uh, 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 are going to represent all people in America, then we need to look like a common American. Okay. Yes, sir. Did I explain that to you all good enough to understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes. We broke it down to the toe there. Okay, because that's very important. That we understand that we three people. A social person. A natural. Quasi. And a spirit being. But even the one in the middle gets us in trouble, don't it? Because we try to satisfy the body, don't we? Yes, sir. Too much so, because the body got to be satisfied, too, because it's down. Yes, sir. Okay. So we got to balance in that. But you can't do that when you get hung up on one thing. Our people knew exactly what kind of clothes to wear. They invented clothes that were air conditioned. Catch air when they walk. The right color, the right vibration. They put gold and copper on their elbows and ankles and everywhere in the ears and they nose. We had the nappiest of all hell. The blackest of black skin. We do everything to the teeth and we still fail. That's right. Because we didn't adapt. We became traditional. Wanted to keep it the way it was and they, they ain't like that. We and were talking about like uh, just how to reach you know, a lot of uh, the people out there is by like, you know, how they all flash in and they got the cars and all that and that all attract them. So we come with the same type of thing, but 
with more information on them. Like you said, that'll flip right there. They'll jump on our bandwagon so quick it wouldn't even be funny. Right, and we don't want to take the cars and stuff away from them. We don't want to take uh, their clothes away from them. What we want to do is give them a chance to not always be into that. You can step outside of that, and when you need to use that, then go back into the matrix. Until the matrix is totally controlled or destroyed. See, we don't want to be taskmasters. Our people didn't call for people like that originally. And let me ask you this, Nova. Uh, the system of government that we're running, uh, as I told you, uh, I'm in direct contact with the chief who represents 56 different Indian nations. Correct? And uh, last time I was there, he asked me to break down this government, you know, where I do it at that point. So I drew it out. This you talking about this new one that you involved in? No, no. Okay, you talking about the what you government? Right. Uh, sure. The administrator. Okay, go ahead. And so I broke it down, you know. The best hey, that ain't this government. Right, right. That's that government. That government. <laughs> <laughs> this government is yours. Right, right. I broke it down for him, and then he broke down their government. And I was able to see that their government encompasses a lot of the, uh, in other words, it's, it's the inner coming to the outer realm. Okay. Uh, I'm curious to know uh, the government that, our government, that our ancestors established. Was it established uh, uh, looking at looking at the clock of destiny, how everything's related to nature and nature dictates this and dictates that? Did our government come about that same way or did it come about a different way? Uh, I think you gotta understand that the government that we're involved in, the old republic, right. it came from the great law of peace. You know the great law of peace? Right. So it said the great law of people or peace? P -E -P -E -A C.E., the great law of peace, also called the Constitution of the Five Nations, in which the Iroquois, the Suian, and the Guaquan people were part of. They called the Five Civilized Nations. You ever heard of that? Right. Not the Five Civilized Tribes, no, but the Five Civilized Nations. Nation. Now, the Five Civilized Tribes is most likely where these people came from, the ones that you're dealing with. Okay. Because we came from the Five Civilized Nations. We were the mound builders and the government and so on, so on, so on. So they, they were people like nomadic people and moved around or they lived on the outskirts and things like this. Now, this is the, the nation that you're dealing with know us as more if they conscious. If they're not so conscious, they may know us as Anasazi. A-N-A-S-A-Z-I. Anasazi. It means the old ones or the ancient ones and also the old enemies because we just we did a few things against them that wasn't proper either. Now a lot of the Indians had some visions about so called black folk with feds in the future. So you may want to use some of this information. Okay. And that if he part he is part of a sixteen tribes, you say? Fifty six. Fifty six tribes all, all over the United States or one area. All over. And then you should know a lot about all this stuff. You need to ask them, so what do you know about the, the, the old Indians, the old black Indians that wore faces? Right. You know, stuff like this. And tell him, you know, that we're, you're part of, you're, you're more, but you're part of the Anastasi, the old one. And that your government, the one that you're involved in, is the old United States government that came up out of the great law of peace. The, 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 the constitution for the five nations. You're part of what used to be called the five civilized nations, not five civilized tribes. Okay? Now, the United States of America, the one that we're involved in, is a the result of all of the ones that fell and collapsed. However, it never did take root because of the greed of people. Remember, we brought in the British proprietors, the British proprietors, and you could never look at the Caucasian people and see them as human beings. They didn't want them to walk down the street beside them. They didn't They didn't have that in them. They were always slaves. Whereas the Moors over here saw that. They could be part of the nation. But the British proprietors eventually uh, manipulated things to the point where we became greedy too. And we enslaved people too, including our own. For a short period of time, where they were doing it over there with Barbary pirates and all these type of people, they've been doing that for thousands of years. So, the old United States government, the one that we're talking about, the original one, the legitimate one, the constitutional one, came out of a spiritual union of the old one to do a, to have a better union. 
see, the laws of Confederate, the laws of Confederate and the United People is the name of the old nation of, of the uh, uh, so-called Great Law of Peace. They call it the United People instead of the United Nation. But, but if, you, if you look up the word people, it becomes the word what? Nation. So, but the United People is also called a state. So if you look up the word people, it becomes a state. So that's the United States. But it was part of the old Ottoman Empire. And the people called themselves Moroccan instead of Moroccan. And this was a spiritual thing. I know we had lost our spirit. So we had to come up with something new. So they stuck the ancient bird up there called the Bennu bird, the Bennu bird in, in, uh, in Egypt, Bennu, Bennu, Bennu. They show you it lifting up, it's like a rocket lifting up out of plane. It's called Ben or Hibble in Arabic and Bini, Bini Halim, Sons of God in Hebrew. And over here it's called Finny. Because the B and the B, you flip the B, you got the P. Finny, 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 which is Phoenician or Finny. So I got the flame. Therefore, we created the nation that would rise up out of the chaos and the confusion and the, the, the corruption, the, 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 the decay, the corruption, and all that. And that's but you have to be purified when you do that. And this was the goal. And how would you do it? You would do it by obtaining the all seeing eye. But it took several levels to get there. So we are definitely come from the spiritual people because it's the old native, old native Indians, not a Native American. Because the native term Native American means you're a ward of the state or you're a retard. Right. Because you have a lot to talk to him about. That's why these tapes are important. Remember now, listen to this. Um, the United States government, the one that we're involved in, primarily was made up in, of, of indigenous Indians, although they were called Moors. They were called the Nappy. Tell them we the Lenape people. The Nappy, Nappy Coast. They went into the general population to save ourselves. They will come back at a later date. We were called the Issue. The Mecca Indians, the Barbarossa, the free colored, free man. All of these are terms of these, and we're native to this land. We're Aboriginal, but we're not Native American because we never submitted to the wardship of the state. And that's what I've been trying to bring to them right now because uh, they're on their land and they call it a sovereign international internation, but they still address themselves as Indians. And they still, they don't really own the land, they public land. If they own reservations, they reservations? No, it's just a land that they took and don't pay taxes on it the whole line. Oh, that's good. They good. They moving forward. Now, with them, um, once they step outside of their area, they, they have to follow the rules and regulations of the regular citizens, right? Right. Right. Whereas we're saying that they don't have jurisdiction on us, no matter where we what, go. Because all of this is our land. Right. <laughs> Tell them that there were types of Indians that actually sold the land to the federal government when they didn't have the right. But the federal government didn't care. They were just trying to take the land over at one time. And they paid these Indians off by giving them lands or letting them settle on reservations and things like this. It goes a lot to that. Sure. Uh, you tell them that they know about the five point stop. They know that it was over here too and they represent beings that came here. And you from that. You, you know, we more. We, we, we came from other planets. They know about that. They talk about the turtle people. I brought to his attention uh, 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 a while ago. It's a few years ago that when I had my awakening, I saw myself in a place in Arizona called Chaco Canyon. So as I investigated this place, I found out that it, for the for, for this side of the continent, it was the Temple of the Sun. And uh, it's still there in Arizona. Now, out of that, I had another another Hopi chief just talk to me a month ago. And basically, he came to me people to return to the, to come to the, not return, but to come to the reservation if they need help. Right, but you, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go and get them, out and get them off the reservation and have the reservation too. See, we're supposed to make them citizens up under our nation. Gotcha. They'll never have, they'll never be respected in the United States. The United Nations don't want to protect them. They don't have a seat on the United Nations, do they? No. 
the only person that can sit on the United States is the United States of America. Nobody in the United States. See, no state can even sit on the, the United Nations. The state has to be represented by the federal government. The supreme law in their system is the United States federal government. That's the first sovereign. The second sovereign is the state. And the third sovereign are Indians. They sovereign, but they're under the third level sovereign. Right. And the people that gave in are called tribal people. The word tribe means to pay tribute. Go look it up. It means that you are not the national people. The word national means native. Natural. All those are the same words. As far as uh, you said, now Native American. We're not Native American. We're not no kind of American. No kind of American at all. You don't know when I broke that down, American, I really tell you mean that you a British subject. Okay. <laughs> and that you are water up under a trough for poor white people. Remember I broke that down at the thing? Right. right. He is no kind of American. So simply because they had a noun, I mean uh, a descriptive term native, that don't mean that you uh, American. That mean it means that you now a native that's retarded. Okay. The state. That's all that means. Because the, the word means is to represent poor white Christian Protestants. But see the term white means to be a slave. The term white means slave. Right. Or to be punished. Other. See, there's three primary factors in dealing with the, 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 what I call the plan of a law, law, job. And the three world false prophets, antichrist, and beast is the false prophet is, is to deal with prophecy. That's, the, that's Israel, that's the Jew. That's the religious aspect of it. The is the United States. That's the army, the muscle. Go around killing people. And doing everything else, but that's their job. You follow? Right, yes. And who was the third one? Antichrist. The Antichrist. And that's the head person, right? The Antichrist is the head, am I right? Yeah, right. That's right. The Antichrist is the one that's supposed to look like so and so. That's, see, that's the Great Britain. I mean, that's the English people, because see, they the brains are behind everything. So you got the muscle of America, the brain of Britain, and the doggone religious aspect to verify everything to give a sample of approval from God is you. <laughs> yes. And they work together. See, Britain stay in there, where the American thoughts will walk out. Right. They all in together. But you can't knock them when you had Jordan sitting right beside them, Syria, uh, what's the Iraq, Iran, all these people got missiles. They can bomb Israel in the day and be over with them. That's right. But they don't do it because they're the same old Negro. Oh. <laughs> you remember during the Gulf War where Iraq got so pissed off they started sending good missiles to Israel? Uh -huh. Right, they hit them, right? Yes. But why they ain't doing that? And why don't Syria do something about it? Jordan and all these people. Because the people are the same old Negroes, Negroes because they're religious and the leaders are conspiring. They're part of the world plan. Yes. Right. See, the people can change the government. Well, couldn't we change this government over here with one nigga? Negro? I mean, we could do it, but we satisfy it. Whether we want to argue over what? Whether Jesus was a prophet and Muhammad was this and all of that? Whether the, 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 the rap is better or the rap ain't better or whatever? All this old garbage. Right. We all know. Well, you reap what you sow, you get what you deserve. I mean, I suffer daily, brother, but I don't complain because I feel like I deserve what I get. Okay. When I say I don't complain, I don't complain. Complain. You know, I suffer now. You know, you moan when you hurt. So, that whole thing about Israel, I don't even pay that any attention. Yeah, that, that's immaterial to me. You need to be worried about studying this law. You need to be worried about setting the Constitution, working with them brothers, seeing how you're going to get this message out with, with flyers and doctor, whatever, that is it out. Constantly study, study to show yourself approved. My people die for a lack of knowledge, prove all things. There's a way to paradise, where the paradise is not. One learned man is hard on the devil in a thousand ignorant worshippers. Look at that stuff. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I am totally illiterate when it comes to all this garbage. That's right. My uncle tell me about stuff from time to time. And one by me changing stations to get the program 
that I do look at because I can't look at everything. Uh, I may see something. But I don't worry about that. I told you I'm only concerned with what I'm supposed to be doing. Does our government have anything uh, set up along the ways of, I don't know what the proper term would be, but uh, marriage recording between you and your mate? Okay. There are several ways that you can be married. As you go up to a conscious level, the less you want people telling you how to be married, right? Right. right. Now, in the state of California, that state, not our state, the state of California, they have what is called marriage licenses and certificates and things of this sort. Where you have to go and get your licenses and then eventually become married, certificate of marriage. And they pronounce you man and wife by the state of California, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. That you don't want to deal with. You don't need to. I mean, somebody else is in the system like that. That's cool. No problem. The way we get married is the national through common law. Now, I told you that the, the supreme law of the land is three, has three aspects, right? Right. Y'all remember what they were? Huh. Anybody, can anybody tell me what the supreme law is? I didn't want to read again. Did I, did I, did I, did I, did I would just say the supreme law of the land would be the common, common law, correct? Okay, hey, that's a good guess, but it's incomplete. And it's not fair or no, but it's a good guess. I said that there were three aspects. I gave you two. <laughs> Didn't I say three people? Yes, sir. That's right, so you only gave me one. Would the Constitution be one of them? Yeah, but see, you say that? The, the Constitution is the supreme law of the land, but it tells you what the Constitution is, and it's supremacy. We went over that. I said to you all, get the Constitution, look it up. And I told you, I said, the supreme law of the land consists of three things. This Constitution, the laws of the United States, pursuant thereof, and treaties made by the United States. Remember I told y'all that? Yes. Right. So it's three components of the supreme law, but all of it is locked up in one thing called the Constitution. Right. But the second phase of it is called the laws of the United States. Now, the laws of the United States, I told you earlier, were, were predicated on common law. Common law, if you look up common law, it'll tell you it goes out of the minds of men. It goes back to the time of immemorial antiquity. It is law that's laid down from God knows how long based on the interpretation. Also, if you look up common law marriage, common law marriage must go back out of the minds of men. And there's nothing common about common law, because once you deal with common law, you have to be, deal with the royal court through the county or the county. So we say if you're going to get married, the best thing to do is get married through common law. And that's a consent between you and your mate. Right. That's a declaration. Remember the prophet said declare and proclaim? Right. So once you declare that that's your wife and enter into her with the penis in the vagina, that's the only true marriage that is. There's nothing else can separate that unless you two decide to do that. Right. However, he said proclaim. Proclaim means to write something down. Right. So you can choose certain uh, documents that you make up through the nation and uh, what we do, you know, make up some documents or you, you know, tell us what you want and we make it up and then we record it in the county. So now you done declared it and proclaimed it and recorded it. Right, because that's, that's what me and my wife were, uh, well that's what we have, we just haven't uh, recorded or anything, we, we, we uh, wrote down our oath between each other. It's common law marriage. Right, now you have an oath that you wrote which be in, in, included, however when you record it downtown it has to be constructed a certain way. Okay. And that's what we do. Okay. You know, we construct it for you. In other words, you know, what to put down, because even, you know, you have to know how to put the word. I, I, I got it put up somewhere. I ain't did this in I don't know how long, you know. But we got all of that. Okay. Uh, then the fourth stage is you have to implement the marriage. In other words, declare, proclaim, record, implement. Because if you do all that and still don't implement it, you still ain't married. All right. The documentation is, is valid, and you can use it for your reference. So if something occurs, you have proof that you were married through common law. Okay. You all got to do your name change, right? Yes, yes, yes. And your name change, you're gonna have new paperwork. It's gonna be done up under common law. Right. Which means that you really don't even lose.
with your other name. You keep it too, because one of them is going to say also known as. Right, right. You're not changing it, you add more to it. Right. You don't want to lose anything. And, and that's, that's, that's how we get out of um, uh, the, the marriage license that we're into now. And, and, and you can do that through your cancellation document. Right, okay. The all the things that you signed up until now is better than until you do your cancellation document. Right, okay. Once you do your cancellation document, that stuff is no longer valid. That's why you keep those documents and use them at, at your uh, pleasure or when you really need to use them. And uh, start doing things new, up under the new method. Right. But all that's kind of law. No, but sir. So, so how, many, uh, how many wires are we allowed? Um, so now, you have to you have to deal with this in a practical amount. Based on African culture, you allow as many wives as long as you can uh, support or, or keep a family going. Not so much support them, because that ain't what you're supposed to be doing no way. They're supposed to help support you too. But as long as you can keep a family going, you know, in Islam, you allow four wives and as many concubines that you can have. But see, a wife now, listen now, a wife is a woman that believes like you. A concubine is a woman that has a different, different belief system. None of us in America got wives, except for a few of us. Even the ones that practice Islam and so and so and African religion. Them women don't believe nothing like us, they cause problems all the time. They always fight us. Now, if you're a Christian and you got a wife or got married to the Christian church and she believed like you, you got a wife. Okay, well, if they believe like you, if they call the law married, they believe like you, you got a wife. If they don't believe like you, they concubine. That was why Sarah was Abraham's wife because she was a Hebrew and she was a Hebrew, whereas Hagar was, Hagar was not a Hebrew. She had a different belief system. That's why they come with equally yoked. And unequal, but often now you can see you can get around that because a person don't have to have your belief system to still be your concubine wife. She can don't have to believe like you, but she can still be a wife. But a wife means that she believes like you and treats you a certain way. Where a concubine don't have to believe like you, but she treats you like a hook. These women nowadays they don't believe like you and they don't even treat you like no dog on hook. <laughs> and so I say you know, we don't have no wives now. The majority of them. We got concubines that's disagreeable. Can you spell that? Mark? Concubines. Yeah, concubines. Oh, uh, I don't like to spell no concubines. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Con right. con with concubines. It might be C-O-N. C-U-B-I-N-E. So I speak okay. sometimes without putting letters in words. I've I, I translated too many languages. <laughs> I deal with phonetics. Remember, I don't, I don't pronounce R's. I say do, sto, mo. So, so we, we do help people with their marriages and to have records. Don't treat them like they know. They don't know what's going on. Right. One of the people invite us to take the records of a high level, Masonic nature, know what's going on. And so don't make the mistake of thinking that these people are conscious out here. They're not. They're just as dumb as they can be. So, but you give them what they want. So you can navigate around all those problems. Right, well the reason I asked that because I was I was informed to do a, uh, an affidavit of live birth and just found that with the county. Yeah, I, I would do that. I would do that, found it with the county, and I would send one to the vital statistics of state. Okay. And have them file. Okay. You have the original. Right. Send them a copy. Right. But that, that, those children were not tied into that those funds now. Oh, okay. They won't tie into that because you don't have a birth certificate. The birth certificate creates a skull man. The man who's called, the skull man is your corporate entity. And your corporate entity makes money. You be, it's being sold all around the planet. And you, what you're trying to do is get it back. I mean, we don't want to take nothing. We want to get rid of, we want to get control of our own money. Let me, let me back up a little bit. Remember I said there's three governments, right? Right. The general government, the corporate government, and the administrative government. Exactly. Father. Yeah. I told you that. The corporate government got out of control to the point that a lot sent what is called administrative people of the FDR and they did away with that even though it exists. This was under the control of the administrative government. Remember I told you that? Yes. Right. But there's three. So there's three U2. 
and it's the clothes, the corporate, corporate, what they call you, corporate, your corporate, your body, uh -huh. and then you have the general. The general is as you can go. And the army. Yes, it is. That's right. The general. Uh -huh. So now, uh -huh. when they, the administrative government took over, they took over the control of the corporate government. The straw man is the corporate government, the corporate body. But it's the corporate body on paper. And they are controlling it, therefore they're making the money off of it. Yes. We're saying that you are controlling it, but you're supposed to control it for us. So we have to copy, when we copy the administrative government and bring it back into the fold, then we'll have legitimate access to the corporate body, which is what has all the money. That's right. See, it's different than what you think it is. See, we've been fighting against ourselves, signing documents and things, but we didn't know. And if I'm right, then you can see. All right. So then, no, but tying that in, uh, should I get a, a social security number on them as well, too? See, of course. The old boy said it a long time ago. Social security is not a, is, is, uh, not a tax at all. Actually, it's accumulation of funds that's given in. The only thing you're doing is you're saying that you tied into your uh, tax identification number, which is social security number, which means that you're tax exempt. And the money they're collecting uh, through the social security uh, benefit that ties into the commercial laws, things of this sort, which they're using it, that's not, we're supposed to get that back too. Security number is your tax identification number also. Right. And the tax identification number is supposed to be hooked up with the Treasury Department. So if you don't have one, you don't have a number. You know, 666, nine digit number, because 6 plus 6 plus 6, like 6 equals 18, 18, 18 equals 9, that's the negative. But when you reclaim who you are, your preamble citizenship, then it becomes 144, 144,000, which is also 9. And the, S, the Social Security card has a 9 digit, it's a 9 digit, but it stands that symbolic of something that we use positive and negative. So it's who you are, it's not the number, because a 6 and a 9 is the same thing. It's just a matter of viewing it. If I view it from the top, it's one way, if I view it from the bottom, it's another. <laughs> If we're in the new order, the true new order, the one that's supposed to manifest itself, then, you know, poverty and all this kind of stuff eventually will be done away with. Um, you won't need any money or credit. You, you know, you like to say you have a card or something and you just use it because it's a credit to your account. No matter where you are on the planet, eventually to get to that point. Um, because, you know, money is, is a, just an illusion anyway. It's actually you need commodities. True, right. Mm -hmm. And once you do your work, then your time will be added up to a X amount of commodities that you need no matter where you are. And we was, we have all kinds. See, we, our, our system of money is tied into what is called gold and silver. Yes. And that's something that's solid and real. That's a commodity. You understand? Yes. Right. It's not tied into credit. However, you can get credit off of your commodity. So credit is not bad either. Instead of you carrying all that gold and silver around, that's ridiculous. Yes. You put it somewhere safe and you get credit for the gold and the silver. Now, uh, the United States corporate government went bankrupt in 1929. 1933, they did some alterations and they made sure that the corporate, corporate government now would fall upon the treasury. This is when they started to create what is called the Federal Reserve System, the way it's created today. And the IRS and a few other things came into existence during these particular time periods. And it was designed so that the money that was to be paid back to the national government from the credit, from the, uh, uh, not the credit, the, the national government is the credit, from, from the, uh, what's, what's the person that the debtor? I forgot what you call The debtor, okay, right. Okay, the debtor was the United States corporate government. That was the debtor. The, the actual lender or the creditor was the United States general government. Because it started doing uh, the, the war of independence for them and the revolutionary war for us. The colony plantations didn't have money to fight a war. So they had to be supplied arms and weapons and a lot of other stuff that you borrowed to fight a war. And we were supporting them, so we actually supported them with weapons and everything else. Not Britain. Why in the heck would Britain give you weapons to fight against Britain? You know, you hear all these old stupid patriots talking about Britain on the Federal Reserve and all. How in the heck would Britain give you money to fight against them? That's 
contract. That's ridiculous. So, once the corporate government, the federal corporation in the United States that's in 28 U.S.C. Section 2, no, Section 3002, number 15. 28 U.S.C. Section 3002, number 15. It's called the Federal Corporation. The United States Federal Corporation. That's the one that you can sue. That's the one that goes to court and you have claims against. Because you know that they tell you that you cannot sue the sovereign United States, right? Right. But at the same time, you can sue the what? In the Federal Claims Court against the United States. What does that tell you? To the United States. Yes, sir. Now, the corporate one borrowed the money from the Jones and didn't pay the money back. And in 1929, they called in the debt and did another bankruptcy. And they couldn't pay it off. Therefore, the corporate government with its 14th Amendment citizens and its a permanent resident aliens used them as credit. Collateral. Yeah, it's collateral. They put the people, people's energy and work, uh, labor up. So now people are working to pay off the debt. Income taxes are totally 14th Amendment citizens. Anyone you all got the Constitution now? Now you know y'all you supposed to be good students. They supposed to have the books around. I got my, I got Black Law, I got OVA, and USC code, but I couldn't find my uh, What Black Law dictionary do you have? I brought the fourth. I got the third and the fourth, but I brought the fourth. And we have the fifth and the sixth. Alright, fourth, fifth, the third. If you got the sixth, turn to the turn to the back of the dictionary. Let me get the constitution and the sixth. Okay. Let me and look up look up amendment sixteen. I ain't going to get it right now, no. Okay. Uh, going back to what you just said, uh, why you getting that? No, you said was that Title Twenty Eight? Yeah. Okay. Title Twenty Eight USC. Right. USC Title 28. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at Title 28, but... Section 3002. Yeah. Huh? Section yeah, 3002, correct? No. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Now, I might be wrong. You know how it is, but I might be wrong. Go on. Because yeah, I'm saying my, my Title 20, my Title 28, and this is, uh... What, what, what's the name of Title 28? Uh, Judicial Code and Judiciary? Yeah, that should be. Go on. Yeah. Well, my, my book is dated 1940. Okay. Yeah, it don't go up that high. To three thousand. Okay, well, hold oh, while you doing that, let me go get mine. Okay. The one that I have is a uh, 1994 edition. Two. Okay. All right, let me see. If I'm right. Okay, title 28, section 3002, definition. Number 15, that's what I told you, right? Right. Uh, it says, this case, quote, United States, quote, means a, a federal corporation, b, an agency, an office, commission, or for other entities of the United States, c, an instrumentality of the United States. Yes, sir. That's what it says. As you read it, it says, Because what it's saying is, it's, it's a corporation, it's an agency, it's a uh, department, it's an instrumentality of the United States. So how can the United States be an instrumentality of the United States? <laughs> See, that's the federal government. The federal corporation, that's the one that was created in 1891. You want to want me to look up in the? You better keep up with that. I don't know. Oh, the sixth edition. You said in the constitution. You said. Uh, oh yeah, constitution. The back. You'll be asking me stuff. You all better. This is Title Six of y'all. Y'all better remember this. Okay, I. I'm trying to help. I can't remember who I am at the time. Uh, 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 talking on a section about one of the sixth amendment or the. Yeah, I told you all to look up uh, Amendment Sixteen. We were talking about. There was anything else needed to be 
Trump stopped. We dealt with the Social Security, but and then someone asked me, was there anything else we need to not do? And I said, well, no, because income, you know, and now this is what's leading into the income. Read, so read 16. Amendment 16. The Congress. Read it slow. Read it slow. Okay. Uh, Amendment 16, 1930, 13. The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes on income from whatever source derived without a proportion of a proportion Apportionment, apportionment among the several states and without regard to any census or enumeration. Okay, now, 1913, so-called 1913, uh, December 25th when all this, the, uh, the, the, the Federal Reserve income tax system was set up. Y'all know about that, right? Yes. And it, and, and it came into law in 1914. It was set up then, but, it, you know, for the public it came known in 1914. Now, the prophet opened up the Morris movement, national and divine movement, in 1913. Right. I, 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 if I'm correct, sometimes I get dates mixed up, okay? Okay. Now. The 16th Amendment says that they have the tax, tax and authority power by any means what? Necessary. To you. Therefore, there's no argument that people have to pay what? Right, right. Because it's in the Constitution. It's a member, but it's still out. It's but that's not a preamble to. <laughs> but not a preamble to. No, the preamble citizen citizenship is not based on the 13th Amendment citizenship. They didn't come from slaves. So how, you don't have anything to do with that. These people existed before they were, these were slaves that didn't, they're not natural. They're artificial. So they had to be brought in. How do you bring them in? You had to attach them to something. They are appendages. Amendments are appendages. They're attachments. Right. Meaning that the people wasn't in the body. So you had to create a citizenship. You had to create an avenue. The avenue is what? The 13th Amendment. You left something out. The third ingredient, segment, was voluntary slavery. Once you did that, up on the 14th Amendment, it says what? 14th Amendment. All persons. What kind of person? Born or naturalized in the United States. No, oh, but even more than that. Subject to the jurisdiction. Artificial. Because when you look at the word person, you got an artificial person and you got a natural person. Right. Right? That's right. So if you're born artificial or if you're naturalized artificial, you're artificial. Now, there's nothing natural about a 14th Amendment citizen. Because it was attached to the Constitution. But the Constitution was not written for attachment. It was written by we, the people, and not we, the person. So, again, you have to understand, all persons, what kind? Artificial. Born artificial. Now, how are you born? Of course, you're born in a place called the delivery room. <laughs> it ain't the born room. Right. It ain't the birth room. It's called the delivery room. You look up delivery, it means to transfer property from, to transfer the rent from one person to another. So when you sign the application dealing with the birth certificate, you transferred your child into the state. Immediately. So now this person is born. Yeah, when you look up born, you're going to see it means two different things in the sixth edition. Do not try to express this to anybody else. You understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Totally. You can, you can then briefly mention stuff, but don't try to express it. Don't try to deal with the word. Yeah. You got to learn it yourself. Okay. You got born yet? Yes. What did it say? Act of being delivered or expelled from mother's body, whether or not placenta has been yes, Right? Or course. Let's read, it, let's read it the second time. Slowly. Okay. Act of being delivered or expelled from mother's body. Okay. Now, let me read it for you it's the third time with, with, with your with you, with you consciousness. Okay. Read it slowly again. Okay. Act of being delivered. Stop. Or. Now, or, or, or is a conjunction. Am I right? Yes. And a conjunction job is to do what? To, to connect, to 
you connect. Sentence is phrase is ideal, but it, they're not the same. They're not connected. You understand that? Yes, sir. Right. So now, the first act of being born based on law, which is the word of art, is to be delivered. Am I right? Yes. Now, what you need to do is hold the page and go and look at the word delivery. Or deliver. Read what it says. Okay, it says that under delivery. The, the act. Uh, the act by which the rest That's the property, that's the body That's you too, go on Or, there's a conjunction Substance thereof Is placed within the actual Or Constructive possession Or control of another That, that says it all, doesn't it? That's why I call the delivery room Go back to, go back to us You can't read all this in one day Go back to us so, but you got a clear understanding of what delivery is, right? Yeah. It's just like a truck when it pull up to your house. Once you sign the paper, that's yours, ain't it? Your property. You can? Am I right? That's right. Right. That's a delivery truck. Okay. So, to, to be delivered is a form of being born. But, it's really saying that you're being transferred to something else while you're born. And the second part is a natural word for born. It comes to be expelled out of the mother's what? Womb. So you got two words for born. Now go back. All persons what? <laughs> oh. Born. Go, go. In other words, deliver over to. Deliver or expel. No, no, go back to the 14th Amendment that people are up under. Forget that, get that. Oh, go, I'm not doing no lesson on that. I'm trying to get you to deal with the Constitution. So check the book. You, you all can work with that later. Okay. For go back to the Constitution. Okay. All persons what? Born. Right, that born has a different meaning now, don't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Totally different. That thing that you could say all persons delivered over to. <laughs> That's right. And naturalized. And naturalized. It ain't the first naturalized, because the first naturalized last lives is in the seven, first seven articles, which we deal with. That's called nationalized, although it's written naturalized. But this naturalized is talking about you giving up all your rights from somewhere else. Am I right? That's right. Right. So you got two words of two constructed terms. All persons. Person means artificial. All artificial people delivered over to. Shall be what? Glad to read it. Nat naturalized in the United States. Oh. And shall be what? Subject to the jurisdiction. What? Subject what? Two, right? Subject to the jurisdiction mean that you're a Negro. I'm going to show you that later. But the term subject to means Negro. Negro don't mean black. It means someone subject to somebody else's jurisdiction. I'm going to show you all of this. So all people, I don't care what, but they can come and shout. Once they do they so-called oath for allegiance, uh -huh. I mean oath, not oath for allegiance, and go to his, the state department, I don't care what color you are, you're a Negro. Yes. 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 The state, I'm not reading, I'm trying to do it, yeah, but I'm going to it's okay. And the state, we're in, we're in, they reside. Now, what state do you reside in, Rock or Rock? Uh, California. What state do you reside in, Ma? Uh, the state of California. Right. And that's why y'all slaves, you know, were slaves to the information game, because that's not what it says. State, the word state means a state of mind, a state of condition. It don't necessarily mean a corporation state. See, so if you, the state of mind, if you in the state, the corporation, that's your state of mind. Uh -huh. The state wherein they reside. Uh -huh. See, those are words of art. Right, the state wherein they They have many meanings. You follow? Yes. You know what I said? Law is like the scriptures. Every word has several different meanings. So if you say you're in the state of California, then that's your consciousness. Therefore, you in the corporate world. No. No, I should have said I am. Therefore, and you definitely was born, weren't you? <laughs> you were delivered over to. <laughs> am I right? Yes. Yeah. Right. You don't have to be naturalized. You're born. So you born artificial, delivered over to the state, and re verify by saying I'm in the state of California. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, hold on. Thank you, sir. 
Okay. Keep Green, your name is Ad, right? Right. Keep Green. Okay. Is it a period? Yes. It's a period. Now, sentence two is your protection. Read. No state. No what? State. No state. That means no corporate state. Go ahead. Shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. Right. They don't have the right to do that because now it's shooting back to the citizens of the United States. And that goes back to, uh, turn to, uh, Article 4, Section 2. Section 2. So they can't make a citizenship and try to act like everybody's that citizen. No, because we were here before they were. So now read Article 4, Section 2. Okay, Article 4, Section 2. I'm doing this by math, so I might mess right. up. Article 4, Section 2. The citizens of each state shall be entitled to all privileges and immunities of citizens in the several states. So, the, pri the privilege and immunity clause is in the first seven articles and it's in uh, Amendment 14 for our protection. Okay. I guess y'all saying, damn. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> you know, no boy, I have a question. The UCC and all these processes with the paperwork uh, that I've gone through in the, in the recent years here, does that provide any real protection? I guess it might be a, a somewhat foolish question. No After question. All I've heard, but... Go ahead, that's the question. Uh, does that provide any type of real protection seeing as it's really still under the United States government? Okay. Okay, now, I would, right there. I, I would want you to be a little bit more specific. Now, I understand your question was well put, but what I'm saying is, what, what benefit did you think that you can get from the um, uh, Uniform Commercial Code? Because see, you're familiar with it, I can tell you. Well, I, I was led to believe that what it, was, what it was allowed me to do is claim back what was taken originally in the beginning. But give me an example. Well, the conversion of the birth certificate and turn it and creating the persona uh, and taking my taking me and creating that persona and then the debiting against that on the world market, as you said earlier, and then claiming that back, you claim back a superior lien over that straw man because you are the natural actual uh, who can who can be the only one to have superior lien once the claim is made. I said, hey, were you born? Uh, it, it ended up being that way, yes, sir. Yeah, right. You were born, right? Uh, right. You're a 14th Amendment citizen. Yes, you know that, right? Yes, sir. All right, then. 14th Amendment citizens are slaves. Do they have any rights? Uh, no, sir. No, they don't. Commercial code, do you know when it came to, when it was put, put into practice? Uh, 1933, I think that was. After the stock market and the corporate entity had to collect this money. Uh, oh, is it, is it the supreme law of the land? No. Is it a code? Uh, See, codes never do mean the truth, do it? Oh, they're only codes. <laughs> right, they codify. <laughs> there ain't no such thing in the United States law. Now, what they've done, they created, you know, they created the USC code, and they took the laws and mixed them amongst it. See, when the man slept, the enemy came in and sold wheat. So they sold tares amongst the wheat. So what they have done, they have amalgamated the laws and all these other things and codified them. That's why it's in there, but you can't see the tree for looking at the forest. Now you all reading the Constitution, it doesn't even sound like the same Constitution, does it? Oh, no, no. No, it doesn't. But it's been there the whole time, hasn't it? Yes, yes. So the way they hid it, they had hid it in the best place you can hide, in plain sight. Uh, so, so, and to continue, you hear that? Thank you. Yeah. Understand what I'm saying? Everything is in front of us. And they hide in plain sight. You can spend money to be a guru. You can go up to Himalayas. You can do anything you want. But everything we need is right from us. And everywhere else. Right on the street. Right in your house. Everywhere. I said everything we need. If you're more, if you're a national conscious being, is right in front of you. You don't need to go anywhere to find it. That's right. a lot of a lot everywhere on the planet. Really? Uh, uh, Sir Noble, this is Mark again. I want to, uh, so in essence, th there's, there's no way to claim that you have superior lien other than at the, 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 the base start of uh, claiming your national standing. Uh, there's no other way to stand on you on being the superior claimant over the 
a straw man then. No, because you're a fourteenth amendment citizen. Which again, you gotta realize now, you're not the preamble citizen until you do the contract and make you declare, proclaim it, record it, and implement it. Okay, okay. Remember that, right? I told you that. Yes, sir, yes. Sir. After listening to what I'm giving y'all so much. Okay, I just wanna be clear, sir. That you have to reclaim who you are. Yes, sir. And you did you did that. You take the you're taking the first step because you did your pledge. That's your declaration. Yes, sir. Now the second one will be your cancellation document. Once you do those, then they will be recorded in the royal court, and that's the third process. And then you have to get out there and live it, implement it. Yes, sir. Can you do that with patience, right. and study? Yes, yeah. sir. It's no right. quick trip to implement it. You have to get, navigate around all of the, the, the uh, illusions out there. And remember this, people. Please, I have to say this over and over and over and over. If you saw the Matrix, you need to understand that when Neo was doing battle with the three agents, when he was fighting for his life, even when he died, he died in his mind. He never did throw a blow. He was on the table. He never went anywhere. Right. So that was an illusion. So our fight is within our brain. Now, remember, before could come to, to, to victory, a few things transpired. He went in a room before he died. The room was marked 303. 303 is the sixth level. The sixth level brings death and pain. Once he died, he had to get his trinity because trinity was holding him up. Trinity was supposed to tell him what he needed to know. Trinity represents the government that we're trying to reclaim. The natural government. Trinity also represents our women that's totally out of their mind and won't give in to us. They'll get us killed. All she had to do was tell him. But she couldn't. She had to wait till he was dead to try to happen. <laughs> Remember, when he was dead, he he could he fought a hell of a fight, didn't he? Yeah. But he still lost, didn't he? Yeah. He had to be resurrected, born again. So once he was dead, he was resurrected by her telling him the truth. And that means he got his government back. The Trinity. He woke up. But instead of him seeing the three agents as individual, real people, he saw them as artificial intelligence, numbers. Uh -huh. Our fight is in numbers. Article 4. Da 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 da. Law. Numbers. Where you can prove who you, what you're saying. Once he see the numbers, then he had total control over the three agents. Right. And he had to even go within the administrative system. He went inside of one of them to destroy. True. So, if you're not ready to do what you're supposed to do, you just wasted your pledge. This ain't about the outside shell. This ain't about all that unnecessary stuff. This is about science. This is about spiritual science. This is about being practical. And any scientist has to prove things and they have to study. And no, but this is cute. There was one other thing that Morpheus said in that movie that really stuck out to me and I, I used to say it to people in all my lectures. And Morpheus said, remember Neo, as diabolical as these people are, they still follow the law. Follow the rules. They have to. That's exactly right. Even artificial intelligence has a law, and it has a law that confines them. That law is a computer law, whereas Neo can none of us can be confined because we have a spiritual law. We can supersede that, even though we don't know it. See, to me, it what we're doing is impossible. Because this government ain't gonna do anything to help us. That's the way I look at it. But I know that it's not, it, it, even though it's impossible, it's doable. Right. Because man can 
do the impossible. Because man does not ever feel it. You always see that movie called uh, Ghost in the Dark dealing with the two, uh, two lions. Did y'all see that movie? Mm-hmm, I saw that. Anybody else? No, I didn't know. Anyway, uh, in a nutshell, something occurred that had never occurred before in modern history was the two male lions hooked up and they were awesome. And in the end, the star, Val Kilmer, was hunting them down, the last one. But the lion got the upper hand on him, and he went up a tree. He went way up in the tree. He dropped his gun and went way up in the tree. But this lion is unusual. This lion went up the tree, too. Now, what the scene of the lion was, the lion didn't realize that that man, the men, under certain conditions, do any damn thing. <laughs> that man jumped out the tree. He ground, ground a gun and shot the lion, am I right? Yes, sir. If we do it, the problem is we got to do it for the right reason. But it's the wrong reason when we're out of season. If it's not time for the system to come down, then we the enemy of God. Right. If it's the right time and they want to keep it, then they the enemy of God. Mm. It's a time for everything under the heavens, under the sun. Right. See, so we can do it if possible. It's doable if we want. can't be the ones we, 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 we're stuck into traditions and want to follow the old way. The old way is gone. That's right. There's a lot of things in the old way that we must bring back. Now, hell, but the old way is gone. And we bring back those things that are essential, but we add things to them. They'll remove. Question number one. Is there any, I mean, I see a big difference between uh, Bobier's Law Dictionary and Black Law Dictionary. Is there any difference, like, uh, as far as implementation of them? Because looking at the word born is totally different from what was read out of uh, Black Law. Looking at what word? Born. Yeah, yeah, they're different. Right. Remember now, the people who put all these things together uh, uh, are groups. They specialize in words of art. They will not put everything in one book. They put certain things in one book, other things in other books. Right. You know that. Right. Right. Now, certain things in Bouvier will not give you the same definition, but certain things in Bouvier is much better than Black Flow. Right. Okay. And you all think it's going to be handed over to you? Who set all this up? Our ancestors. They set up an initiation that you will not believe. Who will have to figure it out? The same people who set it up. Remember now. Neo was the man who created the Matrix. And he died and was prophesied to come back to undo what he did, even though he created it for the positive. Remember, he said we tried to, the, the agent said we tried to help you humans create a perfect world for you, but you didn't appreciate it? Right, I remember. Right. Look at it again, and you'll see that Neo is the one who was talked about the come because he was the one created it. So all the stuff that we complaining about, all these laws and all this stuff, we created it. So therefore, we got to eliminate it and navigate it around it. That's right. We got to know what we did. You know, this is off the subject, uh, but searching through Bobier's, I came across a law dictionary, and I've sent many of people to search for it. And my wife found it on the internet, had to do an international internet search. It's called Cobb's Law. Of Negro slavery. Uh, we oh, Cobb, what now? Cobb's law of Negro slavery. It deals with law. Yes, and the reason I brought it up because when Amber the Wachita came out here, she made a comment that when she wrapped her head, that uh, they have to release her from 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 jail before the sun goes down because according to slave law, she has to be free to slave serve her master. So. Okay. So, I, yeah, I sent out a search for this book. I was wondering if you knew anything about that. I've heard another. I don't know if you're aware of Professor Dr. Brock with the Self-Determinating Committee. Yeah, the one that cheated people out of money. Yeah, yeah. I know about He brought up, well, but the problem with that is, that's a, that, <laughs> if you wrap your head, it can be what any color, right? Wrap your head, can't you? Right. So that's a plan for white people, couldn't it? Right. Right, but the point, my point is, you're not a slave. Right. So, uh, the book, I would like to view it myself, but that's not saying that you're a free person when you get out of jail claiming that you're a slave. 
That's right. That's awesome. That's right, yeah, because I was wondering about that because the Emperor said that she actually did that one time, you know, even with everything that she brought to him, they didn't want to honor her. So well, now she's an Empress. They claim that she's a slave. Let's go, get that nigga out of here. <laughs> Please, wouldn't you do that if you the man? And she claimed to be an Empress, and you, and you, and what she said was, if you let me out, I'll be a slave. Right. <laughs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it must be a very good book because my wife, we, we found it and it was in yeah, York. Good books ain't enough. You have to right. understand them books. Right, right. My point is, a lot of stuff is good, but it's, it's, it's worth a certain way that you don't see with your inner eye. You, you're going to be just this all bad, but to create more illusions for you. Right. That's right. Well, wait, did she come to board? What's that? Did she come to board? Oh, yes, she took her. Oh, yeah, yeah. Your wife's going to be part of the movement. Yeah, yeah, she took her over when she was out there and everything. Okay, now. She was taking it to Harrisburg. Yes, sir. In Harrisburg. Yeah. Okay, she took over. Okay. She's part of the movement. Yeah. Now, tell her it's good to have those books, but she needs to be studying the Constitution, Black laws, learn how to be a government. Now. Right. That's what you need to focus on. And I keep telling people this, but very few people hear me. Therefore, I have to keep doing all the lectures and all the talks, except for ones who probably can do it. That's right. That's right. See, you put too much on me. It's good to know all that other stuff, but we got to raise other people. We have to have a nation. The prophet said that when you're ready, the government has to turn it back over to you. You go. But you got to learn law. Okay. See, I got to stay with the prophet. Right. And that was going to be my question earlier. What is, or, or are you able to tell us at this point, I know we're still learning, the process of, of government as far as how much right in front of it. It's called the Constitution. Right, right. I mean the implementation, excuse me, the implementation that, that, we, that, we, that we will be bringing forth out this way. Oh, it's, it's just the structure. See, right now we're from the martial law, right? Right. And our... Our nation is up under uh, national emergency. We don't have martial law. Their, their uh, government is up under martial law uh, based on a state of emergency. But our nation just have a state of emergency because we're not functioning. Now, in the Constitution, uh, the president has the right to forego all laws except for the Constitution. However, he can uh, uh, convene Congress if he feels as though uh, there was a threat to the people and a lot of other things. See, so what happened was, during certain emergencies, our people left and they never got back. They blocked the roads and wouldn't let them get back to, uh, to the government. But in there, it states that if you qualify and if you're elected, then you can reassume the hell the Constitution. We've done that, small group of us, for a larger group. But we're still up under what is called the state of emergency, which means one person is running things. We're trying to get the assembly together to teach the assembly so they can take over government. In your state, you're going to have to have a governor, a lieutenant governor, a secretary, a treasurer, da 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 da. Right. Still come. We're not inventing anything. Right. Okay. I think it's so simple that people think there's something wrong with it. Right. They think we got to do something extraordinary. I'm saying we got to do is open our eyes. You know, went through every test there is. It really does seem simple, you know what I'm saying? The more and more I get into this, it seems so simple. As far as the understanding that what we was taught belongs to someone else is actually ours. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the reason it was taken from us because we would not treat our spiritual right. Ones that we didn't like. Our thought was beneath us. And that is the thing. The Caucasian people. Right, because we in turn taught them how to govern themselves. And, and well, we didn't treat them right at all until, see, look, the Caucasian been our place since he was genetically altered thousands upon thousands of years ago. That's why I go back to the ancient uh, legend of Atlantis and all this kind of stuff. He didn't become free. The Caucasians, remember now, they had to do a decoration called the Decoration of White Independence in 1898. The Caucasian was still slave. Now the Mount Luke, the amalgamated Moors, they weren't. But the 
Caucasian. They not really Caucasian. The Caucasian call them four white. The, the Mamluks them call them four white trash. But the people that's Mamluks are the rich people. Clapman, Bush, the FDR, and all them people. See, they don't know the more. That's why probably they amalgamated. Probably most of them amalgamated more. They the Mystic Turks. That's not the Caucasian now. The Caucasian came over here as a slave. He was called the plantation worker. He was a slave. The other ones were over here the whole time. They stayed over here. They didn't leave. You know, white people, they have risen to America. And they didn't leave. They stayed over here. But we sent certain ones across the surf and on the surf across the sea to be served. They came back. The first wave came back. The first resurrection came back for them. And, uh, during the slave 1601, 1608, up and down the James River, da 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 da, when they first started returning, then we put them on the plantations over here called Colony. The second resurrection came, what, in the 1890s, early 1920s, up under what they called the, the immigration, right? Right. Right. Now, those who came over here that way are lost. All the people came over in the second wave are lost. They came up under the Natural Naturalization Act, therefore they slaves. All of them lost. It's a book called uh, Immigrant, Immigrants and Bondage or Immigrants and Chains by Peter Wilson Coleham. He wrote a book about how they lost all these Europeans and how they were slaves and slave labor. He's not telling the whole crew either. That's why I have to straighten stuff out. But he do mention that they came over here as slave labor. A lot of them. All of them came over here slaves, though, because they came up under the 14th Amendment. The first one who came over here long ago, the colonists, they also mixed with the amalgamated Moors, and they mixed with the Moors. Therefore, they are natural born citizens, but they don't claim it because they same way the Moors went to the federal administrative corporate government through gratuities and benefits, they did too. The ones who kept it was the, the politicians. They understand all of it. It's passed on. Now the rednecks, the Pecklewoods, the Ku Klux Klan like crackers, they know that they were slaves. They just don't tell people. And they pass it on to their sons and some of their daughters. That's why they hate us so bad. They know. Ooh. Well, they were told. Matter of fact, they told that they could be the Moors. The reparations. Reconstruction. After the Civil War, they 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 they, they join themselves in, in the original from the original costumes of the Moor, put on a red hat, which is an imitation of a bed, call themselves instead of the grand sheep, they call themselves the grand wizard. In their book, instead of calling the Koran, they call it the Koran. They went and did what they wanted to do, they killed people, rolled in, hurt them up, that's what we used to do to them. Castrated them, screwed the women. They let them loose for a while. And then once they was tired of them, then they wiped it out, the federal government. But that's paying us back, putting us in the position. That's all. The beast that was let loose. Right. You know, I got a, I, 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 I taped it off the TV about a month ago. And uh, when you made that comment about the Ku Klux Klan, uh, the, the headdress that they wear at the feds, I got this old tape. And as I'm sitting there, as I was watching it before I was able to put my tape in, I'm looking at all these people running around with fences on and, uh, and Moroccan style buildings and whatever, and it was right here in the USA. Yeah, I told you, they, they became, see, they did what the Moors did. What the Moors did to them, the, the negative Moors ride in, do what they want to do, kill them. Remember that angel of my prison, if a white person used to hold his head up in my prison, you cut it off. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, but see, now we know better, don't we? Yeah. No, we don't. Not as a people. We still do anything. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You can't worry about them people. Right. Uh, so basically, like, uh, I agree, I've been reading, like, uh, with Noble Drew Ali left, you know, as far as, like, the, like you said, uh, the principles of being love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. So that means everyone that comes in this divine national movement has to have love for all, love for the, the whole family of nation as opposed to, uh, you know, that, that hatred against the so-called color system or whatever, uh, uh, what do you call it, prejudice and racism and stuff like that. Yeah, I 
I agree with you 100%. Trump said all nations, all ethnic groups been put in slavery. He's right. That's why we have the cross here. We are the product of a lot of different people, especially the American people, because everybody went into our woman the same way we, we went into everybody else's woman. So we have all the blood. And you must add those other principles along with the ones that he left us. And that's what we have to deal with. We have to deal with principles as opposed to color. Right. Yeah, it's gonna be hard for a lot of people, but it's most easy for us because, you know, all we looking for is people that's ready for change, you know. Yeah, don't you all deal with Q, don't you all deal with some white people, Caucasian? Oh yeah, plenty. Right. And you gotta take the message to them too. Oh, they, they, they told me before they even knew too much that they was more than, you know. They, they did, they knew they were capable more. Oh yeah, they know they come from more than they just, you know, they just want us to see them as equal. Yeah, well you know, you tell me you done found the right man for that in the organization. That's right. But I don't, I don't play that racism. See, we so much racist, we even racist amongst our own people. We have problems with our own, our own so-called Moorish people. You got black folks that can say anything the dark-skinned brothers, they say anything about the light-skinned people, and it's okay, but if a light-skinned person say something about a black person, it's terrible. Right. It, man, it's, we so messed up, it's unreal. That's true. That's true. But see, not my people. My people don't see that. The people that I call my people, spirit people. Right. They don't see that. They ain't no, they ain't no color and no spirit now. Right. The principles ain't got no color. If you lie to me and you black, I'm supposed to accept that. And you tell me that you tell me the truth and you white, I'm supposed to reject that. To me. Make no sense. Before we cut over this is Q, I got to ask you one question about a comment I heard on one of your tapes. What's that? You were reading something and you, and you said Treaty of Peace and Friendship and you went in and you read it, but I couldn't draw from where... From well, that's the Moroccan Treaty. Okay. Yeah, that's the Moroccan Treaty, but that treaty was void in the 19, what, 50s? Yeah, that treaty is no longer in effect. So, the, the, the 30 years after they did that, um, even in 18, what, 19, the Barbary Pirates attacked Americans special. They broke the treaties. The, the treaties were broke during the Ottoman Empire. Wars and stuff. Wow. That's why we going back to the 70s. See, the treaties were broke. Whew. That's common sense, ain't it? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just common sense. When you have war like this, the treaties are no longer in effect. The Ottoman Empire had a treaty, but when they lost the war, they broke up the Ottoman Empire. That treaty ain't no more good. Where is the Ottoman Empire? It's, it's within the European Union now. They're bringing it back. But it's no longer called the Ottoman Empire. Therefore, you know, it's not the same thing. Plus, Morocco is over there. Morocco is now a nation up under the United Nations. It's not even necessarily in the family of nations because they changed it. Right. So, what are you talking about? Right. They don't get, the Moors don't get no respect from that. I told you, from 1929 to 1999, they allowed certain things. That's exactly 70 years. The prophet died in 90, in 29, and I received the revelation in 99. Seven cycles, seven cycles, seven ten-year cycles. And that's when they started smacking these phases off and, and, and locking Moors up on, on a different level and everything else. Okay. On that tree, those trees, they, they, they were then boarded. Okay. <laughs>